Okay, thanks, members. City of Adelaide Council meeting on Tuesday, the 14th of April, 2020. The Lord Mayor is in the chair. This council meeting is being undertaken in line with ministerial notice number one, which allows remote attendance for council members at meetings of council. The meeting will be streamed live and recorded for, recorded for publishing to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is being taken of this meeting. This means that your presence at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed and published publicly by the Council, including transferring outside of Australia. Council acknowledges that we're meeting on the traditional country of the Kaurna people of the Adelaide Plains and pays respect to Elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land and acknowledge that they're of continuing importance to the Kaurna people living today. We also extend that respect to our other Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations who may be with us today. The Council acknowledges the vision of Colonel William Light in determining the site for Adelaide and the design of the city with its six squares and surrounding belt of continuous parklands, which is recognised on the National Heritage List as one of the greatest examples of Australia's planning, planning heritage. Let us pray. Almighty God, we ask your blessing upon the works of the City of Adelaide. Direct and prosper its deliberations to the advancement of your glory and the true welfare of the people of this city. Amen. I'll ask all to remain in silence in memory of those who gave their lives in defence of the country at sea, on land and in the air. Thank you, members. Um, I have no apologies or leave of absence today. Uh, that takes us to item number six on the agenda, which is the confirmation of the minutes from the 10th of March, the 16th of March, the 23rd of March and the 7th of April. I'll look for someone to uh, move the minutes by raising your hand. Thank you, Councillor Martin and the seconder, Councillor Sims. Um, oh, yes. up on my... <laughs> uh, um, Councillor Martin, did you wish to speak to the minutes at all? Councillor Sims? Members, are there any suggestions or changes to the minutes? If not, I'll go back to the movie to sum up. Councillor Martin? Sound up. <laughs> Thank you. Members, those in favour, I'll ask you to raise your hand, please. Your physical hand. Thank you. Those against? That is carried. Thank you. Um, we have three deputations tonight. Uh, the first deputation is from Jan Chorley and Fiona Dorman from the Australia Day Council. Um, we will welcome Jan. The same rules apply, so five minutes once they start speaking. Oh. Sorry, it's Fiona Dorman, and Fiona, you were just uh, Dorman, you, you were muted, so I'll ask you to speak again. Thank you. Thank you, the Right Honourable, the Lord Mayor, Sandy Vishaw, and elected members of the City of Adelaide. Thank you so much for the opportunity to present to the Council tonight. Uh, I'm here today as a representative of the Australia Day Council of South Australia of, from the board. We're very grateful for the long and valued partnership with the City of Adelaide that the Australia Day Council of South Australia has shared over many years. It is really vital to our shared values and objectives and we are very grateful for all of this ongoing support. As a not-for-profit, as you know, we are reliant on partnerships and like the one with the City of Adelaide, we very much value the strong partnership that we have. You may be aware also that recently the board has undertaken an independent review of our operations in that review, it has been shown that we have been found to have a very strong and positive workplace culture. The board also attaches the highest priority to governance and continued strong operations. 
A financial review by our external advisors has also been undertaken by BRM Advisory and confirms that the Australia Day Council of South Australia achieved an unaudited operating surplus of over $85,000 year on year. All funds and expenditure are fully accounted. We continue to operate with financial integrity. From this, I'd like to state very clearly that the takeout is that the Australia Day Council of South Australia is fully financially equipped to continue our valuable work. As always, we continue to be reliant on local, state and federal government financial support and, and that of partners and our valued sponsors. Ours is a not-for-profit community enterprise that relies on community goodwill and continued support. Of course, it's a new world that we're experiencing right now. And in this coronavirus or COVID-19 environment, the work of the Australia Day Council of South Australia is more important than ever. It's important to bring to communities together to ensure that our work is a central part of how we recover as communities post the fires and coronavirus 19. Again, we are grateful for the strong support of the City of Adelaide, the Lord Mayor, and our elected members. Thank you. Good evening, Lord Mayor and elected members. If I can please just build on um, what our deputy chair has uh, outlined to you. Australia Day is going to be more important in 2021 as a pivotal day in our, in our nation's calendar. It will be more about re rebuilding and recovery than ever before. The Australia Day Council of South Australia at this time is rethinking how do we continuously engage and build together with our diverse communities over this COVID-19 period. Our organisation is continuing to engage with thousands of our diverse constituencies in their overall sense of well-being and building cohesiveness in readiness for when we come out of this time. Australia Day in the City 2021 will be at the heart of this. It will offer all of us who share this country a place to gather and acknowledge our good fortune in this place that we call home. Our gathering will be at Elder Park, alive, vibrant, and never more on this day. Australia Day in the city will be the juncture where people from all over Adelaide, our regional centres, afar, South Australians from diverse cultures and communities will gather together to share our national identity. It will be the confluence of vibrancy in our city of Adelaide that will draw many thousands of people together to celebrate in a meaningful way our Australian values and our cherished way of life. We will work creatively to shape how we come together as a community in a time of recovery that will focus on our First Nations peoples through ceremony and Australia Day Parade, reflecting our very strong cultural diversity and together we will celebrate with all of our peoples from across our great city and our state. Our vision is a true reflection of the harmony and belonging we have all come to love. It will be a celebration of our humanity, respect, and a unifying moment as we emerge from this time. In the past, Australia Day Council of South Australia has partnered with the City of Adelaide with a three-year funding agreement. This three-year agreement has enabled us to work collaboratively with your council, executive and board of members of your team, and to continuously improve our work and grow our reach. We are keen to ensure that we can forge another three-year partnership with the City of Adelaide that will allow our board and, and our team to shape this important day, ensuring Australia Day is a day of reflection, acknowledgement and shared values. This partnership is one that we cherish and we look forward to continuing to work with Council in bringing our community together during these incredibly significant times. Thank you. Perfect timing. Thank you, Jan, and thank you, Fiona. Um, members, we, our second deputation tonight is from our former Lord Mayor, Jane Lomax-Smith, talking about the future direction of the Adelaide Aquatic Centre. Welcome, Jane. Uh, you have five minutes for your deputation. Good evening. Um, I'm not quite attached yet. Um... So, and I, I haven't got a clear view of you, Jane, so... You might want to, her mic's off. Yep. You might want to um, uh, just tip your camera up so that we can see your face. There we go. Oh. 
we've got you. Uh, we just now will unmute you and. I'm sorry. Ah, we've got you. Excellent. I'm sorry to be sorry. I um, apologise. I'm balanced in a very difficult position here. Can you see me now? Uh, not really, Jane. We can only see the very top of your head. So How's there it? we go. Yep, that's better. Well, the top of my head might not be the appropriate part. I'm awfully sorry. Um, I, I'm grateful for this opportunity to speak to you and apologise for the difficulty with the technology. Um, I don't uh, come to criticise any past decisions. What I really want to do is offer some suggestions about how we might go forward. It seems to me that uh, the unsolicited bid process is one that you might well re-examine. Um, I think it's a great process and a great policy, and it seems to be particularly good looking at the provision of services um, within the city and also good at looking at ways of exploiting the development of underdeveloped land holdings. But I think the problem in interpreting the material from the commercial pitch by the Crows was that it really did pitch it as a, um, an, un, an unsolicited bid for undeveloped or underdeveloped land. And I know that all policies have unintended consequences. And if I were to suggest anything, it would be that the council reconsider its commitment and um, obligations to look after the parklands and not use it as part of the unsolicited bid program where private development can see it as undeveloped land. That's my only suggestion. Um, in looking forward about what one might do, it does seem to me that um, there are equity issues that were never quite addressed with the Crows bid. And those are in two parts. Firstly, of course, if you have a private organisation, even like Memorial Drive, it never has an equitable um, access from groups like migrants, refugees or low SES individuals. And it can never be as open as the aquatic centre was. And the other issue about equity is that as the council is actually the custodian of a, a real tranche of assets for the whole state, um, allowing one organisation, one sports code, one football club, now we understand one private club, to have priority access is really a, a difficult position to put oneself in. And I really think it would be better to have pre not to have preferential access for individual organisations and for the council to run the organisation as a clean, untied and uh, organisation without commitments to any groups. I think the issue for the council, and I do agree with some of the statements that council has made, um, I think you were misquoted in suggesting that you would not want to have people from outside the council area come in to use the amenities. Obviously you need them for the local, in our local government area for central market and shopping. Um, I think you were misquoted in those ways, but clearly um, this is not just a facility for the city. It clearly provides health and fitness and water safety for a broad tranche of the community. And I think that there's a very good argument to be made for saying that this is a state responsibility. And like you, I was shocked that um, having spent some considerable time lobbying the state government to make the case for ongoing state funding, uh, subsequent councils really abandoned that policy and left those um, bids and investigations unfollowed up because that's left you without government funding. In reality, this centre does uh, service a remarkably large proportion of the metropolitan area. I think 700k uh, implies that uh, even with the new Marion Centre, there hasn't been a diminution. And you might well argue that this is a facility of regional or state significance. And I think that this is not just a matter of convincing the government that this is important for health and fitness or rec and sport, but it's also a facility it's really, really important for schools and school usage. It's important for mental health um, and it's also important for, for general health. So I think that you can make a good argument about this being a core that has a significant state uh, obligation for fitness and health. One of the areas that I wanted to just draw your attention to uh, was that, of course, having made those arguments, I know that you will be making um, approaches to the state and federal government for stimulus funding and I don't think there's a better time to ask for stimulus funding to deal with some of the maintenance backlog on this site. Clearly you are a good um, uh, 
owner of property with a good uh, property management plan and infrastructure plan, clearly you have uh, projects up your sleeves that could be uh, brought out and be shovel ready, whether it's relining the diving pool or perhaps expanding the gym, but certainly within the next six months, there must be opportunities to get some uh, federal funding. But I'd also like to draw your attention to a way of managing the pool. I think it's been very challenging for the pool to be run in a commercial manner. And I understand that. But I've been, while you've been perhaps dealing with the AFL from Victoria, I've discovered a swimming pool in Victoria that's an absolute success story. And I would recommend um, examination of the city of Frankston's pool, which actually makes a profit, uh, has a commitment to engaging all children in the area and making them sw swimmers, um, and not only makes a profit, uh, invests in its own asset management plan. Uh, the irony is that although it's run by a council, the irony is uh, they have an independent board with tech and commercially savvy operators. They make a profit, but it's managed actually by a South Australian. And my only uh, further request to council is, it, we really spent a lot of money in this city on cycling. I think it's about time we spent some money on swimming and aquatic safety, uh, because that's one area where we're falling behind. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, Jane, we have a third deputation tonight, and that is from Shane Sody. Thank you, Lord Mayor and uh, Council members. Uh, as you know, there's a report in tonight's agenda summarising the consultation over the Adelaide Football Club's unsolicited proposal. And unfortunately, the report can be interpreted as an insult to 746 people who responded. The report claims there were 2,051 responses to the Council's consultation, of which 59% were supportive of the Crows' proposal to build a corporate headquarters in Denise Norton Park. And in its tally, the Council report explicitly rejects the consultation responses that were generated through community activism by the Adelaide Parklands Preservation Association, through a printed leaflet, 475 responses, and a direct email campaign producing another 271. The council report discounts all of these responses because, quote, they may have been influenced by APA. With those responses included, of course, the true figures would have been much greater number of responses with a majority disagreeing. The report suggests that the information distributed by APA during the consultation period to prompt these responses was biased and that respondents might not have read the information pack provided by the council before making their submissions. Well, bias is in the eye of the beholder. The questions that were posed in the consultation um, fail to mention the council's legal obligation to protect the world unique national heritage listed Adelaide parklands from commercial depredation. But it's sufficient for my present purposes to say there is nothing biased about rejecting the premise of a question. If someone asks me whether I have stopped my habit of robbing banks, is it biased if I simply reject the premise of the question? When people are asked whether they like the way a commercial business wants to take over parklands, does it accord with the guiding principles? It is entirely legitimate to reject the premise of the question. The responses by Parkland supporters, all 746 of them, I assume because I haven't read all of them, um, I'm guessing simply rejected the premise of the council's questions. The so-called guiding principles were not authorised by legislation, they were vague, they would have been entirely unenforceable and did not address the elephant in the room, which was whether or not a corporate headquarters should have been encouraged on Parklands. In responses to Councillor Philip Martin's questions this evening, um, a further criticism has been levelled at APA's activism in that the responses were pre-filled. The responses were on a form which, in which a suggested response was made, but every respondent had the option of negating the suggested response and writing something entirely different. So in that case, I would argue with the idea that everything was pre-filled. This council has a statutory obligation to manage the parklands for the benefit of the public rather than a corporation. 
and for the past 12 months that obligation has been set aside to give preferential treatment to a commercial bidder. That could be considered as bias of its own. Perhaps many of the 746 respondents did not read the Council's documents before making their submission. But the same thing could be said for any other respondent, whether generated by the Crows or the development lobby. They were directed to go to Council's Your Say website, but there is nothing to suggest that they read all of the documents that were there before they made their potentially biased submissions. Nobody knows. Filtering out responses that you don't like is hardly good practice in community consultation. Now, obviously, uh, the AFC has withdrawn from the process, but there is a risk that their um, proposal may return next year or the year after. And if it does, hopefully the council will not be relying on the figures in the report this evening to try to pretend that back in 2020, the public supported the proposed commercial takeover of public parklands. On any reading of the figures, whether or not the ones generated by APA's activism are included or not, the council has been engaged in what must be, inter must be perceived as a deeply divisive um, process. Um, and it's important that the council acknowledges the depth of community outrage at what it was doing. Trying to discredit the views of 746 respondents is not a good way to proceed. The council, the fact that the AFC has withdrawn from the unsolicited proposals process is a get out of jail card for the council. You've been saved from, by the coronavirus from continuing with what we can all agree was a process that had deeply divided the community. And you now have an opportunity to carry out a process that perhaps might have been undertaken several years ago, as um, Jane Lomax Smith just mentioned. Look dispassionately at a wide range of options for both aquatic services and Denise Norton Park. Take a look at a full range of options, and you now, because you now know from your consultation processes how highly the community values both aquatic facilities and parklands. Thank you, Mr. Sodi. Um, members, that takes us to item eight on the agenda petitions. There are no petitions tonight. Uh, we go to 9.1. Um, I'm just going to remind council members that they need to be visible at all times uh, on the camera um, and uh, otherwise you will be uh, noted as absent. Um, and tonight for voting, we're going to raise our real hand. I'll call for a show of hands. That's so that they can see it when we're live streaming. Um, hold your hands until we've done the count, then I'll call those opposed. So if we, we'll just uh, go through the normal thing, just perhaps a little slower. Um, so 9.1 is the uh, a, a report to note, which is the advice recommendations of the audit committee from the 27th of March. And I'll look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Kouros, and a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Uh, Councillor Kouros, did you wish to speak? Councillor Sims? No, members? Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor has his hand up. There. Oh, there. <laughs> Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Did you wish to speak? No, sorry, I had my hand up to... Um... Uh, to oh, to... I think it might be at the top of your list because you've missed it a couple of times, but that's all good. Okay. Uh, it is. <clears throat> um, thank you, members. If there's uh, no other comments, then I will go to the movie to sum up. Thank you, members. Those in favour? If you raise your hands. Those against? That is carried. And I have lost... Councillor Abraham today and Councillor Martin at this point. Okay. Ah. Nope. Back again. Councillor Martin, we've lost. Mm. Okay. Uh, members, that takes us to uh, a very short report from me tonight. Um, so, 
Uh, if ever there was a, uh, a stark reminder that life can change in an instant, I think this is it. These are truly uh, that word that we keep hearing, unprecedented and challenging times as we all adjust and adapt to the challenges that COVID-19 is presenting for us. Um, this is our first council meeting of the pandemic period using this technology, which is a new experience for all of us and may take some time to adapt. Um, but by working together in this way, we can still serve our community through this period. Um, the pandemic is first and foremost a health crisis and the city has worked really hard and quickly to ensure the safety of our workers, residents and visitors. And we also know that the economic impacts have been extensive with so many workers and businesses facing uh, the future as it is at the moment without uh, knowing when we will come out of this. I do want to thank members for your leadership in endorsing Council's $4 million support package. Um, it will assist those vulnerable members of communities and also our local businesses. And our council package is working in tandem with uh, the support that is very significant coming from the federal government and the state government, um, helping thousands through this period. So I do thank you for your leadership. Um, vulnerable people in our community uh, is a high priority for all of us. And council's been working with and assisting government and non-government services to support them during this time. The state government's response is providing a way for people who are rough sleeping to be safe during the crisis with over 250 people or 260 people now provided with temporary motel accommodation. Um, and this has also been assisted by local businesses, including the Adelaide Convention Centre and the Adelaide Oval, who are supplying meals to those that are in that temporary accommodation. Um, our customer service centre is also connecting people in need of extra support with the relevant service providers. And of course, the customer service centre remains open and uh, people can visit in person during office hours or over the phone. Um, the Council of Capital City Lord Mayors has also recently met via Zoom. Um, this was a useful opportunity for the Lord Mayors and the CEOs of the capital cities to share which each of the cities are doing in response to COVID-19 and the support for their communities. Um, and that has been ongoing conversations so that uh, we're sharing knowledge with each other, all of us in very similar situations. Um, I would in this, there is good news. I would like to congratulate the traders and staff of the Adelaide Central Market on their agility in moving to their pre-order and collect model. Um, it has proved really popular with market shoppers, regular shoppers who want to support the local traders, my family included, and many uh, city and North Adelaide businesses have also rapidly adjusted their business plans. Um, and I want to congratulate them for their innovative spirit and wish them well. Um, like you, my Easter was very different from previous years. Um, what I did notice was the number of people that were out there in the city's parklands, um, enjoying sort of exercise or just taking fresh air with families. I've never seen so many pets um, and uh, or people walking along and just chatting to their friends outdoors. And I would encourage uh, all our people, particularly those residents of the city within the guidelines to continue taking advantage of uh, our beautiful community asset that is the Adelaide Parklands. And finally, I'd like to recognise that the 27th of April will be the birthday anniversary for Colonel William Light. And I would like to acknowledge Light's vision and legacy in his design for the city of Adelaide. Um, the Adelaide Parklands, of course, are playing an important role in supporting our physical and mental health and well-being of our communities now more than ever. And this was at the core of his design. Um, so with that, I thank you. I need someone to move, I need a mover and a seconder to accept that report. Thank you, Councillor Kouros. Thank you, Councillor Abraham. today as a seconder. Uh, members, all those in favour? Thank you, members, those against? Thank you, Councillor Moran. Those against, that is carried. Uh, members, that takes us to uh, the council reports, 11.1, .1, and I'll look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Abraham Zadeh. The seconder, Councillor Sims. Councillor Abraham Zadeh, did you wish to speak to it? Councillor Sims, nine members. Would anybody like to speak to 11.1? .1? If not, I will go back to the mover to sum up. 
Thank you, members. All those in favour, raise your hand. Those against, that is carried. Thank you. Are you getting what you need, Jenny? You good? Excellent. Um, members, that takes us to item number 12 on the report, item 12.1, which is the Adelaide Aquatic Centre Needs Analysis Consultation, and which is a note to report, and I'll look for a mover, Deputy Lord Mayor, and a seconder, Councillor Canole. Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak? No, your mic's off. Councillor Canole, did you wish to speak? No, members? Councillor Sims? Thanks, Lord Mayor. I just wanted to uh, express my um, frustration around the way in which the needs analysis was um, approached. I'm certainly not being critical of the work of administration in um, collating that. Um, they did what was requested by council, but I do want to um, register my disappointment at uh, the narrow range of questions that were presented to the community um, and um, the uh, narrow focus um, of some of our consultation. And Councillor Sims, members? Uh, CEO. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I just wanted to say that um, you know the the process that we went through was a detailed process, as you know, and it certainly identified that um, the facility is is widely regarded by our by our community, and it is definitely a community service obligation. What has come to light, though, is that there are some levels of uncertainty with regard to our community engagement process. And we've made a commitment to use this engagement process as a case study upon which to review how we undertake future engagement. Um, we will be providing you with a workshop where we'll work through the Your Say process, how that works, and we'll seek to uh, get your input into if and how we can improve that. So um, in response, Councillor Sims, I think it's a good, um, good time for us to have a close look at our process how we can learn from what's occurred and improve going forward. Thanks a lot. Thank you, CEO. Uh, one moment. Okay. So, so members, um, with the streaming, uh, the streaming is only showing the person speaking um, and the document. So when we go to the vote, we're going to pause for a minute so we can take the document away so that we are actually streaming the vote. Okay, so we'll give that a go. Um, Councillor Kouros, did you wish to speak? Sorry, one moment. You're on. Oh, thanks, Lord Mayor. I just have a just just a question, just for clarification. So, when we want to move uh, the motion, a move or second it, do we? Is it show of hands or is it on uh, raising our hand virtually? Which way around is it, or are we always raising our hand by by um, clicking onto the virtual um, system? Thanks, Councillor Kouros. I'll just get Jenny to confirm how we're doing that. Hi, thanks, Councillor Kouros. Um, for my moving or seconding the motion, use the raise hand function. For the voting, voting, raise hand button. The button, correct. Motion, okay. Okay, voting it will be done uh, by your real hand and also when there's a leave of the meeting request if that comes up, okay? All right, no worries, just for clarification, thank you. Yeah. So, Councillor, so if Councillor Kerr wants to vote, we're not there yet. <laughs> So he should be using his raise hand. Apologies if I wasn't very clear before. It's not just to move or second a motion. If you want to speak, use your raise hand button as well. Okay. Um, so, Councillor Kira, can you just take his microphone off because I cannot hear what he's saying. Sorry. 
Sorry, thanks, Jesse. Um, I do wish to speak. I was under the impression we were doing away with the raised hand button. So I'm just trying to find that. Uh, that's under participants. So um, I'll just look, I'll just do that now. Uh, raise hand, there we are. Right. Okay. <laughs> Beautiful, I can see it. Excellent. Okay. okay. Right. So I'm speaking? Yes. Yeah, look, um, I, I just feel compelled to say that uh, I, I don't think the CEO or the administration uh, need to be uh, particularly defensive uh, about the about the uh, public consultation. Uh, I found, as a councillor, that it's been a that it's been a good consultation. I found that the information that has been uh, sifted through has been done so effectively. Uh, I found the information conveyed to me as a councillor has been done effectively. Um, there are many ways, there are many angles in which you can attack this consultation. But that that you know, the fact is, this is uh, it, it's a difficult job to actually. Um, pin down a public uh, public feedback in a way that pleases every party in a highly contentious situation. I don't think the CEO. I don't think there is a need to be uh, defensive about this. I think this is a good outcome. I think this is a very informative outcome. And uh, in no way should we accept this that there's any any sniff of illegitimacy about this consultation. Uh, this so, is, uh, Councillor Kira, we're talking about the needs analysis of twelve point one. So. Yeah. The needs analysis. The, yeah. the, the, the feedback that has come back from the needs analysis um, are, are questions that have been put out to, to the public. Uh, so I'll just reiterate that there is no need to be too defensive or to be defensive at all about what, what we have received. I will go to Councillor Martin and then I've got Councillor Moran. Councillor Martin. Um, yes, just a, a, a question of process before we proceed. Mm -hmm. um, I have nothing on my screen to indicate what matter we're considering. Is that a fault of my connection or is that not uh, the case? So I'm not sure what you're seeing, but it's definitely there. Um, I can see it on Kylie's iPad and I can see it on my laptop. So um, okay. members, can I just have a show of hands that everybody can see the document? Uh, so it must, must just be you, Councillor Martin. Uh, okay. Well, look, I appreciate advice from the administration about how I might get to see that. Okay. What um, I might do is get someone to give you a quick call, Councillor Martin, so we can talk through what's on your screen. Thank you. And I just yeah. wish to make a, a comment in respect of the needs analysis um, and endorse the comments of Councillor Sims. Uh, my assessment and the assessment of many of the ratepayers who contacted me during the course of consultation process was that the needs analysis was far too narrow in the scope of questions which it asked of our uh, community members. Um, it, it may be that uh, uh, Councillor Kira is seeing some legitimacy about the consultation. Uh, however, the vast majority of people who've contacted me are disappointed that council didn't ask further questions of them about what they believe the aquatic centre um, uh, should be about in the future uh, and it shouldn't have been restricted to the very narrow four options that were outlined within the report that came with consultation. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I have Councillor Moran. Yes, thank you. Um, I had a problem getting a little bit mixed up between the consultation 12.2 uh, um, where the APA um, was completely removed. Um, I thought the uh, needs analysis was better um, but it wasn't broad enough and um, living probably in the area where the aquatic centre is most familiar with and living in that well, I think there were a lot of ways um, a lot of difficult to access, um, and I think the administration has um, quite clearly stated that they've learned some some salient lessons. Mm -hmm. What to do and what to do. So I think the aim that the administration doesn't have to be too defensive. I don't think they uh, this this consultation have been defensive. Um, but the next one's a different matter. Yeah. Sorry, Sorry, Councillor Moran, you're, you're dropping in. No. Um, but anyway, this one is just crosses the line as a consultation. Uh, a lot of fault 
thing, Rose, which is the, the next one, this one that really is the, the uh, bonanza of what not to do. So. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Uh, members, if there's no more speakers, there's, sorry, I have Councillor uh, Kouros, did you wish to speak to that? You're on. Oh, thank you, Lord Mayor. I just wanted to basically say that the um, it was a very complex um, consultation. The needs analysis had a lot to cover, and I think in a lot of things, um, it is a very um, it was a very difficult one to capture. And as a user of the aquatic centre and a regular user, you know, everyone has different ideas of uh, what they would like to see in the aquatic centre. And I think the fact that we gave the four options gave an idea of what was would be the most popular one to have continued uh, to, to have been um, a favour of, of people to use there. But also it gave the ability to actually be more detailed and descriptive of how they use the centre. And I think, you know, it's remember this is the first time we've actually consulted on the aquatic centre and tried to capture as much information as we can and in light of things yes you know as CEOs pointed out we may uh, we have learnt um, a lot more on how we can consult further or consult for other things in the future and it's groundwork to what we can do better but in light of that in light that we don't have any past uh, anything that we can look at in the past, we did capture as much information as we can. And it would never, as Councillor Kira said, we'd never be able to capture what everyone wants to say. We've, they've done their best and we have administration done their best to capture as much as we can. Can we learn from it? Yes. Thank you, members. If there are no more speakers, I'll go back to the Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, I suppose I'd just start um, by thanking the administration for the work that they've done uh, on this. Um, I certainly take exception to the idea that this was a narrow consultation. Um, when we look at the things that were considered here, the services which we asked questions about were aquatic group fitness, dry group fitness, gym workout, lap swimming, club and organised swimming, recreational swimming, swim school lessons, spa, sauna, steam room, cafe, personal training, allied health or therapy, Creation, <laughs> shop, aquatic sports. Um, and furthermore, uh, we obviously broke it down by postcode, by gender, by age group, uh, member status, and mode of transport, usage patterns, service, um, importance, and what have you. So I, I certainly take exception to the idea that this was a narrow survey. Um, I do acknowledge that there were less respondents to this consultation than there were to, for example, the AFC. Um, consultation but if you want to see why that happened it was because of the huge amount of attention that was given to the other consultation unnecessarily because members consistently time and time again kept fear-mongering kept spreading misinformation along with other groups in the community um, Thank you, Lord Mayor. We're talking about the needs analysis now. We are indeed. And if we can sum up on 12.1. The needs analysis of the attention that it deserved because it was always the more important piece in this. It was always the more important piece because we were going to use the needs analysis and we still will use the needs analysis to inform where we're going. Now more than ever, it is very important, Lord Mayor, which is why I think we were wrong. Certain people were wrong to deprive it of that attention. Um, so I thank the administration for this work. Um, uh, I think it's good. Uh, the intercept survey is good. Is there more that perhaps needs to be done? Yes, I think there is. Um, uh, it wasn't as narrow as it said, but we can also have more information, particularly on I'm thinking of things that uh, weren't um, uh, or aren't currently offered at the Aquatic Centre, um, such as the dive tower, for example, is no longer on there. So those are questions that we might want to ask in the future. Thank you, members. We'll go to the vote. Those in favour of noting the report, those against, that is carried. Thank you, members. That takes us to 12.2, which is the Adelaide Football Club draft proposal consultation results. I have Councillor Martin and Councillor Sims. Uh, Councillor Martin, one moment. All yours. You can hear me now? I can. Oh, excellent. Uh, look, Lord Mayor, I, I wish uh, to move an alternative uh, motion. Um, and the motion that uh, 
uh, I'm proposing is as printed with a comma after 2020 and the words and expresses its ITS disappointment. Sorry. That 746 responses from the Adelaide Parklands Preservation Association were not included in the illustrations and figures. So I look to, sorry, one moment, do, do, do I? So, I can hear nothing. Sorry. Apologies, members. We're just waiting for that amendment to scroll up in front of you, and then I will um, I will actually seek a seconder because it's a variation to the uh, an amendment to the motion. Uh, Councillor Sims, you had an alternate motion. Sorry, Councillor Sims, you had your hand up. I'm not sure if you're still happy to second it. So I'll look for it. Um, I can read it, so because uh, I write it down. So um, it is the apologies, members. Okay. So so the alternate motions. Uh, at the end of eight, uh, 14 April 2020 says and expresses its disappointment that the 746 responses from APA were not included in the illustrations and figures and I will look for a seconder. Thank you Councillor Sims. Councillor Martin would you like to speak to that while we're getting that in, in front of us? Uh, yes I would. Thank you. Can you hear me? I can. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, look I, I note uh, that the Deputy Lord Mayor, and I, I do thank you for asking him to cease his, uh, his comments in regard to this whole consultancy process being based on fear mongering and uh, uh, misinformation uh, was of course uh, wildly inaccurate. What this has actually been based on, this consultation in regard to the Adelaide Football Club uh, plan to take over Park 2 is in the words of the president of the Adelaide Parklands Preservation Association to council tonight, um, based on an attempt to discredit, to discredit 746 responses from their membership. Now, um, he, he further makes the point that this uh, consultation failed to, mention, failed to mention in the context of accusations that the responses from the Parklands Preservation Association were biased, um, failed to mention that council did not include at any point a statement in the consultation about its obligation to care for the parkland. Uh, instead, it talked about the way in which we would make available the parklands of South Australia to uh, any commercial organisation, in this case, uh, to the Adelaide Football Club. Now, we have concluded a consultation process which is 
deeply flawed in the eyes of a very large number of South Australians and particularly members of the Adelaide Parklands Preservation Association. In fact, it is their view, their view that you cannot trust the city of Adelaide to actually conduct a consultation and find out what people think. Um, it is, unfortunately, a very sad chapter in the history of the city of Adelaide. It, it is a misrepresentation of what we know were submissions to the consultation. Now, the ratepayers of the city, the people of South Australia were saying no to this proposal, and yet, miraculously, the result was a resounding yes. Um, I think we owe it to them to at least include our acknowledgement of their disappointment and our disappointment that they were not included in this, uh, this consultation. Without, without their, their votes, without their uh, feedback, uh, this consultation is not a valid consultation in my view. Yeah, it was feedback rather than votes. I will go to Councillor Sims, thank you, as a seconder. Sorry, sorry. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I'm wondering if, I, if Councillor Martin would be willing to accept a variation. Uh, I'm wondering if uh, he would be willing to remove, include removal of figure four from the report. So at the end of, um, sorry, Rob, at the end of figures, you want to add? Uh, so just at the end, uh, sorry, I, I just look at the wording on the screen, expresses its disappointment, uh, notes the community engagement findings for the Adelaide Football Club draft proposal summarised in attachment A, and just maybe in brackets, with the removal of figure four. Okay. Are you happy with that, Councillor Martin? Thank you. We'll take that as a yes. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, I do sorry, share... Sorry, sorry, sorry. I need leave of the meeting to accept the variation to the amendment, uh, to the alternate motion. Apologies. So I will need leave of the meeting by show of hands. Uh, that... fails. So, oh, well, sorry that fails. So we'll leave it with um, Councillor Martin's original. Okay, well that, that's disappointing and um, I hope that uh, this motion is um, successful, this uh, varied motion is successful. Um, Lord Mayor, I agree with Councillor Martin's concerns about this Clayton's consultation. Um, I want to make it very clear that this is not a criticism of council's administration. It is a criticism of the decision of the elected body that uh, determined to adopt a very narrow consultation that only presented a narrow range of options to consideration for the community. And uh, there's a long chronology of uh, failure when it comes to engaging with the community around the Crow's proposal, Lord Mayor. Members would remember back in last year, in April, I proposed that we consult with the community early on about the threshold question of whether or not we should in fact uh, engage in this sort of project, whether we should see commercial development on the parklands. That was voted down. And then before we began this consultation process, I again tried to present a range of options to the community for their input. And again, that was voted down. And it seems that there has been an effort by some members of this council to obstruct the community and to make it difficult for them to uh, express their views. And that reached a culmination, Lord Mayor, when over uh, when hundreds, several hundreds, 700 submissions were discarded simply on the basis that they may have been uh, influenced by APA. I mean, I find that, Lord Mayor, a really ludicrous proposition. That's akin to saying on election day, oh, well, we're going to discount the votes of some voters because they, they followed a how-to-vote card. We're going to disregard their views because they followed a how-to-vote card, so therefore their views aren't valid. I mean, I find that a really dangerous precedent for our democracy that has been established here. That was the reason why I wanted to remove uh, figure four from um, the uh, report, 
because that uh, includes information that I consider to be incorrect. That is a summary um, that states that a majority of respondents uh, supported or regarded this project as being in keeping with the guiding principles. We know, in fact, that that result has been coloured by the fact that hundreds and hundreds of submissions have been discarded. Why? Simply because they've been influenced by an advocacy organisation. Well, last I checked, Lord Mayor, we live in a democracy. Advocacy organisations have a legitimate role to play and they have done their job in this case. That is mobilising the community and getting them to put in a submission. And I'm very, very disappointed that their views have not been taken into consideration. So I urge members to support this amendment because it recognises the uh, respondents who have been disenfranchised by this process. And I hope, Lord Mayor, that we never ever repeat this sort of botched process again, because this council has really, really stuffed it up. And I mean the council elected body in terms of the way that it has managed this issue. This issue. And I can understand why there is so much fury in the community. Sorry, Lord Mayor, I can't hear you. Yeah, sorry, I forgot to unmute myself. Right. Um, <laughs> uh, thank, thank you, Councillor Sims. I have Councillor Carer. Uh, well, thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, um, at the outset, uh, I'd like to completely refute uh, the aspersions cast by Councillor Sims, uh, namely that this is a Clayton's consultation. I completely reject and refute that. Uh, that. That is an assertion that there is no legitimacy. Uh, this is a sham. Uh, this, is, this is a fraud. Uh, that is a very serious accusation to level at the administration. Uh, you're accusing the administration of uh, not simply being derelict in their duty, but uh, of being active participants in some kind of fraud. I reject that completely. I don't think it's a Clayton's consultation. I reject that it's a, a botched consultation at, uh, at, the same, uh, uh, at, at the same blush as well. Um, I do have a question for the administration, um, uh, the CEO or, or any, any, other, or any of the directors. Um, Councillor Sims asserted that there were 700 plus um, uh, respondents from uh, via APA, uh, that APA uh, produced 700 plus respondents. We have an accounting in the report that there were 271 emails uh, received as a consequence of APA's form email that was sent out. Can we get some clarity, please, on what the actual number is of, of uh, APA respondents that uh, provided a, an en blanc uh, response? Thanks, Lord Mayor. I'll ask um, Tom McCready if he's online to respond. Thanks. Society member, if I can refer the uh, Lord Mayor and elected members to page, uh, I think we're looking at page six and page seven, but specifically page six of uh, the attachment, which refers to uh, in the detail 470 uh, pamphlets or uh, results were sent back to council. Um, and we've actually talked about how they were actually received. And there was 271 emails. In the body of the report, the emails are listed individually. Um, the narrative is actually put within the body of the report. So it's clearly identified within the report. So, so uh, thank, you, thank you, Tom. Is there, is there, is there, is there any evidence for the rejected or somehow not included in the report? Sorry, could you repeat that, Councillor? You broke up there. Is there any evidence for 700 plus respondents or uh, 700 plus uh, submissions that were not included? So just to, to re-emphasize, 471 plus 270, uh, 475 plus 271 is your, your 746. Oh, sorry, like I missed what, what, what were the What was the 471? That is the actual surveys, the pre-populated surveys, which were flyers, which were submitted to council. And then there's 200. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I got you. All right. Submitted, and that's contained within the body of the report. Yeah, that's great. Phil, it feels grinning away as if that somehow shoots down uh, the stuff of my argument. Well, it doesn't, Phil. Uh, guess what? It, 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 it doesn't. Uh, you had a group of responses. You had 271 emails. You had... 471 identical responses. Um, these were noted. These were noted in the in the report that we were we were that was submitted to us. These were all noted. Uh, you cannot 
you cannot, when you're faced with a giant block activist group, uh, simply dilute the entire results uh, with that one quite palpably, quite blatantly singular activist response. You can't do that. In fact, to do so would be completely delegitimize uh, the the, the uh, legitimacy of your, of your numbers. So the fact is that these numbers were noted. We are provided with all of these numbers. There has been no disguising, no hiding of these numbers. Uh, we're making a huge meal. We're making a huge mountain out of a molehill. Those numbers, uh, 700, 400, and 271 emails as a proportion of ratepayers in the city of Adelaide, uh, which are 20 something thousand, are minuscule. Are absolutely minuscule. The numbers are noted, they do not delegitimize the uh, report that we've received. They do not, do not cast any aspersion upon the administration, unlike uh, the aspersions cast by Councillor Sims and Councillor Martin. And I thoroughly and ask uh, members to accept, to, to recognize that uh, this is. This is, uh, to use their words, this is an absolute sham of a, of, of, this is a sham. The aspersions that are being cast by these minority councillors are an absolute sham. Thank you, Councillor Kerra. Um, Councillor Sims, you wanted to correct something and then I have Councillor Moran. Yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, um, Councillor Kerra has suggested that I've alleged alleged fraud on behalf of the administration. I have done no such thing. I want to make it very, very clear that I have never suggested that. And I'd like him to withdraw that ridiculous comment because um, that's certainly not what I've said. What I have said, Lord Mayor, is that the fault with this botched consultation rests with the elected body, not with the administration. I'll go to Councillor Moran. Lord Mayor. Uh, yes, I too take the exception to uh, what Councillor Kerr has said. Um, I think the previous speakers were very generous in um, their um, praise of the, or their uh, uh, not um, blaming the administration. I'm not quite sure I'd completely exonerate them, but um, the instructions from Team Adelaide were very clear. It was a proposal that wanted to and I think the consultation followed in that line, but of course that's not the administration's fault. Um, the suggestion, because I've got another motion later, but I'm still outraged by what Councillor Kerr has said, that in a democracy, in a consultation, you do. He seems to think you can pick and choose who's worthy. If it's reflecting the minority faction, as he calls them, minority councillors, then it must be deleted and given less importance. Thank God we don't do that in, a, in any level of government. One man, one vote. It is a very common way of answering a to put out a letter to members or to interested parties suggesting a format that they may or may want to, nobody's holding a gun to their head, they may or may want to instead of writing their own letter and uh, go to that, these will reflect the views of people that belong to the Adelaide Preservation Association. Um, the ADC themselves, uh, apparently, it was reported in the news, had a stall in the Adelaide Aquatic Centre, which I'm sure would not be allowed to have. And they too sent round um, many emails to their members. I noticed that, noticed that they weren't rejected. The Lord Mayor's repeatedly said, it's not a vote. Now, if we deleted uh, part four, she would be quite correct. But part four of this motion that, that um, uh, the uh, Councillor Sims and Councillor Martin tried to delete is a vote. It's a percentage. You can bet your dollar in three years' time, the football club comes back with a 75%, oh. not at a, and the, the rest of the report would be lost in the midst of time. Uh, the council could have asked a yes or no which would not have been able to be um, uh, misrepresented in any way. But to call uh, APA a block of activists, as Kara constantly denigrates um, this group, is ridiculous. And there are 746 votes that were not included or um, uh, consultation responses that were not included in the percentages in part four. 
this was a dud. It's not the administration's fault, it's Team Adelaide's fault. I can assure you that the rank and file people out there in normal... Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Anne. Um, are furious with the consultation. Uh, I know intelligent people who tried to get onto the website and just gave up after a while. So it wasn't a good consultation. The administrators admitted that they've burnt a lot from it and wouldn't, uh, also by inference, wouldn't do it the same way again. The History Trust's votes were also lumped together. I think that's shocking, and the Adelaide Football Club's members' votes were counted at uh, full value. This is not a good result. We all know what our electorate thinks. Okay. Thank you, Councillor. They, you know, oh, no, there was lots of other people that you don't know, blah, blah, blah. It's not true. You've just heard from Shane Sodi and Jane Lamack smith what people think of this. It's a dud deal. It was a dud situation. Thank you, Councillor Moran. I have Councillor Kouros, then Councillor Canole. Councillor Kouros, I've got Councillor Kerr at the back again. <coughs> Before I make a comment, um, did we receive any separate uh, pamphlets from the um, Adelaide Football Club in the same manner that we have received from APA? Um, my understanding is that the Adelaide Football Club encouraged people to go to the Your Say website, which is then we have identifiable sort of names and addresses linked to the responses. Um, part of the problem with the, the um, information that came from APA is that they weren't identifiable in a way that we knew whether they were individuals. Okay. Um, I, I agree with one element of all of this, and that is that this um, consultation is muddled. Everything about it is muddled. Um, muddled also in the messages that have been trying to get across in regards to this consultation. Um, the, the issue with, I mean, you're ent everyone's entitled to an opinion, and APA were entitled to their opinion to what they thought that it might look like, what, it, what the... Um, the proposal might look like. They're entitled to have those discussions. It's, it's a free world. Um, but the consultation was based on about the guiding principles. We were on phase one of this, uh, of this um, proposal. And the phase one was about the draft proposal that, was, um, that we have and about whether you agreed on the guiding principles. And then the question two, um, and then we had a question three. They were very loosely based. From that, um, I would have assumed if we were to go further, then the proposal that the AFC would have been more uh, fully fine-tuned to be given for further consultation. So there was a long way to go. The problem with um, what APA had done, and no disrespect to APA, because they, they, they are there to obviously voice their opinion in regards to what they're very passionate about and what we're all passionate about. But the problem with, with all of what, the, what they did is that they created a lot of fear to what, the, um, uh, what it was going to be about. And they also, um, you know, put, put us councillors up there and voicing what, what our thoughts were without even actually consulting with me. Um, I had one meeting with Shane Soddy, and in that meeting, I, I said to him that I would do whatever I can to continue having an aquatic centre there, because that is what's important. And he would rather have seen it return back to Parklands than if we haven't got um, any um, uh, you know, ability to be able to finance it ourselves. So, you know, everyone's entitled to opinion. And in going back to what Councillor Kira says, and in his defence, I mean, APA has been known to, you know, um, go against the Formula One, the V8 super, the super A's, the hospitals, Adelaide Oval, tennis, fringe, one Adelaide, and that's documented. So they have always voiced an opponent to anything happening on the parklands, and that is what they're there to do. The problem is that they created too much fear and it was the, the pamphlets that came in, they were verbatim. You, they virtually every word, every, all of the words were the same. And it's almost like they were coached to what they could say in this, in this um, consultation. If they directed everybody to the website and be able to consult something online, then that is what, where everybody went. And if you just did that, that is fine. 
what Shane Soddy directed his um, people to do wasn't right. And I understand that Councillor Martin, Councillor Sims and Councillor Moran, you know, um, think that, uh, you know, they, they, they campaigned with APA and they stood beside them on everything that they said and they created the Team Adelaide angle and politically they did a great job and I applaud them. I applaud them. Thank you, Councillor Kouros. We're talking about the consultation results. But the consultation in not including APA can understand that they need to be put aside if they were written separately on a separate piece of paper. If they had gone through that process in doing it the way that we asked everybody to do in way everyone was promoting um, the consultation to take place online through your say, then, then we would have had a more of a, uh, everyone in one place rather than everything all over the place. Thank you, Councillor Kuros. I have Councillor Canole and then Councillor Kerra. Okay, um, just a quick question of administration first, and that is that, irrespective with this conversation about numbers, because obviously this is a consultation process and not, not a particular vote, but it was just trying to reflect people's emotions. And don't forget, it's, it's uh, obviously those people who have strong feelings were involved and engaged. And a lot, obviously those who have a, a lesser view of it obviously weren't. So as a question to the administration, um, were all the views reflected in the report? Because that was the, I mean, that's what we're using. Through Lord Mayor Tom, can you just clarify? Through your presiding member, they were indeed. And again, if I reference uh, the elected members to the attachment, uh, it's referenced within there. Um, as highlighted, uh, APA decided to do their submissions differently. Um, it was very hard to quantify in regards to those submissions. However, it was uh, clearly captured within the body of the report. It talked to it within the report. I think uh, where the elected members are actually going to is in regards to how it was represented in regards to the USA, um, which certainly showed a percentage. But noting that consultation is not a is not a poll. It's actually seeking uh, information from the council or from the uh, community where the elected members can actually assess it. And there would have been further consultation undertaken should we have progressed with this. Thank you for that. Um, so I mean, that, and that's the point that I try to make here. I mean, there's a lot of centralisation about all sorts of uh, you know points and and how people express them. And, and certainly, uh, or I think many things could have been done better, and could, certainly could have been done in an atmosphere of trying to come out with with a, with some sort of understanding of of the general community, but also the wishes. And don't forget that we had two two consultations in one. Um, and as I, as I said previously, these are just hoping to inform us. But now at least one. It's, it, that it is not a vote, that we have the views of what people uh, have expressed. And the more important thing is that we still have, uh, a, a, you know, an issue with the, with the pool and how we're going to deal with the aquatic centre and how we're going to do that on behalf of the, the community. And given all the, uh, the, the, the difficult times we have now, uh, obviously this is going to be a, a really difficult uh, conversation to have going forward. So uh, the fundamental thing is we have information. We now have at least a, a good deal from both of those consultations. Uh, and, and let's not forget the, the football, uh, you know, the AF, AFC weren't able to put something together of which they could probably show simply because of the way the consultation had unfolded. And, and that is certainly uh, leaves uh, very difficult for them to put uh, forward anything for someone to generally be able to uh, assess uh, the true value for, you know, for us and for the, you know, the community at large. But based on this, at least, we have a, a something going forward, which is what uh, we as councils, who do have to make the decision is, is, whether this council or the next, on behalf of the community, uh, we have sufficient there that we can at least have a starting point and try to find a way to, for which we can administer the, the swimming pool and, and deliver uh, something that the community will enjoy and that we can afford uh, to provide. Thank you, Councillor Knoll. I have Councillor Kerra. Now, Councillor Kerra, you've already spoken, so is that a question? No, it was a response, uh, uh, Lord Mayor, so I will uh, I'll decline speaking. Thank you. I have Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, <clears throat> well, again, it's a little bit hypocritical to criticise 
the uh, consultation for being too narrow when in actual fact councillor sims highlighted to everyone how and he likes to remind us about this he wanted to make the entire consultation one question do you or do you not agree now that's incredibly narrow um so if we want to talk about the actual usefulness of what we're of the information we're collecting then let's let's not forget that but of course now it seems that people were not afforded the opportunity to manufacture their consent as noam, noam chomsky would say um, and so you're not happy with the consultation results, ergo, we are going to chuck the consultation results in the bin. And in fact, we're going to pull out specific figures, as was suggested in that attempted variation. And that's just, that's just incorrect. That's not how we should be approaching it. Now, furthermore, this figure, of, I think it was 746 that you have quoted, um, that doesn't count at all um, the fact that many of those emails are also... They're also which was highlighted by Tom in committee last week. So he actually double counting, but I'm sure Councillor Martin would like to double count the people who agree with him and ignore the rest. That counts Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you. Lord Mayor, um, well, I'm not the one trying to change the consultation results here. We need to remember, we need to remember that uh, this was not a vote. It seems Councillors Martin and Sims are getting confused because uh, Councillor Martin talk, talk, talked about voting. Councillor Sims talked about how to vote cards. This is not a vote. It is, it is, we are seeking community feedback on a, on a very important issue. And that, that, that sort of um, response to this just goes to highlight the amount of misinformation that has been distributed um, uh, by some groups in the community um, and also by councillors. So when we're, when we're looking at the things that went out, APA were the only group to give people pre-scripted words. And uh, I'm looking at it right here, um, tick box to endorse this response um, and or insert your own comments below. Uh, so tick the box. That's what they're saying. Tick the box and send it in. Um, now that is manufacturing consent. There were there were a significant amount of comms around that. Um, uh, there was a lot of media around it. They put out tens of thousands of flyers, quite literally. Um, and from what I can tell, the only thing the Adelaide Football Club did was send out an email. And if you actually look at the consultation results, um, you and, and read the email, you see that it just directed people to the website. And you would see the same day that, that email went out, there was actually also a spike in negative responses. That is because AFC did not dictate to tell people how to fill out the form like APA did. Yes, there was obviously an increase in positive responses, but there was also an increase in negative responses. And that's because they were directing people to the Your Say website, which is what they should have been doing. And that's what APA should have been doing all along. Um, uh, so we shouldn't be changing the results um, here, this consultation. I do think that if councillors had a bona fide approach to this, they actually would have amended it to send it back to the drawing board to say, include in the results and give us some fresh graphs and what have you. Um, uh, so I, I think they've actually gone about it a bit in a muddle headed way, um, but we shouldn't be changing this um, anyway. The results are reflected in there. It's all noted. It's there in the report. Um, if administration wanted to, uh, uh, hush this all up and, and shove it under the rug, and they wouldn't have even mentioned the ones that they rejected. So, so the, the, the implication of any sort of wrongdoing um, on their part is, um, uh, is, is incorrect. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Donovan. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, without belabouring the point, because this has already been discussed at committee and, and the points have all been covered uh, once again. However, um, it is worth noting that the reason why so much um, energy is being put, behind, put into uh, discussing this report, despite the fact that the Adelaide Football Club have withdrawn their unsolicited bid, is because of the way the data has been analysed. And I think it is worth minuting in some way this uh, discontent around the analysis of the data. And, you know, once again, I would um, uh, voice that this that administration have put in a huge amount of effort and certainly not a, a criticism at the amount of effort at the complexity of trying to analyse the data presented. However, to suggest that there is a problem with uh, a group um, all deciding what, upon a type of feedback and presenting that in a uniform way would be to reject just about every consultation ever undertaken. So to disregard all of the uh, support that was received from APA in regard to specific themes it, um, is really quite outrageous. 
to suggest that it has all been included in the report that we have received because we can mine through that data and look at two, over 2,000 individual responses without doing that, without administration doing that thematic analysis, I think is equally problematic. I agree that it's very complex. I understand, as has already been discussed by administration, that themes have been drawn out, which is very useful. But I think if graphs are going to be included that talk to agree or disagree, then to exclude those 700 plus uh, items of feedback that were received and not to summarise that data in some way is highly misleading. Uh, and I understand why administration has um, rationalised the choice of summarising the data that they did because it's a very convenient uh, set of discrete variables that can be easily summarised and perhaps the, uh, the information received for example, from APA was not in such a discrete um, set of uh, information. A lot of it was uh, qualitative, it wasn't quantitative in the, same, um, in the same way as some of the yes, no questions or agree, disagree questions. But that is where the problem lies, that there is now this huge portion of people who feel their view has not been represented, as has already been discussed. The reason why that's problematic is one, for future consultations, to because if this report is ever used um, to make any decisions in the future, then that data is not easily obtainable. And we know already from how that graph has been used, that it has been used to uh, assert that a majority of people agree um, based on feedback. So that is problematic because that is not what the indicated. Sorry, I'm not sure if that's working or not. I didn't mean that to be too loud in your ear. Thank you, Helen. Um, it's just I had my microphone off when the dinger was going before and nobody was listening to it, so my apologies. Um, members, I will go to Councillor Martin to sum up. Councillor Martin. Um, look, I thank uh, uh, Councillor Donovan for a reasoned uh, summary of the circumstances. Um, and I reject entirely the nonsense of the Deputy Lord Mayor and Councillor uh, Kira that somehow disagreeing with the outcome of this opinion poll is akin to smearing the reputations of the administration. That, that is impossible to extrapolate. What we can extrapolate, particularly after tonight, is that Team Adelaide are a bunch of recalcitrants. Um, they are Councillor, Councillor Martin, please. Oh, no, Lord Mayor, I'm making the point. That no, we're talking it, about the community yes, engagement findings. I do understand, Lord Mayor, and I'm pleased to hear that you're still interrupting me, even in the online version. But uh, let me say to you, Lord Mayor, it is clear from this discussion that the members of Team Adelaide cling still to this notion that it was possible to proceed with the Crows proposal for the parklands. They are recalcitrant. They are not listening to the community. Moreover, there are good grounds to be questioning aspects of the way in which this poll was conducted. The administration concedes that it excluded a very, very large number of responses from the Adelaide Parklands Preservation Association because they were pre-filled and or biased. Pre-filled and or biased. And there is no policy within the City of Adelaide that excludes from any consultation, any comment, which is either pre-filled or biased. That was a decision that was taken. It was a very unfortunate decision and one that I hope will never be repeated again. I, I regret very much that it has come to this, that people are still trying to defend their position while discrediting one of the organisations which had very serious concerns about this proposal. Uh, and by the way, uh, the president of uh, APA is Shane Sodi, and I'm sure he'd appreciate his name being pronounced correctly. Lord Mayor, uh, I urge members to support this. If they do not support it, then I'll be there to remind them, as will members of the community, this year, next year, the year after, they could not come to grips with the fact that their opinion poll and that's what it was, that's what it was, was flawed. And recognising it is the first step on the, the path to something better. Members, 
We will go to the vote on the alternate motions. First, first of all, just before you vote, we're just going to stop sharing so that you're all on screen. Uh, members, those in favour of the alternate motion, if I can see raised hands, thank you. And those against? So that is lost. Um, so members, that takes us back to the original motion. Uh, oh, sorry, Councillor Martin. I'll just go. You've been on. Lord, uh, Lord Mayor, I'm asking for a division. Thank you. Uh, so, Jenny. Yep. Thank you, Councillor Members of the Division. Please on the motion. I'll read out each of your names and if you can please advise whether you're in support of the motion or against the alternate motion. Councillor Moran. Oh, hang on, let me unmute you all, sorry, apologies. Sorry, Councillor Moran. Councillor Abraham today. Yes. No, no. Councillor Ho. Ho. Oh, people's unmuted. Councillor Ho. Oh. Councillor Kira. Against. Oh. Councillor Hyde. Sorry, Deputy Lord Mayor. Sorry, Deputy Lord Mayor. Could you say that again? No. Councillor Donovan. Oh, hang on. Sorry. Oh, I'm trying to unmute Councillor Donovan. There we go. Councillor Kuros. Sorry, Councillor Kuros. But here's the basic graph. Who's that? Someone's got TV or something on the back. Just a minute. Sorry, Councillor Kuros. I can't. Is it? Sorry, it's better. What was that? Are you for or against the alternate motion? Against. Councillor Martin? For. And Councillor Connell? Against. And Councillor Sims? For. Okay. Oh, that's what it looked like. Could you mute, could you mute everybody, please? Oh. This could only. Oh, okay. This could be. Uh, thank you, members. We now go back to the original motion, 12.2, and I'll look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Abrahamzadeh, and a seconder. Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Abrahamzadeh, did you wish to speak? Deputy Lord Mayor. Yes, Lord Mayor, I just reiterate my thanks to the administration um, uh, for the work that they've uh, done on this. I think despite the fact that this in, in some ways is fruitless considering what we were originally embarking on, I think there's still a monumental amount of work that has been undertaken. Um, uh, in uh, somewhat difficult circumstances, um, uh, the administration have done an excellent job and of course we note that with the consultation, um, uh, it was the council which uh, approved the um, uh, comms plan and, and communications around this consultation, which was brought in by the administration, and that was approved without any amendment. So council was merely approving what the administration put in front of us with regards to their approach with, with how they would do this. Um, uh, they are, of course, um, independent and execute um, uh, their, uh, uh, their duties with um, the utmost diligence. So um, I think they've done an excellent job. Obviously, there is some conjecture around um, uh, leaving APA out of this. Um, uh, that's all well and good for people to have their opinions on that, but it would set an incredibly poor precedent if we were to allow um, uh, a group, whether it's a community group or a group of individuals, uh, to basically stack the consultation. That's not what this is about. Um, uh, their views are still there, represented, um, uh, and that's the right thing to do as well, but they should not be included in the total pool uh, because they're not bona fide responses. If people had bona fide responses, they would log on to your site or, or, or do the right thing and give us what they think, not what someone else thinks for them. That's not how you're meant to approach a community consultation. We want to know what people think. We don't want to know 
um, uh, what one person uh, who's got a bit of money in a community group to spend and has done some polling and has done um, some other communications and put out some pamphlets thinks. That's not a community consultation. That's not a bona fide approach. Um, and so all the correct responses have been included. The others have, has of course been noted and I take Councillor Donovan's point, um, uh, but I would say as well that they are noted in there. Um, and so they're there for everyone to see, it's publicly available, the information is all there. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. I have Councillor Sims, then Moran, then Martin. Councillor Sims, just a moment, thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I can't support um, this motion and I encourage councillors to vote against it. Um, had Councillor Martin's amendment uh, been accepted um, or my variation with figure four taken out, then I would have been in a position to um, accept uh, noting this report. But what worries me is that this is going to be put into a vault somewhere and then in several years time, this frozen pizza will be pulled out, dusted off and people will say, hey presto, this is what people thought about this issue back at this moment in time. And I don't think that this is an accurate uh, capture of community sentiment. Councillor um, Kouros said earlier that the campaign against this proposal from the Adelaide Crows had been very effective. I agree. That's because the communities uh, was supportive of the campaign against what the Crows were putting forward. There was the wind at the back of the Adelaide Parklands Association and others because there was such a deep vein of, pers of uh, community opposition to this proposal. And I'm very disappointed that the views of many members of our community have been disregarded in this way. It is not a crime, um, as some councillors seem to have suggested, for political lobby groups to seek to mobilise constituents and to get them to engage in a community consultation. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that. It's up to the respondent whether or not they wish to make a submission, and many did so. Unfortunately, their views are not being taken into account. And I think this is a very, very dark day for democracy in the city of Adelaide. We have people of the community who have participated in this consultation in good faith, and they have had their views disregarded. Why? Because they do not accord with the views of some members of this council, and I think that's very disappointing. So I won't be supporting this. I urge all members to reject this because I do not want this to go down in the history books of the city of Adelaide as being an accurate record of community sentiment. And I would urge for the public record, people who are interested in community sentiment on this matter, to have a look at the opinion poll that was very representative, that was conducted by the Adelaide Parklands Association, that had a broad uh, sample group and told a very, very different story. Listen to the views in the community and make up your own mind. But I think it would be a real folly for this council to say that uh, this um, consultation report is an accurate um, pulse, uh, an accurate reflection of the pulse of the community at this time, because I don't think that's true. And uh, this really has been a terrible process. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Uh, I have Councillor Moran and then Councillor Martin, Councillor Moran. I'm very shocked to hear that anybody that filled out the form letter um, was said to have not been an intelligent person that had a view, that they were just reflecting the view to some unusually worded by the Deputy Lord Mayor, moneyed group uh, with firm views. In my 25 years on council, the form letter put out by the North Adelaide Society, uh, residence groups, and so forth, is a legitimate and well used form of um, being of entering a consultation result. I mean, when I saw that, there was nothing wrong with it. Every consultation we have ever done, groups of like minded people to help their members put in their vote and to encourage them to make it easier for them, send them a form letter. You don't have to use it, but many people do. I would uh, urge the administration to look back through all the consultations we've done look through all the development consultations that have been done and the form letter is a very, very common vehicle to help people 
express their views. Every, when uh, Councillor Kira said, oh, look at APA, uh, Mr. Soddy uh, uh, opposes the aquatic extent, he opposed this, he opposed that. They are the Parkland Preservation Society. They are the people that oppose building on the parklands as the council is supposed to do, as the guardians. So I think it's absolutely shocking that 746 people's views have been discounted because the Deputy Lord Mayor and others think that they are biased, they're thoughtless, and they're not the true reflection of that person's views. And I can assure Councillor Kouros that yes, Councillor Sims, Martin and Moran did represent the majority of the people. We didn't have to run a campaign. What we were being were good councillors who were reflecting the overwhelming sentiment from young people, middle-aged people, old people, people that didn't live in North Adelaide and the Adelaide City Council area. It was overwhelming. And it would take a very poor politician to ignore the number of views. And I can assure you, at the next election, I will be pointing that out to everybody and it will still be very raw in their mind. Thank you, Councillor Moran. I have Councillor Martin, then Kira, then Kuros. Councillor Martin. Yeah, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I, I, I endorse the, uh, the comments of Councillor Moran. I, I, I do not understand what the difference is between uh, a pre-filled form, a heart of vote card, or even a petition. It is people simply endorsing a view that they share. And that is all that has happened on this occasion. And those views have been discounted and now discredited. And I say to the members of Team Adelaide, um, by all means, vote to accept this, uh, this result, this poll result, discredited though it may be, accept this, but then let's stop criticising people for expressing their point of view. Let's try not to discredit the organisations like the Adelaide Parklands Preservation Association, who've done so much to protect the parklands over decades. And then let's move on. Let's now start about never ever doing this again, never ever putting the parklands of this city, uh, the parklands of the people of South Australia at risk again. Um, now, by all means vote, I won't endorse this. I think this is a, a slap in the face uh, to people who contributed to something uh, with goodwill uh, and therefore I can't endorse it. But please move on after this, recognise that it was a, a bad poll and we can be good councillors by protecting the parklands in future. Um, can you hear me? Okay, uh, look, uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't a bad poll. Um, Councillor Martin talks about uh, discrediting. Uh, Councillor Martin, uh, Councillor Sims, Councillor Moran uh, could perhaps begin by taking their own advice and stop discrediting the administration because that is what they've been doing. Councillor Sims asked me to retract my comment uh, that he has uh, smeared and made aspersions about the administration. I'll do no such thing because that is exactly what Councillor Sims, Councillor Martin and Councillor Moran have done time and time again throughout this whole process. They, they have smeared the administration. They've made comments like, oh, you trot out Tom McCready with his Irish accent to, uh, to, to paper over things. You know, it, it, it's manifest what they've been doing. Uh, they, they ought to take their own advice. Um, look, uh, the, another aspect of this that I would urge councillors to consider is that uh, there is a narrative being cast uh, by, uh, by particular councillors that this is somehow some kind of referendum. Uh, and, and what they're doing is they're trying to say, this is a referendum, the whole thing is illegitimate, it's rank, it's a bad poll, it's awful, all this sort of stuff. They, they hide. They hide and run when those words are, are put back to them. But that, that is what they're saying. They're calling out the administration and the, and the, uh, and, and the uh, uh, survey as being, as being illegitimate. Uh, that is what they're doing. This is, not, uh, this is not a referendum. This is, a, uh, this is an input into our decision oh, wow. elected members. Let's not forget that our decision comes that the, the, 
uh, vast majority of respondents to this poll are silent. The vast majority of respondents to this poll are silent. They spoke during the election. They delegated to members make, to make decisions of this nature. They delegated those decisions to be made with input uh, from uh, public consultations, but they did not delegate some kind of referendum uh, to be corrupted and, uh, and pushed and coerced okay. and maligned Councillor, thank you. By, by, uh, by minority councillors. So reject that narrative is what I say to council. Reject that narrative and stand firm against these rabble rousers. Councillor Kuros. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I just want to correct Councillor Sims um, in what I said in, in their campaign being very effective, actually meant by putting out the information in the wrong way. That was what was very effective. Um, also, I, I just want to um, share um, that, you know, the, the consultation that, um, that we had out there um, was basically uh, asking the right questions um, in, in regards to where we were at. And we were only at the guiding principles. And there isn't anyone on council um, that suggests that we build um, commercial uh, uh, entities in, on every bit of part of the parklands. We were talking about the aquatic centre and we're talking about how to keep that aquatic centre open. It was a proposal that was given to council by, set up by the previous term of council as a unsolicited bid. It was um, open for them to put it forward. And I can see councillor Martin shaking his head because he would love to always throw out a conspiracy theory. It was just very, very simple. And him indicating that I'm crazy actually just indicates how um, ineffective his argument is overall. Thank you, Councillor Kuros. Uh, members, I will go back to Councillor Abraham today. Oh, sorry, Councillor. Sorry, sorry, Councillor Donovan. Didn't see your hand. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, look, very briefly, one, the un unsolicited bid process occurred in this term of council, just to correct that so that was was our council it wasn't the last council um i think what council to the point Kuros, around uh, sorry i think what council course means that the uh, process was um endorsed by the last council as opposed to the bid you're correct with the bid that came in this term of council to the point around um community consultation being invalid if we use some kind of checkbox process i.e the APA. uh responses. The first question of the formal consultation process asked whether respondents thought the AFC design aligned with the guiding principles and, and asked for a checkbox response. So I think if we dismiss checkbox responses, then we're dismissing the whole, whole consultation. I'm still happy to note this report um, as per the recommendation of council. So I um, will still, uh, unless further debate arises that uh, that switches that opinion, I will still be supporting this noting of the report because it does still contain the information in some format. You know, the, the rationale behind this extended debate for something that is ultimately being withdrawn is simply to draw attention to the fact that information has been misrepresented. A large group of people have not had their information included within the consultation in the format that would be expected given how other information has been presented. I'll leave it at that. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Thank you. Um, look, I think we can all agree that uh, the consultation process needs to be better and I look forward to a workshop for us to work through how we might do that. Um, and I think it's also really important that uh, we, we all understand that advocacy groups have a role to play. Um, and unfortunately, uh, part of what uh, the assessment was trying to do was look at where there's du duplication or things weren't identifiable, which is very hard even with, um, and I agree with Councillor Moran in terms of, you know, uh, those letters have been used for many, many years, but it's always with an identifiable uh, person at the end of it. And that's actually been part of the difficulty in assessing that also, um, that we know that there has been duplications between things that were sent in that way and then also through the Your Say. So I think there's lots, lots of things that have been learned by this. 
um, and um, I look forward to that workshop so we can work through our consultation process um, uh, because it is one of the most important things that we actually have to do in talking to our community. Um, now, I'm going to go to Councillor Abraham Zadeh to sum up. Councillor Abraham Zadeh. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, just very quickly, I do want to, uh, again, thank the administration for the hard work that they've put into uh, this uh, large body of work. Um, I also remind members that um, community feedback is about taking feedback. It's not necessarily about a, uh, a tally chart. Um, uh, but as you said, you know, this, uh, uh, this whole uh, unsolicited um, uh, proposal process does need to be uh, looked at. Well, um, at the end of the day, the results are in and the results speak for themselves. So uh, I uh, urge members to support this. Members, uh, I will go to the vote. Those in favour of noting the community engagement findings, if I ask you to raise your hand. Thank you. And those against? Sorry. That is carried. Councillor Martin has his hand up. Councillor Martin? Division. Division, division has been called. <laughs> Council members, the division has been called. I'll read out your name and please state whether you're for or against the motion. Councillor Moran? Sorry, Councillor Moran. I'm against. Thank you. Councillor Abraham today. Four. Councillor Ho. Four. Councillor Kira. Four. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. Aye. Sorry, Deputy Lord Mayor. Aye. Aye. <laughs> Councillor Donovan. Four. <laughs> Councillor Kuros. Four. Councillor Martin. Against. Councillor Canole. Councillor Sims. Against. Thank you, members. Uh, that takes us to 12.3, which is the childcare facilities. And I will look for a mover. Uh, I think I need... I need a mover with your electronic hands. Thank you. I've got uh, Councillor Moran and Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Moran, would you like to speak just one moment? I'll unmute you. There we go. Councillor Moran. Yes. I mean, we started, um, uh, the Lord Mayor and I started this some time ago in the recognition that, that there were not enough childcare places in the city um, for our working women. Um, unlike generations before, most, if not all women work and a good proportion of them work in our city. And many young mothers or mothers go back to work earlier than they would have liked to and, uh, uh, and have ceased breastfeeding um, because they've had to go back to work. In talking to many of our own employees um, in the council, the idea would be to have a childcare centre in every large office block so girls or women, indeed fathers, can visit their children easily via a lift. Uh, this is the very first step. It doesn't go nearly as far as I'd like it to go, but it's a good first step um, to recognise that uh, young working women need to be close to their babies and um, benefits both the mother, father and the child have close association. It would also make us, Perth's going down this track too, make us be an enormous draw cut to work in the city. If you're a legal firm, a large legal firm with over 50% uh, female lawyers, what a terrific draw cut that you could put a childcare centre with the open air on the roof. But anyway, that's a, a long way to go yet, but this is a good first step. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, uh, members, sorry, I have Councillor Sims. Thanks, uh, thanks Lord Mayor. 
Um, I just wanted to acknowledge Councillor Moran's work in putting this forward. I know this is an issue that she's been advocating on for a number of years. Um, and I also understand you and Councillor Moran worked on this together, Lord Mayor, so I want to acknowledge your work as well. I think um, this is a good step in the right direction. Anything that we can do to make our city more child friendly, more family friendly, I think we've got to look at. Um, and uh, particularly, you know, during these challenging times, um, anything that we can do to improve flexibility for people at work and improve um, access to childcare and so on where appropriate, I think um, we need to look at. So, um, yes, I think this is really a step in the right direction. Thank you. Uh, members, if not, I'd also uh, uh, thank administration for bringing this forward. Um, I think the advocacy that we can do in this area, um, uh, any advocacy that we can do is going to pay dividends for us. And I agree wholeheartedly with Councillor Moran in terms of uh, what an absolute boon it would be for city workers to be able to have the children close by. Um, also that advocacy has actually uh, seen some real deliverables in terms of um, our central market arcade redevelopment who is now considering the childcare uh, centre as part of their development which wouldn't have happened had we not actually brought this to the fore again. So um, I thank members for their support and I will go back to the mover to sum up. Councillor Moran. Uh, thank you Lord Mayor. Yes, I think with the changing um, workforce um, and the position of women in the workforce, um, it is very, very important. And we could be a world leader in this, apart from Perth, Perth who seems to have got the jump on us a bit by uh, putting in, in their tallest building, I can't remember what it is now, um, the, fir the top floors uh, all down there, and they indeed run it, run it as a, at a cost to, uh, to the council. So once again, it could, be, it could be a business that we're looking to getting into, because it certainly is a drop. The retrofitting buildings and uh, the central retrofit is a good example, but it'd also be wonderful if we could uh, incorporate a, um, a childcare facility for our own workers in uh, Perry Street. That would be great. We could lead by example and others would follow because the best way to lead is by. I just lost. I've just lost the very end of that, but I think you said by example. So, members, uh, we'll go to the vote. Uh, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Thank you. Um, now, Councillor Canole, you're just disappearing off my screen. If I can get you to sit forward just a little bit, thank you. Um, that takes us, members, to 12.4, which is the amendments to the Heritage Incentive Scheme Operating Guidelines. And I'll look for a mover. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Second to Councillor Kouros. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. No, I'm good. Thank you. Just to commend administration on their work. And it's um, pleasing to see that notwithstanding what our, um, our final budget for the next financial year will look like, um, that uh, once again, the Heritage Incentive Scheme Fund um, is growing uh, by a not insignificant amount, which I think is a good result. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Kouros. You did all right. Thank you. Uh, members? If not, I'll go back to the mover to sum up. Deputy Lord Mayor. Summed up. Thank you. Members to the vote, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Uh, members, that takes us to 12.5, which is the Adelaide Archery Club lease consultation results. And I will look for a mover. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. And a seconder, uh, Councillor Kouros, Deputy Lord Mayor. Reserve my right. Councillor Kouros. Uh, members, oh, sorry, Councillor Martin. Yes, look, I, I have a, a question to the administration. Um, I've, uh, I've read the consultation, uh, noting that most of the responses come from uh, the members of the club who are seeking this extension. But uh, the person who complained of the cost of the addition claimed to be a member of the club and claimed that the proposed cost of a quarter of a million dollars was beyond the resources of the club. Is that so? 
Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry, apologies. I'll just press the wrong thing there. Um, just lost it. Three or there. Tom, can you respond to that? I've just lost my Zoom. Sorry, through you, presiding member. Um, you're indeed correct in regards to the comments of the person who uh, responded in the negative. However, that's up to the person's comments. If you would see, Councillor Martin, that the majority of the club did not talk to that matter whatsoever. So I cannot say whether it is factual or non factual because that's not the question that we posed. We posed the question in regards to the lease as per the request of council in regards to going out to consultation, and that's the responses. Well, uh, uh, look, thank you for that, but I, I guess the question I'm asking is, uh, we've consulted people saying, what do you think about the extension of this lease based on there being an addition, which is worth a quarter of a million dollars, and somebody who purports to be on the inside says, this is uh, more than the club can actually find. Um, no one sent it into a discussion with the club to see whether that's true or whether it's a, a wild claim? Through, through you, Councillor, and through presiding members, uh, again, there was no investigation of the individual's comments. The reason, reason being for that is we had other members of the committee and also the club respond, and not one of them highlighted their financial position. In, in probably in keeping with the consultation, they also said that they were able to actually exercise their right to progress with that 15 year lease. Um, so there was nothing that drove us to say that they could not do that. Naturally, the next point for us would actually be to sit down with the club and uh, advise them of council's decision. And we're happy to actually raise that as an issue. And if it comes to light that there is an issue based on what you've just said, we'll bring that back to council. Thank you. Uh, oh, I didn't say it, by the way. I'm just asking uh, uh, about the information in the consultation provided by you, Tom. Thank you. Thank you. Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak? No, oh, thank you. Oh, sorry, your hand's still right there. So. Um, members, any further? If not, I'll go back to the Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Thumbed up. Thank you. Members to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. <laughs> Members 12.6, the Stables Victoria Square lease assignment. I look for a mover. I have Deputy Lord Mayor. I look for a seconder. Uh, Councillor Canole. Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak? No, thank you. No, uh, Councillor Canal. Uh, members? If not, I'll go back to the Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Summed up. Members to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? Sorry, I'll just do that again. Those in favour? Sorry, hands up. Thank you. Those against? That is carried. Thank you. Um, 12.7 is the City of Adelaide submission to Federal Parliament inquiry on homelessness. Um, I have got the Deputy Lord Mayor and I've got Councillor Sims. Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. I have an alternative motion that I wish to move. I circulated it earlier. It should be there. Um, would you like me to just describe that in the first instance for members? Yeah, or read it all out or one second i'll just check with administration can, can everybody see it uh, okay sorry they're just doing a, a a slight adjustment on one one moment sorry
<laughs> Sorry, it just takes a moment to update. The next one. Um, so members, I'm not sure if you can read that. I'll just give you a moment. Please let me know if you can't read the um, alternate motion. And I will just check with Councillor Sims if he's still happy to second that. Thank you. Okay, uh, so Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak to it? Yeah, just just briefly, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, obviously, obviously, uh, I take no issue with um, largely what's in the submission currently. Um, and in fact, at the end, uh, I've said that if in revising this submission, a new deadline is made and we can't actually um, get council to approve a revised submissions, then we should just put this one in anyway if we don't have a meeting before that deadline. But um, obviously this pandemic and the response and what I think has by and large been a good response by the state government um, and they've led the way for other state governments who have done the same thing interstate. Um, uh, it's, an, it's an opportunity, um, they've done a good job and uh, we now know actually how uh, straightforward it is in many ways uh, to get rough sleepers and people that need a roof over their head into accommodation and into lodgings. Um, uh, and I think perhaps we've been sort of burfy to some degree about how difficult it is. Now, I acknowledge that it's not economically feasible um, to house people in hotels over the longer term. I absolutely appreciate that. But that doesn't mean there aren't other options for social housing um, uh, that are not necessarily, you know, a, a four, three, four hundred thousand dollar unit um, uh, cost to build. Um, so there are other options that can be considered. The effectiveness of having people in shelter is what's important here. Um, and we need to highlight after this that um, it can be done going forward. Um, uh, I know around Hut Street, it's a lot quieter. The Hut Street Centre are delivering services to people in their homes or in their accommodation, um, uh, which the residents around here are very pleased about because it's meant dis less disruptions and antisocial behaviour here. So um, the state government's response has been good, but at the same time, we have to hold them to that new standard that has been created. Um, uh, and we have to ensure that we don't go backwards from here. And I'd like to see that reflected in the submission. Currently it isn't, but I think we've got a really good opportunity to. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, look, I endorse a lot of uh, what Councillor Hyde has said, and I'm very happy with um, this alternate motion. Um, you know, it's not often, Lord Mayor, that I have cause to praise the um, Liberal government at a state level or a federal level. So this is high praise indeed. Um, but I am very, very impressed with the way that the Liberal um, Party uh, here in South Australia have handled this issue, um, finding temporary accommodation for people who are sleeping rough on our city streets. As Councillor Hyde has said, um, this has uh, demonstrated that we can solve the issue of homelessness in our city. It's always been within our capacity uh, to solve it, uh, levels of government working together to solve this. And, uh, you know, I fundamentally believe housing is a human right. Everybody has a right to a roof over their head and a place to call home, not just during a pandemic, but all throughout the year. Um, and the critical thing here, of course, Lord Mayor, is for the state government to build on their response to ensure that these people are then moved into long-term housing. And I really hope that what they will do is build social housing to accommodate people who are sleeping rough on our city streets. But I hope that this is a real circuit breaker for people, to have them provided with accommodation so they're not sleeping on the street. It gives the opportunity for government to link them in to support services and um, I really hope that happens. I agree with Councillor Hyde, when we're doing good work, then we should uh, amplify that at a national level. And I'm hopeful that other states might look at what has been done here in South Australia and um, consider uh, this in their jurisdictions. But again, the challenge is, whilst we, the state government has got this part right, they need to ensure that this is a pathway for long-term accommodation so that we don't see people when this pandemic is over returning to homelessness um, on our city streets. I also want to uh, praise the work of um, administration in putting together this submission. 
and in working with the state government on some of these solutions. I know that you've been advocating on that too, Lord Mayor. I'm very appreciative of that work because um, I think this has been obviously a very distressing and, and upsetting time for everybody, um, but it does give me some sense of hope when we are finally able to see some support being provided to the most vulnerable members of our community. So, um, as I say, I hope that it's the pathway to some longer term support. Thank you, Councillor Sims. I have Councillor Martin, then Councillor Moran. Councillor Martin. Um, yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I just want to embellish uh, that praise of the Marshall Government's handling of the whole COVID-19 pandemic, and particularly the way in which it's uh, handled the issue of homelessness. Um, uh, it has been just exemplary. But uh, uh, a question of the mover, um, we, we are proposing to revise the submission, which we've all seen and approved, to incorporate analysis and feedback on this measure. Whose analysis and feedback are we incorporating and what does it say, basically? I suppose that would be the staff that put together the original submission. Um, and as it said, I think the main thing that I want to capture in there is, as Councillor Sims has said, this has actually, this has been able to be rolled out. It's been rolled out quickly um, uh, and, and somewhat seamlessly from what, from what I can tell. And I want us to look at that. If, if people say it's too hard, well, I want us to have something in writing that, there's a, that looks at how hard it actually is so we can compare apples with apples, so to speak. And is it to be only a positive response? It won't incorporate any negative feedback that this worked or that didn't work? Thank you. I, I... That's a question. Um, yes, but, you know, questions across the chamber. Um, chamber oh, no. as it is, a Zoom chamber. <laughs> oh, no, Lord Mayor, I'm asking for you the, the rules stand. No, no, Councillor Martin, I'm not just seeking to blow wind up the government's behind. I think this needs to be an overarching response that looks at good, bad, otherwise ugly, attractive. I, I'm not fussed. I'll leave that to the experts, but I think it's important to look at it regardless. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Moran, there we go. I think this shows that this is not as multifactorial and a difficult problem as we've been asked to believe by the previous government. Um, the, the councillors then always argued that we weren't asking to wait for the cure for um, alcoholism, mental illness, disenfranchisement. We were just asking that the people freezing out on the streets were put in some sort of shelter and not left out in the, in the freezing cold of winter and the boiling heat of summer. And we were always told by um, the people before this government that, oh, you know, it was just too big a problem. It was, you didn't understand. You don't, you don't know what it's like. These people don't want to be housed. But overnight, the Marshall government has shown us that it is quite possible to put people in a safe place out of the weather and out of harm's way. So once it's been done once, I think it'd be hard to, um, put that genie back in the bottle, if you, if you know what I mean. But we've seen that it can be done. We've seen that homelessness, and homeless is what I'm talking about, is a, a, a safe shelter for somebody to, to sleep and live in, where they're not in danger in the parklands at night, suffering out in the street. Mind you, I was concerned that in walking down Spring Street um, today and, and a few days ago, that there seemed to be as sleepers there as there always have been. Um, I was told by the administration that these may be homeless, but could I ask the administration if they do um, to relocate these people into either their homes or to a safe location um, because of the COVID-19. There's a lot of uh, filth in that street. I know we're doing double cleaning, but i tell you what today, there was a lot of urine and a lot of vomit. Um, so in that way, it hasn't improved uh, King William Street at all. But um, I'm glad to hear that all the truly homeless that have been identified are now living. So living. And that's all we ever ask, that the street is not a place for a vulnerable person. 
and it's just government has picked it up. And I, I do want to blow a bit of smoke up their ass. I think there is no need to this. I would like this to um, to praise the government and say this can be done virtually overnight. And if when COVID-19 um, finally burns itself out and we find all those people thrown out of their temporary accommodation, I think that's when we really criticise the government. But um, uh, we are, uh, to an extent, our staff and this council are experts and um, I would like this to be um, run, that report to be run past the council so we can have a look at it before it's been part of the submission. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Moran. Um, so, if there's no more speakers, I'll just say, look, uh, I also want to acknowledge and thank the extraordinary work. I mean, obviously, these are crazy circumstances and um, it's not often we would have uh, empty hotels and motels to accommodate uh, homeless people. Um, also want to acknowledge the work of the Adelaide Zero Project um, and the services that have come in behind the by name list because that's how we understand who is homeless and what services they're accessing and that's allowed the service providers to come in behind them and give them the services that they need while they are in accommodation. Um, it, you know, I have always uh, supported and believe in a housing first solution to homelessness and I think that uh, we can see very, very clearly that this is a way forward and I uh, commend the Deputy Lord Mayor for making this alternate motion so that we can actually put that as part of our consideration and our response going forward. I'll go back to the Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Thanks, Lord Mayor, and you're right. It was remiss of me not to highlight that one of the only reasons we were able to lead the way um, was because of the by name list, because of the work that this um, uh, city has done with the Don Dunstan Foundation and Adelaide Zero Project um, and other and many and varied stakeholders in that and the volunteers that go out um, uh, frequently and go and count and, and uh, account for um, all those rough sleepers in the city. Um, I think this is the new standard. This is the standard that we as a community should be uh, requesting of our government and it's clear that this standard uh, can be met. Um, again, hotels may not be economically sustainable in the long term, um, uh, but certainly in the short term and to ensure that people don't slip into chronic homelessness, um, this is a, a very important outcome. And like I said, we can look at other social housing options for the longer term that are cheaper than your conventional house. Um, we don't have to put people up in the four seasons, but we need to make sure that they've got a roof over their heads so that they can get the rest of their um, uh, parts of their life back together um, uh, and become a, a, a welcome and functioning member of society once again. <laughs> Members, we'll go to the vote. Uh, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Uh, now, we, we will be going through a break soon, but um, we'll just keep going for a short while, probably um, at around eight o'clock. I'm hoping that we'll get to the break. 12.8 um, is the e-scooter update report. Uh, I need the clicking thing, Councillor Abraham Zadeh. The hand, thank you, Councillor Abraham Zadeh. And a second to Councillor Canole. Ab uh, Councillor Abraham Zadeh, did you wish to speak? No. No. Uh, Councillor Canole, did you wish to speak to the mm. motion? Reserve your right. Uh, members, I have Councillor Martin. Did you wish to speak, Councillor Martin? Uh, yes, I do. I, look, I uh, just want uh, to record uh, for the purposes of this meeting the administration's undertaking that it will ensure that cane lawyers who are doing this $50,000 plus investigation um, provides recommendations uh, for future processes if that's required. But I wonder also if cane lawyers could ascertain what impact uh, comments by the elected body had on the process. Um, uh, by making public statements. You, you'll recall that the acting Lord Mayor, uh, when the concerns of the, uh, the bidders was first raised, um, told media that um, this was a sound process, that there was no problem, um, there was nothing wrong 
uh, we stood by our staff and the decisions that were taken uh, and everyone uh, could feel better if we just had a quick look at it ourselves. In other words, nothing to see here, let's move on. Um, now, I'm just wondering uh, whether we might ask uh, the investigators uh, to find out uh, whether in fact that is actually helpful to the process, whether elected members immediately dismissing concerns that are raised by other parties, particularly bidders in these processes, um, is prejudicial. Uh, I think that's a I'll ask, I'll ask the CEO. CEO, would you like to comment? Sorry. Whoop. Yep. Through you, Lord Mayor. We've engaged Kane lawyers who have developed the scope to undertake the investigation. The investigation is to the full extent of the legislation. It's, it's, um, it's a full merits review. That will be a comprehensive review fully in accordance with the statutory provisions. Um, my belief is that is adequate for the purposes of, of the investigation. Um, it'll be reported to you as council members in open agenda, and it will include, um, I, am, I imagine, any necessary recommendations for process improvements, if there are any in fact. So in my view, uh, the review will be very comprehensive, full merits, and to full, the full extent of the statutory requirements. Thank you, CEO. Uh, I'm mean, sorry, I'll just unmute you, Councillor. Councillor Martin. Oh, I'm just asking if, and I hear what the CEO uh, said, but it, it didn't address the question. That is to say, um, could we ask Kay lawyers just to have a look at, you know, given the comments of the acting Lord Mayor that everything was tickety-boo, whether that in fact had any influence? on the position we find ourselves in. CEO? Yeah, through you, Lord Mayor. I'll be having a conversation with Kane lawyers. Um, if they believe there's any merit in having conversations with council members, that'll be their call. I don't want to influence their review process. Um, they've been uh, charged with responding to uh, the request for review. Uh, in my view, that needs to be done independently. Um, and I'm not going to be guiding them in any way because I need to preserve the independence of the reviewers. Uh, thank you. I uh, have uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. Did you wish to speak? Uh, yes, just briefly, Lord Mayor. For Councillor Martin's benefit, um, a merits review is a review on the process that delivered the outcome, which was the recommendation by the administrators to appoint Neuron and ride or to award permits to Neuron and ride. It's not a review necessarily of things that happened after the fact, although I would be interested to hear what Kane lawyers come back um, uh, to the CEO with and whether they think um, otherwise. That's what a merit review is supposed to do. Um, uh, of course, we know what the um, commentary by elected members delivered and the commentary by councillors such as Councillor Martin um, and I think Councillor Moran was a co-conspirator in that, that special uh, meeting, which never happened. Um, what that did was serve to publicly egg these disgruntled parties on. Um, and in doing that, those councillors have delivered us with, uh, I think it was, was it $46,000? At least that was an estimate. $46,110, oh, and that doesn't include GST. So GST is exclusive of that figure. Um, and that is an estimate, so it might actually be more. So, so those councillors who have cited once again against um, our administration, as they so often do, um, uh, and egged on disgruntled people who, by the way, by the way, also applied for the coastal um, e-scooter permit as well. And lo and behold, what happened in that process? We had Neuron and Ride who were awarded contracts there. I didn't see um, uh, any any adverse uh, adverse findings or anything by by the applicant there. I didn't see a merits review. I didn't see any disgruntled media. And that's because their councils accepted their administration's recommendation and they decided they wouldn't be bullied. They would not be bullied by disgruntled third parties. Of course, sadly, the politics in this instance, the politics in the chamber, once again, went out into the public and who foots the bill? It's the great poll. $46,000, $46,110 and $46,110 plus GST at least and I think, Lord Mayor, that should actually come out of the councillor's allowances um, that requested that. Honestly, they should pay it back. Exactly, Lord they should pay it back. Okay. I have Councillor uh, Moran. 
Councillor Moran. Oh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, I'm absolutely flummoxed by uh, the Deputy Lord Mayor's mean-spirited uh, accusations. He seems to know a lot more of the process of the East Luther than any of us do. Um, I supported um, calling a meeting. We were reading some very, very worrying media, and we were also receiving worrying emails. Um, but as said, clearly as much as I say with what went on, I never um, put a straight on this. I just wanted to know more. And I, as I said, it seems some knew more than others. I knew nothing about it. And uh, it did seem to be worrying. And I was very churlish of TPA not to um, come to the party and have a meeting so that we could be updated. The CEO very personally and explained it and I had to uh, trust his judgment. There was no conspiracy, uh, we haven't lost any money. And I personally was sick and tired of the constant debate, completely unfolded by you, Lord Mayor. And I think it's really uh, important that he, he thinks he's making a name for himself as a young Turk. I don't think that's the name he's making. For Thank him. you, Councillor Moran. You're breaking up um, when you're speaking. I'm not sure. I don't know what everybody. Uh, what you said was, well, his comment is spirited. Yeah, no, it's not. It, no, I, I heard what you said. It's just, it's really breaking up a lot while you're speaking. So, um, I have Councillor Martin. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, uh, through you, I, can I just say that I, I reject any assertion that I'm responsible for this inquiry? And I know nothing about any meeting. I don't know what meeting that uh, the Deputy Lord Mayor is referring to, and I'd be very pleased to understand. Um, is it a meeting I attended, or he attended, or somebody else? Uh, well, so, that's a, you, so you're asking me to ask the question, right? So well, through you, Lord, through you Mayor. Lord Mayor, I've, I've been accused of some allegation about a meeting. Thank you. No, I, I, I got the meeting. So, sorry, I got the, I got the question. Thank you, um, Councillor Martin, through you, Lord Mayor. Um, that was the special meeting that yourself and a couple of other councillors oh. decided to call without clarifying whether councillors were free, but you gave it to the media first. That was that one? The oh, one that didn't check without firing. Special meeting. Okay. Oh, thank you, that Lord one. Mayor. Thank you. Oh, I understand that. Okay. Thank you. Members, uh, if there's no other speakers, I'll go back to Councillor Abraham today to sum up. Councillor Abraham today. Thumbs up. Thank you. <laughs> Members to the vote, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Uh, it is eight o'clock. How many have we got? Uh, Members, I've got two more um, pieces of business before we get to questions on notice. Is everybody happy to carry on for another five minutes to get through these two? Yeah, generally? Yep, and then we'll have a, I might take a slightly longer break, a 15, 20 minute break so everybody can get something to eat and uh, some refreshments. So, um, uh, so we go to 12 point nine, which is the appointment of a councillor to the Adelaide Central Market Board Member Selection Panel. So this is the assessment panel uh, that puts forward uh, the board members to the council. Um, now, I didn't see whose hand went up first, but I've got uh, Deputy Lord Mayor and Councillor Moran. So Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak? Um, I just have a question first of all, Lord Mayor. Is this um, noting that in the report it spoke about um, the two the two panels the ca the uh, sorry the board member selection panel and then the chair selection panel. Uh, I think it, it's the same. My understanding it's the same panel. This was the panel that um, uh, former councillor Hassam Abiyad was on, and I think yourself and councillor Donovan are still on. Yeah, correct. However, my, my understanding of that one, um, and I think if you go back to the minutes, you'll see that it was only appointing the board member selection panel. The chair selection panel is a different panel. 
in the ACMA Charter, it's contemplated as a separate panel. Its composition is similar, but still different. Um, yes. And I do think we can't use the board member selection panel as the chair selection panel. I might ask the CEO to clarify that, just to make sure that we haven't missed a point of business that we need to do. Um, CEO, in terms of, uh, do we need to do an appointment to both panels? Yeah, it's very long now. I'll get Ian to answer that one because he's on top of it. Thanks. Thanks, Ian. Oh. Hang on one second, Ian. I'll just... Um... Ian, you're on. Right, uh, through you, Lord Mayor. Look, the, the intent of the, the original uh, decision from Council was to have the one selection panel um, with elected members on it, and that would select the chair, and then in the charter, the chair is then uh, appointed to the second selection panel. So, in yeah. theory, the same three um, elected members on both panels, but the second panel for the board to include the chair. I, I, I understand that, Ian, but I was on that council. I voted and I absolutely reject that that was the intent of the council. The minutes say board member selection panel. That's what we voted on. That's what we appointed people to. I, I would suggest that it's a different, uh, a different um, uh, a, a panel and that it's not contemplated here. Look, I'm happy to appoint the chair selection panel if, and if council thinks that it should be exactly the same people, then let it be exactly the same people. Um, but I do think we need to do the chair from scratch and appoint the vacancy for the board selection panel. Okay. Thank, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back to you, Lord Mayor. So the, the charter does have that flexibility if that's what people want to do. So under section 2.41 and then section 2.42, there is specific references to um, the, the, the chair selection panel and the board member selection panel. So you can do it either way if that's the will of the chamber. Okay, would it, would it make any difference given that we're trying to um, appoint one single council member to be part of those two selection panels that we just make a slight, slight uh, amendment to the motion that says to be part of the Adelaide Central Market uh, chair and board member selection panels? Would that work for everybody? Then it's very clear that it's one member being appointed to do both those jobs. Well, I'd, I'd prefer to do them separately myself, Lord Mayor. So uh, to, to do separate... Um... Chair selection panel. Okay, so, all right. So yeah. then if we can do That's two, right. appoints a council member to be part of the Adelaide Central Market Chair Selection Panel. Um, can I just? No, I, I would. I would say we need to select that panel from scratch. That's what I'm. That's what I'm getting at. Oh. I'm uh, saying we haven't. So we haven't voted on that panel. It's never come to council before. It hasn't been contemplated by us. When I okay, was. When okay. Okay. Apologies. I misunderstood. So, so we selected the board selection panel, but we've never selected the the three council members that need to be on the. No, we did the chair selection panel, but we've never appointed the three members for the board selection panel. Correct. And if I could just clarify, um, when I when I was approached to go on the board member selection panel, I didn't even realise that it would be a panel sort of for the length of this council. As I understood it, it was only for the extensions that that, so that selection panel did at that point in time. I had no idea. Otherwise, I might not have gone on it or I might have considered that other. Okay. I might go back to Director Hill to give us some help use. Um, either that or if... Uh, I'm not sure whether this is uh, something that needs to go through tonight. I can't unmute. I'm not able to unmute uh, Director Hill. Cool. Sorry, can you hear me? Oh, there we go. Yeah. Uh, sorry, back to you a little bit. My, my understanding is the, the original decision did, did refer to um, the appointment for a board member selection panel for the Central Market Arcade for the remainder of the 18 to 22 council term. Um, that's that's the, the documentation I have. Okay, and in terms of the chair selection panel? So my advice would be you can do it either way. You could do the one panel to do both or you could do a panel for the chair selection and then a separate panel for the board members, noting that the chair would then be on that as well. Okay, so what we, what we have at the moment is 
the board member selection panel of which was uh, counts, uh, former Councillor Abiyad, the Deputy Lord Mayor and Councillor Donovan. Correct. So we only need one person elected to fill the vacancy for the board for the chair selection panel and yeah. then we need three council members for the board selection panel is that correct that's correct is that what you're saying councillor uh, sorry uh, deputy lord mayor correct, okay yes. um uh, so i can do it through uh an amendment. Sorry, I'm just waiting for Rudy to come in. Have that place, Rudy. So, um, so on the 16th of July, 2019, item 8.2, we appointed the councillors to the Adelaide Central Market Authority board member selection panel. And that was um, former Councillor Abiyad, Councillor Donovan and Councillor Hyde. So we need to appoint one member as per this, a council member to be part of the board member selection panel. And then separately, we need to appoint uh, three council members to the chair member selection panel. That's my reading of it. So, so I'll just get that written up and if you bear with me a moment. Sorry. Yeah. Councillor Martin, are you waving? Yeah, uh, look, Lord Mayor, uh, I'm confused. I think everybody is confused. Yeah. Can we not, if, if this is not time sense, can't it be withdrawn so that we can contemplate it rather than rushing through some amendment? I, that none of I, us really my understanding is that it is time sensitive, Councillor Martin, because we need to appoint before June. Um, so we just, we well, can do the first part. But we're having a meeting again next month, aren't we? We have a May meeting and a, a June meeting. Yes, we do. Um, if you bear with me for a moment. So can we... So, members, just uh, while the screen's refreshing, so the first one is as per your papers, which is appointing a council member to be part of the board member selection panel uh, for the remainder of the term, and point two will be the appointment of three council members to be part of the Adelaide Central Market Authority chair selection panel for the remainder of the 2018 to 2022 council term. Um, so the first thing I need is a procedural. So as soon as that goes up, I'll have a procedural uh, for the appointments of those members. I have Deputy Lord Mayor and Councillor Martin for the procedural, I think. Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak? Uh, Councillor Martin, did you wish to speak? Yes, I, I did, Lord Mayor. I mean, this is an entirely different motion to the one that was presented to us in the papers. Uh, uh, it is being constructed on the fly without any adequate explanation from the administration. We have another meeting at which this could be determined. Why is it so important to rush it through tonight? I will ask Director Hill about time sensitivity. Do Director Hill? Can you hear me? Sorry. Yep. Thank you. Yes, for you, Lord Mayor. Um, one of the time sensitivities is the expiry of the current chair, which is the 30th of July 2020. 
and the process will require the chair to be appointed and then the chair to be on the panel for um, the rest of the board members. So we are looking at going to full expressions of interest on these processes, um, which will have some time associated with it. Okay, so nobody had moved the previous one, so I'm just moving it as an alternate motion. Um, so I've got the Deputy Lord Mayor uh, for the procedural, Deputy Lord Mayor, and I'm looking for a seconder. Phil, uh, Councillor Martin, are you still happy to second? No, I'll take your hand away. I'll look for a seconder, members. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today. Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak? It's a procedural. Um, um only, only that I'm sorry to cause such a fuss about this. Um, I just think the chair is the chair is the is is one of the important, well, arguably the more important um, appointment to make. Um, it's one that we need to give due consideration to, um, and also it's a it's it's a governance issue. Um, uh, when I was, I, I take I take Ian's point um, that it was appointment for the full term, and and perhaps I missed that, but it was all done very much in a hurry, and certainly it was not said to me that I would be um, myself. Um, if I was on that selection panel looking to uh, select a, uh, potentially a new chair for the Central Market Authority. So um, I think we need to go into these things with open eyes as well. Thank you. Uh, I have got Councillor Martin. Well, uh, look, Lord Mayor, if we're pushing this through, having previously voted on it in uh, July of last year, why isn't there a rescission motion preceding this in order to vote again? Um, Councillor Martin, this is replacing the member of, that we voted through three members, which was former Councillor Hassam Abiyad, uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Hyde, and Councillor Helen Donovan. So they remain on there. I only need one further council member for the board member selection panel. But didn't we vote to uh, appoint members to the chair selection panel? No, we only did it to uh, the board member selection panel. I've, I've actually just had a look at it through, um, through government. So Rudy just brought it to me. So I read the decision to you. Okay, I'm confused. But anyway, okay. So, members, uh, would anybody else like to speak to the... Motion. If not, I'll go to the Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Summed up. Thank you. Thank you. Members to the vote. This is for the procedural, for the appointment. Uh, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Um, I'll now go to the appointments. So we have one council member to be appointed to the board member selection panel. Uh, which is a vacancy from councillor, uh, former councillor Abiad. Um, and I have councillor Hyde. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Deputy Lord Mayor. Thanks Lord Mayor. Um, I nominate, nominate councillor Ho for that position. Councillor Ho. Um, councillor Ho, do you accept the nomination? Yes, I accept it. Okay. Um, I need, are there any other nominations? Oh, one moment, Councillor Moran. Um, I nominate Councillor Martin. Councillor Martin. Councillor Martin, do you accept the nomination? I do. Right. Are there any further nominations? If not, uh, we have to go to a vote, which Jenny will explain how to do that. Thanks, members. What I need you to do is to message me either Councillor Ho's name or Councillor Martin's name in the chat, please. Can everyone access the chat?
I'm just gonna keep on swiping here. There you go. Sorry, members, uh, Kylie and Jenny are just um, telling the votes, which I have no idea how that is working, but it seems to be. Councillor Donovan, you voted? Sorry. Yeah, sorry. That's okay. Okay. <clears throat> Um, so the successful uh, councillor is Councillor Ho, uh, who will be appointed to the Adelaide Central Market Authority Board Member Selection Panel for the remainder of the council term. Uh, the second one we have to do is the Chair Selection Panel and uh, we require three members for that. Um, so. Members, uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, did you have a nomination? I wish to nominate you, Lord Mayor. Thank you. Um, uh, thank you. I'll accept that nomination. Councillor Moran. Uh, could uh, can I nominate three people? Uh, you may. I'll nominate. I yes. For Martin. Ballot for all of them. Councillor Sims and Councillor Donovan. Okay. Donovan. Uh, Councillor Ho. Yes, oh, Lord sorry, Mayor. Ma sorry, but thank, one, <sighs> one moment. Uh, sorry, I need uh, Councillor Martin, Sims and Donovan, if I could just get you to raise your hand if you accept the nomination. Great, thank you very much. Councillor Ho. Yes, I'd like to nominate uh, Deputy Lord Mayor and also Councillor Franz Cano. <laughs> right, <laughs> thank you. Uh, are there any other nominations? So I have to check, please, if I could get for a nod of the head from Deputy Lord Mayor and Councillor Connell, or raise your hand, please, if you accept the nomination. Thank you very much. So members, we've got three positions. Uh, we have six nominations. Uh, myself as Lord Mayor, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Connell, Councillor Martin, Councillor Sims, and Councillor Donovan. Um, I will now hand over to Jenny. As with before, thank you, members. If you could just message me the three names that you would like selected, please, and bear with us. This may take a little bit of time. <laughs>
Okay. What have we got? Okay. So we have uh, the three names of, is the Lord Mayor, myself, the Deputy Lord Mayor, and Councillor Knoll. Thank you, members. That takes us to uh, 12.10. Oh, sorry, I need a, a motion to appoint. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Um, so, uh, just, so what do you mean? So I need two motions, uh, members. Uh, the first motion is for Councillor Ho to be appointed to the board member selection panel. I've got Deputy Lord Mayor and Councillor Abraham Zadeh. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak? Councillor Abraham Zadeh? No, members? If not, we'll go to the vote. Those in favour? Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. And the second one is the, uh, the three members to the chair selection panel for the Adelaide Central Market Authority, the Lord Mayor, Deputy Lord Mayor and Councillor Knoll. I need a mover. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today. And a seconder, Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Abraham today, did you wish to speak? Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak? No, members to the vote, those in favour? Those against, that is carried. Thank you. Um, members, I've got the election of Garrick representatives, which is uh, just the last one before we go on a break. Um, the Garrick uh, is made up of uh, myself representing the city, Gawler, Prospect, Charles Sturt, Salisbury, Adelaide Hills and Tea Tree Gully. Um, there is one vacancy on Garrick and so we, we put forward and then it's, um, uh, it's done by the LGA. So I would look for a nomination. Deputy Lord Mayor, did you have a nomination? Uh, yes, I'd like to nominate the Mayor of the City of Port Adelaide Enfield, which is Claire Bowen. Right. Um, thank you. One moment. It, why am I doing procedural when... Oh, okay, my apologies. Uh, I still need to do a procedural first uh, that we note and authorise and then we'll do the candidate. I'll, I'll keep the candidate for them. So I need procedural. Councillor Martin, was that for the procedural? Sorry, I'll just unmute. That, was that for the procedural, Councillor Martin? Great. And the second, Councillor Knoll. Councillor Martin, did you wish to speak? No, Councillor Knoll. No, members to the vote, those in favour? Those against, that is carried. Um, Deputy Lord Mayor had nominated Mayor Claire Bowen from the City of Port Adelaide Enfield. Do I have any other nominations? I'll just go, Councillor Martin, I've got you unmuted. Um, yes, they always get a bad press. So, uh, Mayor Erin Thompson. From City of Wonka uh, Are there any other nominations? No, if not, uh, with two nominations, ladies and gentlemen, we go to the vote. So, so if you could please message Jenny, um, either Mayor Claire Bowen from the City of Port Adelaide Enfield or Mayor Erin Thompson from the city of Onkaparinga. Thank you.
Uh, thank you, councillors. Uh, that uh, we have got uh, councillor, uh, sorry, um, Mayor Claire Bowen as our candidate. Do I need anything to? Uh, yes. Yes. To in the market ballot. So do I need a motion? Yeah. yeah, sorry, I just need a motion that we mark the ballot paper with Mayor Claire Bowen. Thank you, DLM and Councillor Abraham Zadeh. Uh, do you wish to speak at all? Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Abraham Zadeh, to the vote, members, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Um, that takes us, members, to questions on notice. Um, the questions on notice were all published to the website um, this afternoon, late this afternoon. Uh, so all the questions are there for our public and for the media to see. Um, I am going to ask Councillor Martin, who's disappeared. No, I'm here. Ah, where are you? Well, I Councillor I... Martin, I can't see you. Well, I can see you. Oh, there you are. Uh, so, Councillor Martin, um, uh, before we go to the break, I'm just going to ask you whether, given that they've all, all the answers to the questions have been published, whether you're happy to have them as read? Um, I haven't seen the publication. When did that come around? Uh, the publication was around 4.30 this afternoon. Um, so they were distributed to all members and they also were published on the website so that they were available to the media and to uh, public. Oh, well, can I give you my answer after I've had a look at them? Certainly. Um, on that note then, uh, members, we're going to take a break. Uh, I would suggest a 20 minute break. Uh, that should give everybody enough time to grab something to eat. Can I just have a general, we're okay with that? Okay, Do I'll we... see you. Do we log back. off? Um, no, if you stay logged on, you can mute, turn your camera off if you wish, and uh, we'll see you back in 20 minutes. So, members, uh, 13, uh, number 13 on the agenda is questions on notice. Um, the questions on notice were distributed to all members this afternoon. Uh, they were also uh, put on our website and distributed to uh, members of the media. So I will go to Councillor Martin. Um, uh, Councillor Martin, you said you were happy to have all of them as read with the exception of, and I wasn't sure which one it was. 13.3, uh, because I wished to ask a question in questions without me. Okay. In relation to this. So one moment then, 13.3. Uh, can I take the question as read? Um, yes. Thank you. 13.3, uh, which is the Adelaide Football Club draft, draft proposal consultation question two. The reply is, the City of Adelaide's community engagement strategy principles are based on the International Association for Public Participation's core values. The principles within the strategy are used to determine ethical and good practice throughout the engagement process, from planning through to reporting. Two, the policy states that when engaging the community in decision-making process, of which legislated public consultation is a part, Council will provide relevant, timely and balanced information so people can contribute in a meaningful way. Three, there is no definition of bias defined in the policy or strategy. We use these principles as a guide to determine ethical and good practice throughout the engagement process from planning through to reporting. Four, the APA brochure was pre-populated and 4.1 did not provide all information that was available on the Your Say site to enable people to provide a fully informed response to the questions being asked in the consultation. And 4.2 did not give the complete range of response options and to the contrary, it pre-selected and pre-populated a limited range of response options. If community members had no contacts regarding the project, they would have been limited in their ability to make an informed submission to the questions being asked as this was not a poll. And fine, five, the Property Council and the Adelaide Football Club directed the membership bases to participate via Your Say Adelaide, where they could access all of the relevant information to inform their submission. And with that, members, I will take all questions on notice as read. That takes us to item number 14, which is questions without notice. And 
Councillor Martin, one moment, and I'll just unmute you. Thank you. Oh, there we go. Um, thank you. The question without notice is in relation to the response provided in respect of 13.3. Uh, the Lord Mayor just advised that there is no policy within the City of Adelaide consultation policy to reject submissions on the basis of bias. If that is the case, what or who um, were the reason for the administration to exclude APA responses on the basis of bias? I will go to the CEO. Uh, one moment, sorry, Matt. There we go. Yeah, through you, Lord Mayor. <clears throat> I understand the question. Um, my belief is that this is better discussed in detail when we undertake a review, as we mentioned earlier. Um, I can refer to Ian that may provide further context, but my preference is that we undertake a detailed workshop and go through all of the aspects, of the consultation processes we've been undertaking and, um, and look to fully explain the concept behind the Your Say um, platform that we currently use. Um, that's my preference, uh, Lord Mayor. Ta happy to take any further advice. Okay. Thank you. Um, are there any further... Sorry, sorry, Councillor Martin. Yep. Um, does that mean that the administration would prefer to discuss why it excluded responses on the basis of no policy in a workshop rather than at council? Sorry, there we go, CEO. Through you, Lord Mayor. No, look, I'd just rather be fully informed before providing responses um, to questions without notice. So I'll, I'll provide the right information when I'm fully informed. Okay, uh, Councillor Moran, I had you. Uh, yes, look on the same topic. Could I ask through the Lord to CEO to Tom McCready, who has used the word rejected because of bias, ask Tom McCready his definition of bias in a consultation? Tom. Through you, Lord Mayor. Uh, in the reply uh, under uh, item number three, as explained, there's no definition of bias defined within the policy or strategy. So there's no bias in regards to any submissions. What we've indicated throughout the process is the way that has been submitted is actually contained within the report. So it's not biased to say that we have not included or they were biased in regards to the way they've done it. It's how it was submitted and how we're actually able to represent it. Noting that it's contained within item 4.3 and 4.4 .4 in regards to attachment A of the report. So we've tried to reflect all the information, it's just the way that was presented to us. Oh, sorry, Anne, just a moment, sorry. You're back on. Uh, sorry, Tom, I don't understand that. The word bias was used by you verbally and in your report as a reason to combine 726 votes into one. Uh, could you explain what you meant by bias? So I think that's a fairly simple question and you should be able to answer it. Through you, Lord Mayor, uh, in its simplest form, um, as indicated within the report, it was evident to us that the, the submission that was provided was pre-populated. It came from a single source um, in regards to responding to the questions. And as such, it was represented uh, in the reports the way it was represented. It was not submitted by, by the USA website, so we weren't able to interrogate it to its entirety. However, it would be unfair for us not to represent it, and thus it was represented within the report. But again, as I indicated, the information that came to us came from a single source, and also, if I was to add to it, uh, when we done further investigations, there was duplications or even triplications in regards to submissions where we had people who were listed with that single source who also provided an email who also used the USA website where they were represented. Um, so that, that was the challenge that we had before us. The source and was the history trust included in that? 
Um, I'm trying to, yeah, I haven't got the reports directly in front of me, but whoever we captured through you, Lauren, whoever uh, was actually submitted and whatever we uh, attempted to get the information. So I've got it in front of me in regards to, you've got uh, Apple letterbox drops. Um, there's been direct, uh, direct emails coming in from sporting users. Um, we've also had uh, members of parliament or representatives Representatives have sent letters in, and again, that's contained within the report, as is the 270 separate emails which are detailed within the report as well. Um, I, I think it's important to note when you talk about a single submission, that single submission was effectively the same submission. So if you were to do it on a pie chart, it would actually just come out as a, a complete circle. So we try to uh, actually attempt to uh, bring that in the narrative under 4.3 and 4.4 contained within the report. Muted. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm muted. Um, sorry, <laughs> Councillor Martin. I was trying to talk to you because you had your hand up again. So you are uh, yeah. able to speak. And I'll come back to you, Councillor Moran. Oh well, if Councillor Moran is asking a question to follow up on what she was, I'm happy for her to go first. Uh, first, I have two other questions that are unrelated. Right. One moment. I'll go back to Councillor Moran. Councillor Moran. So, uh, Tom, are you saying that those um, 400 and whatever were were coming from one, when you say a single source, coming from one person, that would be a single source? Um, not uh, through you, not exactly. A single source could be an organisation. What I'm saying is it was a pre-populated response from a single source, be it one individual or from one organisation. Um, and effectively it was responded to and we tried to capture that information. They did not use the USA website. Um, they did not answer all the questions. What they done was quite simply respond how they wished to respond. We received that and we've recognized it within the report and tried to capture it under 4.3 and 4.4, also within the body of the attachment as well. Okay, I, th I think we might move Thank you. I think we might move on from there because we're asking the same question. I'm asking a different question. You're saying the same subject. But when we found that the USA website was difficult to access, I contacted the administration and they assured me that emails and form letters and everything would be included. And I encouraged um, people, my right as the ratepayers are contacted, to do so if they couldn't navigate the ORSA. Now, I find out that that was completely erroneous. Now, Tom, did you not tell us that you would accept other forms of um, response? You did. You told me. Did you, did you not? Through, through you, Lord, uh, uh, Councillor Martin, uh, or sorry, uh, Councillor Moran, um, if I did, uh, I can't recollect, but I'll again, I can be challenged on that. I'm happy to go back on the record. Um, however, what I would say, it is actually contained within the body of the report. I think what you're, you're trying to summarize is how we've used the data in regards to coming to certain percentages. What we've done is used the USA yes, way like to be able to analyze, and we've captured the narrative within the body of the report in regards to the 400 plus uh, basically a one submission and the 270 odd emails which are contained individually within the report as is submissions from Blackfriars, St Dominic's Priory, Water Polo, Royal Life Saving, so on and so forth, all contained within the report. Um, and naturally the report is for council to consider. Noting if this advanced, we would be going out to further consultation again. Sorry, can I be heard? I, oh, crap. <laughs> I can be heard. Um, all right. Um, there's, there's something weird going on. I can't hear anything that's being said. Um, that's, that's because I am muted, but yeah. I can hear you, Councillor Kerr. 
Uh, look, I, I just wanted to flag, are these questions, are we relitigating something that has uh, been covered in, in a previous motion and are we getting into territory that's vexatious? Um, are these questions uh, properly, are these, are these questions on notice uh, or should these remain as questions without notice? Well, these are questions without notice and I think, I think we've asked and answered those questions anymore will be taken through the workshop when we go to um, to have a look at our consultation processes. I'll accept any other questions without notice that talks on a subject different to the consultation process. I uh, will to Councillor Martin. Um, uh, can, can I ask uh, Councillor Kira what is different? He can't hear anyone, no, he never can. Um, but anyway, look, um, I, do, I do have a question, a real question. I'm allowed to attempt humour. Oh, um, what that was. Sorry, it I missed it. Sorry. All, almost uh, three weeks ago, the administration required staff to take two weeks paid leave and to use two weeks of their recreation leave in a dispute that quickly escalated to the industrial tribunal. Elected members were promised a briefing, which has not yet occurred. Is it the intention of the administration to provide the elected members with a briefing? CEO? Yeah, through you, Lord Mayor. As you know, um, council members, there is a CEO briefing tomorrow night. That is one topic that I will be briefing council on. Uh, I must say, however, uh, the Industrial Relations Commission has required confidentiality between the parties at this time until a resolution or a decision has been made. So my ability to communicate with you in public forum tonight is very limited. Okay. Uh, members, I'm going to, sorry, just my moment, Councillor Martin. Yes, a, uh, a question on the same subject, a follow-up question. At the end of next week, the hundreds of staff who've been required to take paid leave and recreation leave will be required to return to work. Will the confidentiality provisions that the CEO cites as uh, preventing him from discussing the issue, prevent him from discussing what actions he intends to take, either to welcome staff back to their jobs or to return them to leave? CEO? Yeah, through you, Lord Mayor. No, um, the, the confidential requirements, confidentiality requirements of the Commission is in relation to the hearing and in relation to um, the, um, the matter until a, a decision has been made. Um, I'll be advising Council tomorrow night uh, the full details of staff management during this uh, interim period. I must remind Council members that I've already advised the intent uh, from the end of week four is for all staff to be working from home as practically as we can ensure that happens. So we are in the process of, of enabling that as we speak. And um, I, as I said, I'll be briefing Council tomorrow night. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor and then Councillor Sims. Thank you, Lord Mayor. So uh, to the CEO, noting that there's confidentiality um, provisions, um, I believe it was the uh, Australian Workers' Union that went out and did some media around this. Um, does that... Does that mean they have breached confidentiality when they did that? Um, through you, Lord Mayor, I'm not in a position to say uh, because I am going to comply with the confidentiality provisions. The fact that that occurred was discussed at the hearing and I can't really go into the details of it at this time, but I do intend to as soon as that, that confidentiality requirement has been lifted. Well, I can infer what, what, they, what they did or didn't do. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Uh, just a moment, I have Councillor Sims. Uh, thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, at the moment, um, obviously, many members of the community are using the parklands um, because uh, we've got people confined to their homes, but exercise is obviously really important. Can administration provide a bit of an update in terms of what's happening in terms of maintenance of parklands and gardens at this time? CEO? Yeah, three, Lord. Now I'll ask um, Clinton if you're online if you could respond to that. Thanks. I've unmuted you, Clinton. Thank you, three, Lord Mayor. Um, in terms of maintenance of the parklands, uh, Councillor, there hasn't been um, 
any necessary drop in the level of service at this point in time. Um, I highlighted to elected members uh, last week that um, only levels of service would be dropped in areas of unirrigated parklands, as an example. Um, so at this point in time, there's no drop in level of service and we'll pr provide a further update tomorrow night in terms of uh, what the plans are for the longer term view on the depot staff. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, members, we will go to item 15 on the agenda, which is motions on notice. 15.1 is Councillor Moran. Motion on notice, Council Chamber. Councillor Moran. <coughs> Ready for the um, motion to come up on the screen, thanks. Okay. So, um, um, Councillor, I'll look for a seconder. Councillor Sims. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Oh, well, it's a fairly simple motion, uh, Lord Mayor. Um, <laughs> uh, commissioning a portrait of um, uh, uh, Lord Mayor, um, former Lord Mayor, with Chapman. Uh, we've had another former Lady Lord Mayor, Jane Lumick Smith, who has a large painting. I suggest that we reposition uh, that in the main chamber. Uh, Councillor Sims. Reserve my right, Lord Mayor. Members? Pretty sure I've got everyone on the screen. Oh, Councillor Martin. Councillor Martin. Yes, thank you. Look, I wanted to uh, speak in support of the motion. Um, uh, Dr Lomax Smith has been a, uh, a former Lord Mayor of the City of Adelaide, uh, but she's also been a federal member for the seat of Adelaide and a minister, I think, for the city of Adelaide, as well as uh, other portfolios during her years in Parliament. Um, hers is a history of uh, service to the city of Adelaide. And as Councillor Moran observes, her por portrait is already uh, hanging uh, in council and uh, there is no reason why it couldn't be moved into the chamber so that we acknowledge her service to this city. Um, she's always been a keen advocate for the city of Adelaide. Um, she's advocated too for the parklands. And I, look, I would ask Team Adelaide to overlook that, that she has been a keen <laughs> advocate for the parklands. Um, and just acknowledge that this is a citizen uh, who deserves to be recognized by having her portrait installed in the chamber. Moreover, this one is pretty easy because the portrait is already available. It's in the council itself. And I really say, uh, please support this. It would be a substantial embarrassment to the city of Adelaide to decline what is a generous and sensible gesture to one of our great citizens. Members? Deputy Lord Mayor? Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I'm not sure quite where to begin with this. I suppose, first off, I'll start by um, just highlighting the sheer absurdity that we are still discussing this motion. There was an opportunity to remove it from the books. People are literally dying. Businesses are closing down. Livelihoods are being destroyed. Superannuation is being decimated. And we are discussing where to hung a picture that is already hanging in the town hall in arguably a more prominent location in the hallway where more people see it. That hallway is used a lot more than the council chamber is. Um, uh, but, but look, it's, it's, it's actually absurd, Lord Mayor, and I think anyone watching this live, live stream would be, would be very, uh, would, be, would be a fair thing to say that we are an absolute joke that we're discussing this. This is absurd. Um, but moreover, Lord Mayor, what makes it more absurd is that just at the last council meeting, this council, this council approved guidelines for the Civic Recognition Working Group to assess portraits of female leaders in the city of Adelaide. Um, uh, that came about after a suggestion by yourself, Lord Mayor. It was a motion put by me. We obviously spoke to Wendy Chapman and there were other, other uh, female leaders, historical female leaders, um, who, who factored into that as well. But this council approved those guidelines at our previous council meeting, and now you just want to tear them up and put them in the bin. 
Um, if the civic recognition working group um, uh, considers that her that, that uh, Dr. Jane Lomax Smith's portrait should be hung in the gallery, then they'll look at that, they'll consider it, they'll judge it against the guidelines which we passed, and they'll make the decision accordingly. That's their job. They're the civic recognition working group. We're the council. We put the guidelines in place. This is an absolute waste of everyone's time to be discussing this now. I have uh, Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, I think it's rather ironic um, that we have a council member accusing others of wasting time when they're proposing yet another motion to tinker with standing orders tonight. In fairness to Councillor Moran, this was proposed at the last meeting um, and Councillor Moran had to leave the meeting early due to some personal uh, circumstances. Um, this doesn't have to be something that we spend a huge amount of time on. Um, and I would have thought that uh, it's something we could accommodate quite quickly. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Councillor Martin. Oh, uh, a question, Lord Mayor. I have heard it referred to frequently, but who are the members of the Civic Recognition Working Group? Hmm. Uh, my recollection is it's myself, the CEO, the Deputy Lord Mayor, CEO, is that it? Is That's it. it. Yep. Yep. Oh, sorry, 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 Councillor, you were muted. Oh, there we go. Just asking the question. Uh, so the Deputy Lord Mayor is defending his decision in attacking us. Is that correct? Uh, no, I believe he's actually saying that they came into Council and Council voted on the criteria and who was going in which came through the Civic Rec uh, Recognition Working Group. Lord Mayor, is there a problem in us recognising that we've made an error and attempting to correct it? I'm asking you. Uh, I'm not debating this motion, Councillor. Thank you. Now, members, if not, I'll go back to Councillor Moran to sum up. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Well, the working group is in the room. I didn't actually think we'd have to spend more than seconds on this. Surely, Dr. Lomax Smith fits ably the criteria of your initiative, your supported initiative, your terrific initiative of putting more female paintings in the main chamber. We have one already paid for by Dr. Lomax Smith. Um, we don't have to go out and, and commission an artist. We've got one already. So we could speedily um, act on the Lord Mayor's initiative. Um, I don't understand the problem there. The Civic Working Group is in the room. Uh, you can vote. I think it would be a great shame to reject uh, Dr. Lomax Smith pa um, painting moving from the lesser position of the passage uh, to hang in the um, all the men men's painting be the first female in the main chamber. Right, right, three Lord Mayors that we've ever had. Um, it, she would fit. She would be top of the pops for all the criteria. She would be Lord Mayor a lot longer than uh, uh, Wendy Chapman. Um, and uh, I think that would be a, a quick win for us. I think mean, it's got nothing to do with the pandemic. Um, I think it would be a really good message for this council. It's a quick win. It shouldn't be debated. Let's move the portrait. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, members, we will go to the vote. Uh, those in favour, please raise your hand. Those against, please raise your hand. That is lost. Um, members, we've got, oh, sorry, I've got Councillor Moran. Councillor Moran. I've just unmuted you. Could I call a division? Yes, Councillor Moran, you may. I just checked, Councillor Martin, was that you doing the same thing? Right. Um, okay, I'll speak clearly this time. Councillors, a division has been called. When I call out your name, please answer whether you are for or against the motion. Councillor Moran. Yeah. Councillor Abrahimzadeh. They're oh, better. Sorry, sorry, my apologies. Unmute. My sins of your apologies. Sorry, Councillor Moran. Councillor Abrahimzadeh. Against. Councillor Ho. Against. 
Councillor Kira. Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Donovan. Councillor Kuros. Councillor Martin. Councillor Canole. Councillor Sims. Four. Thank you. So they're, they're the ones with mm -hmm. 250. Right. I don't know. Someone's it's picking up something. Uh, okay. I'm not sure. Um, sorry. Uh, apologies, members. There was just um, a strange voice coming in on our Zoom. Um, that takes us to 15.2, uh -huh. which is a Councillor Moran, a motion on the location of East West Bikeway. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. I move that if the council fails to identify a suitable location for the East West Bikeway, that the council request the state government promised bequest of 2.7 million be reallocated to city safety, including but not lighting, security cameras, green overlay treatments on bike lanes, etc. Uh, thank you, Councillor Moran. I'm looking for a seconder. Uh, Councillor Abraham, are you seconding? No? I don't. I don't have a seconder, Councillor Moran, so I think that motion will lapse. Thank you. Councillor Martin. I uh, I said yes, I'll second that. Uh, sorry, the, nothing's coming up on my screen or Jenny's in terms of a, a hand seconding it. Well, so, I, I thought I'd uh, I pushed that, but look, uh, you know, given the circumstances, uh, Lord Mayor, I'm erring on the side of uh, the elected member would be a fine job. Sorry. Um, I'm not sure. Are you seconding Councillor Martin? That's a yes. You've come yes. off. You've gone off screen, so I can't see you. Yes. Thank, thank you, Councillor Moran. If you'd like to speak to your motion, I would. Could you put my motion back on the screen, thanks? Yeah, where's it gone? Fifteen point two. Oh, we're going back to something. Yeah. I'd like to say, actually, that is not the motion that I lodged. The motion that I lodged was if council fails to identify a suitable location for the East West Bikeway, the council requests the state government that the state government's request of $2.7 million be reallocated to bike safety. Oh, that is not what we've got, councillor. We've got city safety. Um, can I check, please, with governance? Can you check the original motion that was lodged? We'll just, if you don't mind waiting a moment, Councillor, we'll just, uh, other that, or you can do a variation to the motion. While you're looking at that, my my, um, my rationale here was that if we uh, we clearly uh, are failing to uh, to locate a suitable location, and that's gone off to Banyana, so I thought the 2.7 million could be reallocated to bike safety, including green overlays, rumble strips, etc. I never mentioned lighting or security cameras or anything like that. I intended the 2.75 million to be totally allocated to bikeways. Um, well, Councillor, I'm not sure where this other motion came from then because that is, it is as was lodged. So, um, uh, it's not, not as, as lodged. I've got it on my phone. Okay. That's not the words that were lodged. So I will withdraw that motion and uh, I will put in stronger, not the motion I signed. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm still looking at governance to see if they can, I'm not sure that they can track the motion at this point in time. I've got it on my phone and I'm very... Oh. Okay, so Councillor Moran, they're saying it's the same one that was, because this was one that came into the March meeting that was then deferred, so it's the same motion that was in the March meeting. I believe that then, but that is not, it, it doesn't make any sense. Why would I take bike money and give it to lighting and security cameras? The motion 
I'm happy to move it now and delete lighting security cameras. And uh, you can do a, a, a variation to your motion if you want to change city safety to bike safety and delete lighting and security cameras. So delete lighting and security cameras. And so it reads reallocated to bike safety, including but not limited to green overlay treatments on road bike lanes, etc. That's exactly right. Thanks, Sandy. Um, now, what, what my rationale here is that we've got this nice bucket of money, uh, clearly uh, at the risk of offending them, Team Adelaide's um, mention of um, Peary Street is not going to happen. We, we all know that um, there's huge opposition. If we didn't do Franklin Flin Flinders, it's not going to happen. Uh, Goodger Wakefield, uh, our staff have said, is something happening? Is anybody hearing me? Yeah, we can all hear you. Yep. Clearly, uh, Great Wakefield has been deemed totally unsuitable by our staff and the bike people. So this was a delay tactic, but I don't want to lose the money and I want to make the bike uh, there safer. Um, so let's grab the money, green overlay, put down rumble strips and make the on-road uh, roads safer. Um, otherwise, we'll just lose it because we, this this council term um, will not include an east-west bikeway, and that's my very wise and experienced view on what will happen. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Did you wish to speak? Reserve my right. Um, I am assuming, Councillor Martin, you are happy to still second it with those changes. I am, and I reserve my right. Okay. Uh, I have. Councillor Abraham today, did you wish to speak? Yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, Lord Mayor, given the administration comments, I move that the motion be put. Uh, I need a seconder for that. So I've got the Deputy Lord Mayor. So, so, vote on that motion. so we will now go to the vote. Members, those in favour? that the motion be oh so we vote on whether the motion be put my apologies so if we can vote as to whether the motion be put i'll ask you to raise your hands those in favor those against Five all. So um, I'll go with, I will actually let the motion through if it's, um, if I've got casting in terms of the motion being put. So we will go back to the motion. Is there any other speakers on the motion? Thank you, Councillor Abraham today. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, I, I speak against this motion, Lord Mayor. Uh, this has come through the chamber before. Uh, again, we're wasting our time uh, looking at it and, and discussing it. There is clear uh, commentary and feedback from administration. There's a, uh, a funding deed in place between us and the state government. The state government isn't just going to allow us to spend this money on what we want to spend it on. There's, there's obviously, uh, you know, terms and conditions and criteria that, that comes with that funding. So uh, I don't think we can just turn around and do what we want with that money. Um, Again, the, the, the motion and the administration uh, commentary speak for itself, so I, I urge members not to support this. Councillor Kouros, my apologies. That's me not unmuting myself. Uh, I'm on? Yes. Oh, thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, I just think that uh, we're heading into very dangerous ground here I and mean, we're turning around and telling the state government during this time of crisis where this money that could be taken away from us completely during this time by saying here let's we let's take this money and put it somewhere else. Um, I just I'm speaking to a lot of um, uh, people um, in regards to this motion, especially people that ride their bikes in the city. And they, uh, the motion that um, was going to come up last council meeting, it, they were completely against it. They want this money to be allocated for the bike 
uh, way that it was to be allocated for and contrary to what Councillor Moran says from her years of experience. Um, you know, there isn't anyone here, there is not saying that we're not agreeing for this bite path to bite way to happen. So um, we're on this road, no pun intended, to, uh, to get it done. Um, so let's just stick with it. It's important. This is what uh, people want and let's stay focused with what we're wanting to do. Um, I just think that, you know, as per administration's com uh, comment re recommendation, it's just we're entering in very dangerous grounds if really if we go down this path. Okay, thank you, uh, Councillor Kouros. I have, oh, I have no other hands raised. Oh, sorry, I've got Councillor Donovan. There we go. You just moved on my screen. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, this is heartwarming to see everyone enthused about bikeways. Um, I will support this motion only because uh, evidence to date suggests that in the time that we have already spent on this, that it is very unlikely uh, with the current approach that uh, a solution will be found to the east-west, which is thoroughly disappointing. But given the time frame in place, um, I think Councillor Moran's opportunity at least rescues the funding somewhat. And I am very hopeful that we do find a way forward on the east-west, given, however, the current proposal um, to look at a, a pathway that uh, is very unsafe um, for bike riders uh, that intersects with something along the lines of 20 different points of, of uh, people discharging from bus uh, points. You know, I think if that's the current direction and if that's where we land, well, that would be pointless because bike riders would okay. not choose to... Um, uh, use such a pathway anyway. So, Councillor, we are. Very if I can get you to talk to them. Oh, talk to the motion. So, this it is about the reallocation. The it does talk to the motion, Lord Mayor, because the motion talks to uh, whether or not we will find a solution. And a part of finding a solution is actually finding a safe solution, not people who don't ride bikes thinking, well, we'll just pick the pathway that's least contentious. So um, I will be supporting Councillor Moran's motion because at the very least, it will provide some uh, fallback option for that funding. That will get too confusing. Um, I'll have Councillor Sims and then Councillor Martin. Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, I um, will also uh, support this motion for similar reasons to Councillor Donovan. Um, I mean, my preference has been for years now for us to get the East West Bikeway finished. Um, but I fear that the Council dealt a lethal blow to that plan at our last meeting um, when they killed off um, Councillor Donovan's very sensible motion. Um, with um, this rather bizarre proposal to go back to the drawing board. And I must say, I'm quite amused by um, the uh, love that seems to be in the virtual room for uh, getting the East-West Bikeway happening, Lord Mayor, given there's been such a concerted effort to push it off into the never-never over the last 18 months. Um, and suddenly when Councillor Moran puts forward an idea, um, that's poo-pooed because it's so critical that this project is finished. Um, you know, we live in very strange times, Lord Mayor. Um, I want to see this project done. Uh, I want to see this happen. And uh, it should have happened ages ago. But unfortunately, there is no viable pathway now as a result of the decision that was made at the last council meeting. So I think we need to look at, at all options. I'm disappointed um, that we're in this situation. But that's not Councillor Moran's creation. It's certainly not Councillor Donovan's creation or Councillor Martin's creation nor is it of my creation, Lord Mayor. Oh, I'll let others watching conclude who may be at fault. Councillor Martin. Oh, yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, may I say this is the perfect illustration of a dysfunctional council. The Team Adelaide majority has fought this at every step of the way, proposing different alternatives, one after the other, and most recently one that's been specifically ruled out by the administration as the deadline for accessing the funds approaches as June 30th. 
at a time when the government is under enormous financial pressure, it's expending funds it doesn't have. It has promised $2.75 million. And Councillor Moran has sensibly observed that this council of dithering will never be able to make a decision in time to claim those funds. And as a consequence, the Team Adelaide majority says, oh no, let's stick to the bikeway. When in fact, that means the almost certain loss of the $2.75 million. Now, you can say, as I'm sure you will, we don't know that, which is, I know exactly what you'll say, but the chances are Goodness. that money, that money will go down the tube. And here is a sensible proposal to ensure that that money goes to the people for whom it was originally intended to improve their personal safety. It is pig-headed in the extreme to oppose this. And it is and will be a perfect illustration of dysfunction. I'll be asking for a division. I look forward to it. Uh, I have Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, thank you, Lord Mayor. Before you start the clock, I've just got Councillor Moran's original email here. Was there a variation that was put to make the motion what it is now? Because the motion, as she circulated to Donna, yourself and all council members and the CEO, definitely talks about city safety, e.g. lighting, security cameras, green overlay treatments, etc. So was there a variation that was... Uh, yes, she just did a variation to her motion. She can't vary her own motion. Someone else has to suggest it, and then we will have to put our hands up. Uh, no, if it hasn't been spoken to, she can do a variation to her motion. That's what she put forward. Can she? Oh, sorry, because I've, I've tried to do that in the past, and I was always shot down for it. So, well, you can answer the question. Oh, sorry, my microphone, there we go. Um, it was just an appropriate variation based on the intent of what she wanted to carry. I'm well, sorry, Councillor Moran wanted to carry and she's just removed additional words that she did. Well, I'm sorry, the intent of what she wanted to carry was a uh, promised bequest of 2.75K, uh, well, not even million, K, so that's wrong, be reallocated to city safety, e.g. lighting, security cameras, green overlay treatments, <laughs> on, 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 on road bike lanes, etc. So, I think, I think, Mayor, I think that she's, she's changed one word from city to um, to bike and right. she's deleted three words, which is allowable in terms of variation. Okay, look, I'm happy to look. If, if that means we can vary our own motions when we put them, if the intent's the same, then I'm happy with that ruling because um, it saves a lot of trouble in the future. Um, we, we have allowed that within reason. It also has to be very, it has to be very slight changes. So deleting three words and changing one. So, which we have allowed before in the chamber. Okay, well, that's duly noted. Um, uh, feel free to start the clock. Um, uh, first up, I'll highlight that um, representations that the majority on this council don't want a separated bikeway are incorrect. And representations that Councillor Sims made that Councillor Moran did not make this mess are also incorrect. It was yeah, Councillor Moran, Lord Mayor. along with others, that shot down the east-west when it was Flinders Franklin. That happened in the previous term of council. Now, I'm not saying I disagree with that because I think it's a bad route. Um, uh, but what I would also highlight is that uh, in the report that was presented to council in the workshop in 2017, before my time, but others here may remember it, there were three options highlighted. Piri Weymouth, Flinders Franklin, and, and uh, 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 Wakefield, Wakefield and Grove. Yeah. Now, in those, there was a big red cross next to Piri Weymouth. Now, had I known that at the time, I never would have entertained it. And I think it was actually a unanimous vote of this council when we decided to look at Piri Weymouth. I was not furnished with that report. It was from well before my time. I was not aware of it. I wouldn't have entertained it had I known that. Now, Flinders Franklin, yes, it did have two ticks. It did have two ticks next to it. It was the administration's preferred option. It decimated parking and traffic law on the street, but it was their preferred option. Now, for councillors to say um, that Wakefield uh, was not the preferred option is actually incorrect because it was actually higher. It was more preferred um, uh, than Piri Weymouth, which was which was which had a big red X next to it in that report that Councillor Moran, who's shaking her head, and Councillor Martin, Martin, who's shaking his head, that report that they were privy to before the rest of us were. So um, uh, Wakefield is a better option than Piri Weymouth. Had I known that, I would have suggested it then. 
I do have faith in our administration to deliver this within the time frame. I don't have any faith whatsoever um, uh, in the state government allowing us to reallocate this funding. If we go to the state government, as Councillor Martin said, they're spending money they don't have. We go to them now and say, hey, we want to do a little bit of this and a little bit of that with it. They're going to yank it straight out of our hands and they have every right to do so. They have every right to do that. Um, so if this isn't going to be spent on a separated bikeway, I don't see it being spent on everything else. I want a separated bikeway that works. I think that means people need to compromise and they need to give a little, which often doesn't happen in this place, which is a great shame. Um, uh, but given Flinders Franklin has such a uh, huge opposition, Perry Weymouth is going to decimate our finances and our parking along that corridor. My, uh, my preference is obviously clear. Nevertheless, I requested more information on that. Okay, Deputy Lord Mayor, I need you to talk to the motion. And, uh, oh, it's and a silly motion. We should vote it down. There you go. <laughs> I have Councillor Martin. Councillor Martin. Yeah, a point of clarification, Lord Mayor. It was completely inaccurate to say that I and Councillor Moran voted down Flinders Franklin. I did not. I voted in favour of He wasn't there. He doesn't know. It was a silly thing to say. Right. Members, any other speakers? If not, I'll go back to the mover to sum up. Are you waving at me, Councillor Sims, or did you Sorry. wish... Did you, you need Sorry, to put your, hand, just, your, your real hand up? Uh, no, yeah, yeah your Sorry. virtual hand up. <laughs> Sorry, Lord Mayor. I was just wondering if um, Jenny could put the motion back on the screen for us, please. Disappeared off my screen. Is it on everybody's or? Ah, thank you. Okay. Uh, oh, everybody's moved again. I'll go back to Councillor Moran to sum up. Councillor Moran? Uh, yes, look, the deed um, to um, allocate that money is coming up soon. But we're going to lose it. Unless somebody puts a motion up in motions without notice tonight that we endorse Great Wakefield Street, um, we are going to lose that money for sure. And I can assure you there's no... Um, no um, feeling in Team Adelaide from the private chat to them to ever put one. Um, we cannot decide on one. Um, as the Deputy Lord Mayor said, there was significant opposition to Flint Franklin Street, uh, Peary Street, um, and the administration have not recommended Wakefield. But if, if you want to, we need to pick the East West Bikeway tonight. We haven't got time to do it any other, or perhaps the next, we'll put one on notice and you can bet your bottom dollar that will not be passed. So we've missed the time frame for the, for an east west, east west separated bike path. The government is committed to bike safety and 2.7 million isn't an enormous money in their budget. Bike safety is very, very important to Marshall government's uh, agenda. We can, do a lot with that money to make the bikeways that we already have there much safer. We already know that the green overlay and rumble strips significantly increase the uh, safety of bikeways. Uh, so I urge you to put fractional voting aside and think of the safety of the people in the city. We are not going to be able to decide in this council. There's no appetite. Um, to, do, to go down that path. It's a contentious path. The traders don't like it. The businessmen don't like it. The bike people do like it. But this count is going to be, to talk about wasting time in the, in the pandemic. Let's just ask them. I mean, you can't, like, if they'll say, look, we, we can't decide on it in time to get your allocation. Could we still have that to make much safer city bike way? I urge you to vote for this sensible motion. Thank you. Uh, members, we will go to the vote. One moment. Okay. Uh, members, uh, those in favour? Those against? Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, are you voting? Sorry. Those against? Councillor Kouros, which way are you voting? Thank you. 
uh, that is lost. Councillor Martin wants a division, one would think. Let me yes, unmute you. Right. Division has been called. Thank you, council members. I'll just read out each of your name. If you can please state whether you are in support of the motion or against the motion. Thanks. Councillor Moran. Oh, I've got to unmute. Sorry. <laughs> Councillor Moran. Councillor Abraham today. Against. Councillor Hyde. Against. Councillor Kira. Against. Deputy Lord Mayor. Nay. Councillor Donovan. Four. Councillor Kuros. Against. Councillor Martin. I'm not Team Adelaide, so I'm for it. Councillor Canol. Against. And Councillor Sims. Members, that takes us to 15.3. Uh, Councillor Moran, motion on notice meeting schedule. All right. Uh, um, I move that the ordinary meetings of the uh, ordinary meetings of the council will be held on Tuesday. Per I rescind that and amend it to ordinary meetings will be held on a Tuesday twice per month, commencing at 5:30 in the chamber. Council chamber. Do I have to move that twice, Lord Mayor? Uh, no. Yeah. It's, a, um, it's amendment, not a revocation. It's a it's an amendment. So. I'm just saying that I'm basing this on the fact that we're having very late meetings once a month, uh, but not just that. In the pandemic, I think we should have. I, I, I'm sorry, Councillor Moran. I'm just looking for a seconder. So electronic hands. Thank you, gentlemen, because I I've got people doing things all over the place. So I have Councillor Martin seconder. Thank you. Councillor Moran. Uh, yes, look, I think we should be meeting in a decision making uh, format more often, especially during this. Uh, the CEO um, is uh, working with staff and needs writing orders a bit more swiftly and nimbly. It, it seems that tonight is so depressing is really voting, Team Adelaide is voting against every I have never felt that this council has been more dysfunctional and more depressing. Uh, I know this will go down. I'm not going to spend a lot of energy. I move that we put it to the vote and I will call a division. I don't think you can move for it to be put, Councillor Moran. I will go to your seconder, Councillor Martin. Uh, I reserve my right. Thank you. I've got uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, I just briefly want to highlight that we've already discussed this. Again, this is another time-wasting motion. We had a special council meeting last week. Um, we had a committee meeting last week. We uh, are having another special committee meeting tomorrow. We can call these meetings as and when we need to. It's critical for the workflow for our administration that we have a very clear a process with how we consider recommendations, how they come into council and what we do with our strategic workshops. Um, it is a very sound uh, approach and strategic approach, uh, which was suggested uh, by the Lord Mayor. And I think it's a very, very good system uh, and it's working very, very well. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. I have Councillor Abraham today and then Councillor Sims. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Given the comments that we've heard so far, uh, I'll move the motion to be booked. I need a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Kerr. I need an electronic pen. Um, members, I need to uh, I need a vote for the motion to be put. Those in favour? Yep. So that is carried. So we go straight to the vote on the motion. Uh, members, uh, those in favour? Sorry. Members, so we're voting on the motion that we go back to uh, the ordinary meetings twice per month. So those in favour, I have councillor. One, two, three, four. Yes, yep. we've got one. Those against? 
Deputy Lord Mayor, are you voting? Uh, that is lost. Yes, Councillor Martin. Division, please. Sorry, that's. Councillor, the division has been called. When I call out your name, please state whether you are in favour or against the motion. Mm. Councillor Moran? Councillor Abraham? Against. Councillor Hyde? Against. Councillor Kira? Yes. Deputy Lord Mayor? No. Councillor Donovan? No. Councillor Kuros? No. Against. Councillor Martin? Oh, I'm not Team Adelaide, I'm for. Councillor Canole? Against. Councillor Sims? For. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, you're just muted, Lord Mayor. I'll unmute myself. Members, that takes us to 15.4. Uh, Councillor Moran, Moran writes, just one moment. There we go, you're unmuted. Uh, I move that Council acknowledge that we can't bind future bud budgets to, rate, to a rate freeze, but we can show our rate payers that is, that, that is our strong intent and promise. Two, therefore, the City of Adelaide undertakes to freeze or reduce the rate in the dollar until the end of the council's term unless an unforeseen financial situation occurs. Members, I look for a seconder. Councillor Martin, can I get you to, can seconders please use their electronic hands? Thank you. Uh, Councillor Moran. Floor. I think this seems a strong message. A popular message. Um, I know that the uh, rate to reduce them. Well, let's tell our um, ratepayers that we're going to do that. I don't know why we wouldn't uh, want to um, comfort them, especially. I wrote this before the pandemic hit. Um, it's more, in, even more um, needed now that we are sensitive to their needs and that we will not raise rates. I'm doing that now because of the pandemic. I think it's uh, important to notice this council has um, considered it before the pandemic. And uh, I also uh, include the reduce the rate in the dollar. I know the teams are right against it, and so that's time wasting, but we are a council and this is our business, right? rubbish, and this is rates. It's core business. And I suggest we send this message out to our residents that we are a compassionate, understanding, and we can assure, put their minds at rest, that for the rest of this term, we will freeze the rate in the dollar or reduce it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Uh, Councillor Martin, did you wish to speak? Yeah, yes, I do, Lord Mayor, um, uh, because I know now the strategy of Team Adelaide is to guillotine everything, that is, vote to put the motion so we can't speak, so I will speak. Now, look, I, I, um, I can hear the administration's plea and read it that we're in a tight fix. Um, we do have a massive operating deficit. We do have burgeoning debt. And my own speculation is that the sum total of that is well in excess of $100 million. Uh, and we did announce as part of that deficit a $4 million rescue package that will help in the main uh, retailers. Um, uh, not property owners, um, not tenants, not officers, um, not even ratepayers, really. That, that $4 million will, in the main, address small business retail operations. And, and all of them, too, by the way, will have difficult circumstances. I, I accept that. But no stakeholder in the City of Adelaide is immune from financial difficulties. It, it extends right across the board um, to residents, business owners, property owners, and the best thing we can do for them at this time is not say, oh, we've got a terrible problem and we're going to ensure that we meet our obligations by raising the taxes on you. It is better that we give them certainty by saying, look, we're going to hold tight on rate increases. That's, that's an undertaking we give you. We will abide by it as best as we can within the terms of the legislation. The administration's made its position clear on that. And if there are circumstances that require some move in the future, then that will have to be explained. But the right thing to do 
the right thing to do by business, by all of our stakeholders, is to promise them that as a consequence of this pandemic, uh, over which they have no control, that we will not punish them by taxing them even further. Now, I know Team Adelaide has probably already decided it won't support this, but I do ask them, please support this motion. It is a fair thing to do for business. Uh, so I have got Councillor Sims, then Councillor Kerr, then Councillor Kouros. So, Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, I can't um, support this motion. I do understand uh, Councillor Moran's um, intent. She's long advocated for um, rate freezes, and I, I do recognise that people are under um, significant financial pressure at the moment. But I don't think that we can commit to a, a rate freeze, even as an aspiration for this, uh, the duration of this term of council. We don't yet know the impacts of this, uh, fully understand the impacts of the pandemic on um, council's resources. Um, and obviously we're in a very difficult um, position. Um, and so I think it would not be prudent at the moment to tie our hands behind our backs um, and to lock ourselves into something for the duration of the council term. Of course, I do support, however, providing um, rate relief to people where we're able to do so. And my view would be that what we should look at is increasing the hardship provisions and the availability of those um, for people who are experiencing financial hardship at the moment, um, because I recognise that's really important. Thank you. Councillor Kerr. Uh, thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, um, I, think, uh, I think it's fair to say that I've, I've been a consistent supporter of uh, uh, Council uh, looking, to, uh, looking to restrict or re reduce rates wherever possible. Um, my, my issue with this particular motion at this particular time is, uh, uh, well, it's the timing of this. Um, I think that at this juncture, um, given that uh, an announcement from Council around rates freezing, rates reduction, uh, part of the significance of that is the messaging. Uh, I think that right now it's going to get lost in the noise. Um, I, you know, so I, 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 I do thoroughly support the sentiment uh, that Councillor Moran uh, has, has espoused consistently on this, uh, but I think that now is not the time. Uh, it, it is just going to get lost. We can return to this when we have the full facts uh, at our hands uh, and when it's going to make an actual difference out there. I think right now, um, this, this, this expression of sort of sentiment uh, isn't strong enough. People are gonna say, well, are you actually freezing rates full stop, yes or no? It's just not concrete enough. And I think consequently, uh, it may well um, uh, blow back. It may well um, push back against that. Uh, so I, I will vote against this um, for those reasons and those reasons only. Thank you, Councillor Kerr. Uh, yeah. Councillor Kouros. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I think uh, we're all wanting to support um, the businesses and uh, during this time. And um, I, but I fully support um, what Councillor Kira said. It's it is not the time right now to do this. Um, you know, we but as a council, we have frozen the rates. We have had a rate freeze for the past five years, I, I believe. So you know, we've always been consistent in remaining strong in that, and uh, it is a is something that we've always carried through in each budget. Which brings me back to the point where uh, it is stated in the administration comment. I mean, very clearly that council is not permitted to formally declare a general rate until after it's adopted its annual business plan and budget. Um, for the relevant year. So I think this is very premature. I don't think this is the right thing to do right now. I don't think we're sending out the right messages. Um, uh, you know, although maybe the sentiment is right, but you know, Councillor Moran has been pushing this motion several times and each time it's been gotten knocked back because it's not something that we can do um, right, you know, un unless we're, you know, putting it forward in the um, in the budget and which we do every year and we we do so by um, you know making sure we have a rate freeze every budget. Thank you Councillor Cross. Uh, I have Councillor Canole. Yes thank you. I mean if we look at the motion I mean this the fact is that the last line in the last line unless unforeseen financial situation hits us well that uh, explains it all as, uh, as to why we just cannot uh, entertain this at the minute because you don't know what the future is and you cannot link yourself into 
you know, uh, uh, you know, even though we can't bind ourselves, but the, the assertion that, 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 you know, we're going to be able to uh, do anything other than uh, if you're going to really assist business and assist households, certainly on a, on, a, on a hardship and needs basis that we can certainly target it rather than necessarily do a blanket because not everybody is, uh, is shut down and not everybody has the, the same need. And let us keep a little bit of flexibility in there and we need to do that so that we're able to sustain the entire city, not just uh, uh, throwing something out there that is only going to be a few cents here or there uh, across all the rate payers. So I think it's not the time and I think um, we do need to be a little bit more uh, responsible on how we're going to do this. We should spend more time thinking how we can create new ways to uh, create income for us that'll benefit the city and that'll take away all the need for these other sorts of things rather than us just relying on rates as much as we do. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Canole. Uh, members, there's no further speakers. I'll go back to Councillor Moran to sum up. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Could I just read the motion again? The Council acknowledges that we can't bind future budgets to a rate trip, but we can show our rate prayers. That is our strong intent and promise that the City of Adelaide undertakes to freeze or reduce the rate in the dollar until the end of the council term, unless an unforeseen financial situation hits us. The arguments from Team Adelaide completely misrepresent this. I've said we can't buy, but we can send out a message. And to say this isn't the right time is, is confusing to me. This is exactly the right time. There could not be a time more screaming um, pertinent to tell them we are going to try to do this. Um, Councillor Sims, the Greens, they're always big, big taxes and big raters and big spenders. I understand that. But for the um, ultra conservatives on council to actually vote against this tells me that they are just voting against because it's not being moved by one of them. This is a good motion. Your ratepayers will appreciate a forward promise. I will be calling a decision. We will be promulgating this. As they would like you to say that. And I, I don't ever see any other motions from Team Adelaide coming up. It's all very well to say, oh, it's not the right time. Where are your targets? What are you doing? All you do is knock down the decent motions of well-experienced councillors. This is exactly the right time to do this. But of course, we know that they want for it. We're giving free rents everywhere for 90 days at the market. We're doing all that stuff. But this is across the board. Everybody's suffering. So I urge you to change your mind and vote for this. Members, I will put that to the vote. There we go. Members, those in favour? Those against? That is lost. Uh, Councillor Moran, oh, Moran, sorry. Just a minute. There we go. Sorry, Councillor Moran. I'd like to call a division. Thank you. Council, as a division has been called on the motion, with all those in favour of the motion, please answer for or against. Sorry, I'll repeat that. Please answer for or against for the motion when I call out your name. Thank you. Councillor Moran? Councillor Abrahimzadeh? Against. Councillor Ho? Against. Councillor Kira? Yes. Deputy Lord Mayor? Aye. Councillor Donovan? Against. Councillor Kuros? Against. Councillor Martin? For. Councillor Canole? Against. Councillor Sims? Against. Thank you. That wasn't too mad, was it? <laughs> 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 <They're> all... <laughs> that was very funny. All your mics were on then. Um, right, we go to 15.5, Councillor Moran's Super Loop. Hang on one second. There we go. You're unmuted. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Sandy. I will actually delay this one. Um, I don't think it's something we should be talking about during the pandemic. So I'd like to go to the next motion. Thank you. So you're withdrawing 15.5? Sure. 
we're drawing. Okay, that one's done. Uh, it's 15.6, we have unsolicited bid process. Councillor Moran. Uh, ooh, uh, t t circumstances I have overtaken this, um, uh, I've moved that the council notes the media comments of the Crows chair in the wake of the season and its consequent serious impact on the club's finances, in particular the statement, if we're cutting into the muscle of the club's business, something like new facilities must have to take a back burner. Two, the council terminates the Adelaide Football Club's unsolicited bid process for part two. Three, requests that the administration formally informs the Adelaide Football Club of the council decision. And four, ask the administration to prepare a report by August 2020 identifying a range of options and a time frame for the renovation or replacement of the Adelaide Aquatic Centre, including possible sources of federal, state, and local government funding. Um, before, uh, just to explain this, I will ask that this be taken in two parts, one, two, and three, uh, first and four, and really only four um, is, is pertinent at the moment. So I'm happy if people vote against uh, one, two, and three, and just, and I ask them to vote for four. Councillor Moran, if, if uh, all, I mean, parts one, two, and three are sort of redundant, we could just do it four rather than voting on that section. But I actually need a move, uh, seconder for the motion to begin with. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Councillor Sims, I will ask you to use your little hand thing. So, uh, so members, the motion has one, two and three crossed out and we are just addressing four. Um, Councillor Sims has seconded it. So, Councillor Moran, would you like to? Whoop, just muted you. Would you like to speak to it? Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Yes, I think this is a sensible. Um, the situation has changed rapidly, and the um, Adelaide Football Club has removed its um, unsolicited bid, so we don't need to do that. But we now need to look at options for what we're what what we're going to do with the aquatic centre, and um, I think the Four is, I've just lost it, but uh, number four is explanatory and uh, I urge you to vote for it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Councillor Sims, did you wish to speak? Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, look, I'm supportive of uh, this. I, I think now that um, the Crows proposal is off the table, which is a good um, outcome in my view, um, then this does open up the discussion around where to from here and what options are there for improving the aquatic centre. And I think there's always been broad acceptance on the council that we do need to uh, make some changes to the aquatic centre. Um, that's never been in contention. I think everybody's agreed that it does need to be improved. Um, and so this is an opportunity for us to get some options on the table, to take into account some of the work that's been gathered through the needs analysis as well, and to look at some of the opportunities that there are to partner with state government, partner with federal government. Um, Jane Lamack Smith, when she gave a deputation earlier, talked about the importance of some of those collaborations. And I guess from my perspective, I can imagine at this time, federal government, state government will be looking for opportunities to invest in key infrastructure um, once society is back functioning again. And um, what better way to do that than to support a swimming centre in the city of Adelaide? Um, I think a significant capital works program on um, a, a really top-notch swimming centre um, would be a great uh, driver in terms of job creation and be really good in terms of uh, promoting community health and wellbeing in the city. So I'm uh, supportive of this as a, a way of, um, of moving that along. Thank you, Councillor Sims. I have Deputy Lord Mayor followed by Councillor Connell. Deputy Lord Mayor, okay. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. I just have an amendment which uh, was circulated earlier to the uh, Council Business Team. Uh, and I seek a second. Uh, Sorry, one, one moment. I've got Councillor Abraham as a seconder, but I just need to ask some advice. 
for a moment. Sorry. Sorry, members, I'm just checking something with governance in terms of the amendment. Yes, he's completely It's it's changed to that in three new sections, so that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, um, apologies, Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, I was advised earlier that that was too much of a change to the original motion, um, but I'm now being told that 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 can be accepted as a an alternate motion as an amendment. Right. Okay. It's not an alternate motion, it's an amendment. So yeah. obviously uh, I didn't contemplate the removal of those other sections. Um, otherwise I might have drafted it um, somewhat differently. Um, uh, the the actual intent of the uh, much of the intent of the original motion is captured. Um, the original motion, uh, due to when it was drafted, in no small part, I think, um, uh, missed uh, the major major thing that it should have captured, which was that we should be trying to pitch this as um, an economic recovery stimulus post-pandemic. Um, that's how we should be presenting this to state and federal governments and to other councils as well. Um, uh, so that's the light that we need to be showing it in. Um, also, the original motion had no uh, mention of the needs analysis in it. The needs analysis is an important body of work that will inform what we're going to do going forward. But as I highlighted earlier today, I have put in there at two that we are not only limiting ourselves to the needs analysis, because I think there are other things um, that should be taken into account um, with that. So, um, look, it's a fairly self-explanatory motion. I think it tightens up. Um, a lot of the intent and makes it very clear uh, to the administration that what this council wants um, uh, is a series of options that we can very easily and readily take to state and federal governments to say this is a serious project and uh, we'd like your significant support um, in getting it done, obviously because we are not in a position to do that ourselves. We weren't in a position to do that ourselves before. We are certainly not in a position to do it ourselves now. Um, and thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. I have uh, I've been sorry. I put down Abrahamsade, but Councillor Kura seconded that, and then I've got Councillor Abrahamsade, Councillor Not Canol, Councillor Sims, Councillor Martin, Councillor Moran. So I will go to Councillor Mary Kuros, and then Councillor Kira. I'll go to Councillor Kuros first. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. 
Thank you, Lord Mayor. I think this gives a, a really good, clear direction um, in regards to the Aquatic Centre. Um, there is um, a lot of talk um, about the recovery and where we, where the government would like to focus some stimulus um, in the uh, economy. And uh, this is a, a great way forward that we can um, collaborate with or partner with the state government and surrounding councils. Um, who are identified as the, the high users of, of the centre. And so, um, you know, it is a well-loved centre. It is a centre that people want to see in North Adelaide and continue to be there. Um, we know that it's going to be very difficult for council to um, do this on, on, it, on our own. Um, I don't want it to be lost. Um, we've got a um, fairly detailed needs analysis um, report that uh, we can you know, combine together with what the future of the aquatic centre looks like and what people are looking for. So I think this is much a stronger motion. Um, it, uh, it, we've put everything together um, and uh, you know, we can go forward to the state government and um, hopefully also the surrounding councils, which we've talked about in depth. And, and this is, uh, these are just um, things that we, we um, have already talked about that we want to push forward and uh, get support to be able to continue having the aquatic centre there. Councillor Abraham, today, did you wish to speak? Uh, no, thank you, Lord Mayor. I, I was seconding, so I'm good. Thank you. Okay, thanks. I have Councillor Canole. Did you wish to speak? Yeah, I can. I mean, uh, uh, I suppose this motion is a, a refinement of a motion that uh, Councillor Martin put forward that I did a slight variation to, to include the, the uh, these uh, local governments as well. I mean, we can continue down the path. Are we talking about the same one? Uh, we're talking to this amendment that's up yes, here. Yeah, because yeah. this amendment, uh, Councillor Martin put a, one about uh, seeking funds from federal, state, and local governments uh, a few, uh, a few, you know, a meeting or two ago. So it is just a, a continuation of this uh, this, this particular topic. I mean, uh, uh, certainly it's it's uh, worthy to put forward, and certainly it's. Uh, I mean, everybody has the same intent. I mean, uh, it, it's uh, it's worthwhile investigating it to see what assistance we can get. But it, uh, as a fallback, depending if we are able to get uh, some genuine uh, uh, assistance financially, uh, to, to see how other ways that we can potentially uh, work with the aquatic centre, um, you know, it, it, in some way to uh, bring a facility that people uh, can use and that uh, the, uh, the, the actual council can afford. So uh, failing these sorts of initiatives um, and the assistance from state governments, et cetera, and obviously the other local councils, yeah, we do need to keep an idea how can we work with this and in, in the framework of all the other uh, uh, financial issues that we have uh, and potentially could uh, uh, use this as, a, as, a, as an attractor for our city in some other way. So, but I'll, I'll have those conversations later as we unfold, as the you know, situation unfolds. Thank, Thank you. you, Councillor Knoll. I've got Councillor Sims next. Councillor Thanks, Sims. Lord Mayor. Um, look, I have absolutely no problem with what's been um, proposed here. Indeed, it, it's um, in keeping with, with the comments I made um, around my seconding of Councillor Moran's original motion. So I'm happy to support the amendment. I, I guess my only concern is around the process here. Um, this is a uh, furthering of the precedent that was established at the last meeting when Councillor Hyde performed radical surgery on Councillor Donovan's um, motion on cycling. And now we're seeing it again on um, Councillor Moran's um, motion, although in this case, it isn't um, in such radical contrast. But what concerns me is the lack of engagement with elected members around this. I mean, I'm assuming Councillor Hyde didn't bother to talk to Councillor Moran um, before the meeting about um, her motion and flag um, this amendment. It would be really nice if that were to happen. Um, he mentioned that this had been sent to administration. Well, I hadn't seen it before the meeting. I'm not sure if other councillors have seen it before the meeting, but I would have really welcomed the opportunity to see it, given um, its detail. I know that later we're going to be dealing with a motion that talks about improving organisational culture 
Well, I would suggest, Lord Mayor, that a key way that that can occur is if all members um, act in a more collegiate way. And that means sharing of information like this before the meeting so that some of us don't repeatedly feel like we're being ambushed um, without getting uh, the relevant information. have Councillor Martin, followed by Councillor Moran and Councillor Kira. Councillor Martin? Councillor Martin? Yes, yes, thank you. Um, and look, uh, uh, thank you for uh, uh, the acknowledgement of Councillor Canole that this builds on, um, is it Canole or Noll? I've noticed there's a difference uh, um, in, should I say Noll or Canole? It's Canal, Councillor Martin. Canal, okay, thank you. Um, um, uh, it does build on uh, previous motions that I put up, that uh, Council Moran has put up, and, and that's good. But um, the motion doesn't put a time frame on this, as the previous motion did. It asked for recommendations by August, and it specifically asked for recommendations related to the replacement or renovation. Um, given that as it stands, it would allow for the closure of the aquatic centre, would the mover be prepared to include those words so that it reads, requests the administration provide re recommendations by August to, uh, um, um, for the reno renovation or replacement of the aquatic centre? Deputy Lord Mayor? Um, no, because I think it actually gives the administration flexibility to uh, do it even perhaps before, well before then, or in line with whatever conversations they have with the government suggesting what their uh, response is for economic uh, stimulus. Okay, I'm prepared to accept that then. I, I hear that. Well, what about recommendations to renovate or replace? I've unmuted you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, look, uh, I suppose I'm happy to, but I think that's a given um, because we're actually, I mean, we're talking about the needs analysis and that's the primary thing here so um we're, we're, we're looking my this this motion is looking to address that that consultation that body of work including the intercept survey um but also any other things they might think relevant so i think it's captured well, sorry who who is speaking lord mayor I can't Sorry, hear that was just Jenny saying that he uh, he can either accept the version or not. No. I can't speak to it. Thank you. Okay. Well, look, you know, I, I will support this, but uh, this is the sort of thing that rattles people because clearly it is open to the administration to report back uh, and suggest that it should be closed. Uh, and I think it would send a clear signal to the community. Moreover, it would be consistent with the previous motion it's replacing. In fact, it wouldn't be diametrically opposed because um, closing the Aquatic Centre is the direct opposite of what was proposed by Councillor Moran. That is that we have options for the renovation or replacement, not the closure. Um, so it's likely just to fuel um, a, a bit of mischief making, not from me, Lord Mayor, a bit of mischief making about the possibility that it may be closed rather than renovated or replaced. I, I actually can't see those words there, Councillor Martin. So I'm not sure no, what, what I'm, you're reading into it. I'm saying to you, Lord Mayor, that it is up to the administration to provide recommendations. And look, I'd like a decent discount for the, uh, the time that both you and the Deputy Lord Mayor have taken from me. Um, oh, we actually started it, actually. It's been stopped several times, Councillor Martin. But I'm happy to give you another minute with the leave of the, uh, the council members. Um, well, Lord Mayor, that would be um, an extraordinary interpretation of time. And I look forward to going back onto the tape to see how much time you did allocate. Would you like to recalculate? It's still going. Oh, Lord Mayor, you do this every time. You persuade me to waste time. <laughs> I don't think I could ever do that to you, Councillor Martin. Oh, you, um, you do, Lord Councillor Mayor. Councillor Martin, you do. another 10 seconds have gone. What would you like? Would you like another minute to finish speaking, Councillor Martin? 
I would like the three minutes that were allocated to me. That's all I want. Well, it, you're the chair. Do I have that three minutes or not? Well, Councillor Martin, we've already been going for at least six, so I'm happy to give you another two minutes. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, I don't require that long. I simply wish to make the point that as the motion stands, it is open for the administration to recommend that the future of the Adelaide Aquatic Centre is to close it down and to provide some alternative in some other location. Um, Councillor Moran's motion, however, proposed that we renovate or replace it. Um, and in the absence of the, the mover, the amender, preparing to countenance, ruling out closing it down, um, I'm disappointed. Uh, I will support it though, and hope uh, that uh, he is true to his word and the administration also is prepared to look at the renovation or replacement and doesn't put forward to council a proposal to close it under any circumstances. Thank you. Councillor Moran, sorry, just seeing where I'm up to. There we go. Okay, look, I have been ambushed. Um, the Deputy Lord Mayor, as usual, has not extended the courtesy of speaking to the original move of the motion. It seems that when the team wants to support a motion, it just has to uh, then amend it and make it their own. But I'll take that. Um, I think part one is unnecessary. Um, of course, we know that the Adelaide Football Club has withdrawn their unsolicited bid proposal. That's why I deleted my number one. And uh, accepts their withdrawal is a nonsense. Uh, the rest is exact same as my motion, uh, except waffly. Um, but I, I will accept that um, because the, the team has been forced to completely backtrack um, on their total and a complete support of the Adelaide Football Club's bid. Uh, and I'm glad they finally see, or, well, they have to really because it has been withdrawn, um, but let it not be forgetting, forgotten by the ratepayers and the council that this team fully supported it with X yards for the Adelaide Football Club. This is not the plan, this is not their dream, this is what uh, a few, the few independent councillors on this council said. Well, uh, so I will support it, but I think, uh, I, I think that the Deputy Lord Mayor, in his usual fashion, has been incredibly discourteous and he should be thoroughly ashamed of himself. I have Councillor Kerra. Uh, thanks, Lord Mayor. Uh, look, I, I would like to support this with a couple of um, provisos uh, and, and questions, really. I put them, those provisos as questions to the administration. Um, firstly, uh, is this motion right now going to cause any undue burden? Um, there is no real indication of the scope of the response, how much detail is required. Um, we're all aware of the, uh, the, the skeleton staff situation, the crisis that's going on. Um, is this motion okay, really? I mean, are, are we burdening the, the administration with this? Because we're being asked to, we're asking them to provide, you know, alternatives or submissions and without any extent of detail. So, CEO, great. would you like to answer that? Yeah, through, um, through Lord Mayor, there's been a, a substantial amount of work done to date with the needs analysis. So we have a good understanding of the community's views. There is a fair bit of work to be done, but it's clear that this is a very, very important community facility. We have a community service obligation to provide an aquatic centre, in my view. Um, and so the administration is already preparing works as we speak regarding the future of the centre and what is required. Um, and so you know, I, I believe that the, uh, the motion as listed is something that is going to enable the, uh, the administration to progress its works and return back to council uh, with a series of options based on um, the needs analysis, which will be completed fairly soon when we feed in the, um, the engagement outcome. So it's a bit of a work in progress. My view is it's quite an enabling motion. Right. Okay. Um, okay. That's terrific. And uh, the other the other proviso. Look, um, is this is this in any way affirming what 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 I think we don't want to be doing uh, is affirming the complete withdrawal of the AFC uh, 
from uh, the AFC proposal. And I say that because um, I think the AFC proposal was a very good and a very attractive one. Uh, and uh, current circumstances have only rammed home how important and how good that proposal was to have in, an injection of capital uh, into uh, the city council, an injection of capital from the private sector, nice. and a thumbs up from the private sector uh, to the council, uh, to uh, the, the provision of services. I think that was a very good proposal. I wouldn't want to see a motion that affirms their uh, withdrawal, that in any way, uh, um, in any way politically prevents them from coming back to the table on this. Uh, could you comment on that, CEO, please? Yeah, through you, Lord Mayor. This, this motion, as I read it, just simply notes that the Adelaide Football Club have withdrawn. And um, um, at this time, I understand that that is definitely the view of the Adelaide Football Club. They have not spoken to me in any way about um, a future proposal, so there's nothing that I've, I'm aware of. However, just like any other entity um, operating uh, within the city, um, they, they have an ability to reapproach council at a future date, and um, we would base that on its merits uh, going forward. So, um, whilst you know, I think the position of the Adelaide Football Club has been made fairly clear to council. Uh, the, the correspondence we received has definitely stated a withdrawal from the process. Um, that is the case, but in the future, should this club or any other club come to council, we would deal with it on its merits. Okay, terrific. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Knoll. Just a point of, uh, of an objection in a sense, because I, I, when in the assertion that we uh, fully support the, the, the AFC um, uh, proposal, I've been every step said no, it is a proposal, and I, I'm using it only as with the other parts of the, uh, you know, the, the process to inform myself to make a decision. I do not did not fully support uh, the AFC's uh, uh, proposal at any time. Thank you, Councillor Knoll. Uh, members, if I have no further spe speakers, I'll go back to the Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Um, thank you, Lord Mayor. I'm I'm guessing that uh, going on members' indications that they generally accept that this was an improvement on the previous motion, which is why um, they're supporting it. And, uh, oh, look, I think I just want to thank you for their most generous support um, uh, of this motion. I think it's going to achieve a good outcome. I also think um, uh, that there's nothing in here about closing the Aquatic Centre down. In fact, the only person um, who I've known to suggest that we should close the centre down and return it to Parkland is Shane Sodi. So I don't think anyone in this council chamber really wants to do that. Um, uh, there's no, this, is, this is purely about making a, a new facility um, that we can all be proud of, but also sharing the burden with other levels of government who should be taking it on. It's not our burden to bear alone, a regional facility like this. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Members, we're going to the vote uh, on the amendment. Those in favour? Those, those against, that is carried, and that becomes a substantive. We go back to the substantive with any other speakers. If not, I'll go to Councillor Moran to sum up. Councillor Moran. Yes, look, I think this motion was exactly the same as my motion. I just filled in a thing, I mean, acknowledging that they've withdrawn is a waste of time saying that. I think it's very rude of the Deputy Lord Mayor, but he is, that is uh, his uh, uh, form of, uh, Conduct Council. I'm so glad that the Team Adelaide and Frank did support every motion to the, the Adelaide Football Club. Um, you never voted with. Sorry, sorry, Councillor Moran, you're breaking up too much. I'll speak a bit closer. I think to watch the, uh, the people. The, uh, I won't say rats, that's too rude, but abandoning the ship of the Adelaide Football Club is funny to watch. The electorate don't get what you did. We've called divisions on every motion. So you can say that you were never for it, but you were. Thank you. Uh, members, that goes to the vote. Those in favour? 
Those against, that is carried. Members, that takes us to item 15.7, Deputy Lord Mayor Standing Orders. Yeah, sorry, Lord Mayor. I was also just putting my hand up to call the division on that last one. Oh, we... my apologies. Can we call the division? That, Penny? Fifteen point six. So division was called. I'll just call out each of your name and please state whether you were for or against the motion. Councillor Moran. Four. Councillor Abraham today. Four. Councillor Ho. Okay, actually, I've forgotten. <laughs> Councillor Ho is, has left the meeting, so he's not there. Councillor Kira? Four. Deputy Law Mayor? Aye. Councillor Donovan? Four. Councillor Kuros? Four. Councillor Martin? Yeah, I'm pleased they're with me. Yep. Councillor Canole? Four. Councillor Sims? Yes. Thank you. Scott Lock. Thank you. Unmute me and I'll unmute Deputy Lord Mayor. Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you. I'll move it as it appears and seek a second. Look for a seconder. Councillor Abraham today. Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, thank you, Lord Mayor. This is a very straightforward motion. Um, what it would do is make a very common sense change to the standing orders so that um, uh, questions on notice and uh, particularly their replies are read out with leave of the meeting, um, not purely um, at the whims of the person who put the question. Of course, we know that these are distributed uh, at the council meeting, they're available publicly, they appear in the minutes. Uh, there is no need at all for all of us and our staff to be wasting our time having 10, 15, 20 minutes worth of questions uh, read out in one meeting for absolutely no value whatsoever. Thank you, Councillor Abraham. Today, did you wish to speak? Reserve my right, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Sims, followed by Councillor Kira. Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, I'm very disappointed that this has been uh, put forward. We've heard um, lots of claims of time wasting tonight, and yet here we are once again with yet another motion uh, tinkering with council standing orders. Um, that seems to be about trying to uh, prevent opportunities for council members to speak. Um, at the end of the day, if a councillor wants to ask a question and want to have it read onto the public record, I don't think it's a big deal. Um, we only meet once a month. And the reality is that some members of the community want to hear the answers to the questions. Those who are streaming and watching the meeting live, or uh, when we're meeting physically, those who are in the council chamber. And I think it's totally reasonable for an elected member to keep faith with their representatives and ask for the question and the response to be read out. And I'm really sick to death of these efforts to try and curtail the rights of elected members to ask questions and to hold administration um, to account and to raise questions on behalf of um, the community. So I won't be supporting this one. Thank you. I have Councillor Kerra. Uh, well, thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, uh, I, I actually do agree with Councillor Sims here. Um, I think I think it would be a mistake to go down this path. I think the um, I can fully understand where the, the Deputy Lord Mayor is coming from with this. Um, I think he's seeking to redress, uh, unfortunately, a problem of politics rather than policy. Um, I think that what we've had is the use of questions. Uh, to, uh, dare I say, filibuster, to, to extend the length of time of meetings, to, to, to procrastinate and uh, just cause trouble. But um, I think that the, the, the risk with this motion is that you're indulging uh, the worst of counsel uh, with this rather than actually pushing back. I, I'm actually satisfied with the current uh, process of the Lord Mayor uh, being in control and putting to the questioner whether they would like to have the questions um, are taken as read, as happened earlier tonight. Um, I, I, I'm just troubled by the loss of opportunity to uh, query the administration on matters uh, in a format for which the, the, the question uh, format was intended. Um, and I think that 
I'm, 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 I'm troubled. I, w- I would put back to the Deputy Lord Mayor, because I know he's an eminently reasonable man, I would put back to him uh, to whether he ought to consider whether this is a baby with a bathwater uh, situation here. Uh, careful, you know, y- your bathwater may be poisoned uh, by your nanny, but that doesn't mean that you should throw it out. You should you might want to throw your <laughs> nanny out uh, instead of your bathwater. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Councillor Moran. Oh, right. Yes, look, this is a ridiculous thing. I mean, why, why, why some people bother to come to council at all? This is a gag. Um, and when Councillor Carer, who I, who I do, uh, do actually agree with, says that it's uh, playing politics, where do you think you are? You're in a political forum. We're meant to debate things, to ask questions. Streamlining, I think that council would like the, the council just to go home and let the administration when councillor martin asks questions most of the time we allow it to be read it really doesn't take up that much time perhaps we should get rid of questions too that would really make it much easier to streamline this council in fact let's all just go stay home and turn our screens off i'm sure the ceo could run the council very ably but this is a gag. It's in line with the policies of Team Adelaide right through this council. Um, it's ridiculous. The answers should be read out if the, the politician that asked them wants them to be read out. Thank you. I have Councillor Martin next. Just one moment. There we go. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Yeah, look, I'll be very brief. A, a gag is a gag, and it is yet another gag. It, it is not dissimilar from what was proposed when councillors would have been forbidden from discussing motions in public before meetings. It, it is uh, consistent with streamlining council meetings so that we only meet every now and then. It is consistent with um, uh, denying the opportunity for members of the public to speak to council by uh, reducing the number of occasions they can do so. Um, uh, It's a sad outcome for um, uh, the ratepayers of this city if they cannot, through their elected members, ask questions of the council. Thank you, Councillor Kouros. Um, I just want a clarification on on this. So um, we're asking, Deputy Law Mayor, it's motions asking, uh, for the question on notice um, and the reply to be taken as read. It doesn't take away the fact that you can have follow-up questions on the answer to that question. Is that right? Uh, you can ask a question without notice after questions on notice, as we did tonight. Right. And so, so if a question is asked in, in chamber and the question is answered, in the papers like it was today, if Uh uh, the person asking the question wanted further clarification on the answer, they can still ask that question and have a discussion on it. Is that right? Correct. So it's not a gag. The discussion can still take place. It's just a matter of the formality of the reading the question, reading out of the answer, reading out the answer is just, you know, just to... Is, is is the one that is what we're discussing here. We're not taking away the discussion of the question, right? Correct. Well, mm-hmm. that's not a gag. I don't understand how that can be a gag. So I guess, you know, it's going back to creating, um, you know, conspiracy theories again and controversy and calling it Team Adelaide and calling it whatever you want to call it. Um, but I do take on board what Councillor Kira said. It I, I actually... You know, I I do um, understand where he's coming from, but I don't think that's the intent of the mover here. I think his intent is, you know, taking it that people can read. They can read what the question is. They can read what the answer is. And they're going to listen to what the person is. If the person wants further clarification on that question they ask, that person can ask that question. It will be answered. There's no gag. I really think we've got to stop these childish games. It's getting boring. I think the public are getting bored. Um, You know, it really is absolutely ridiculous. And I'm sitting here listening to this. this Thank you, Councillor Kouros. Thank you, Councillor Kouros. I'm not quite sure what you said. Hello, everybody. Right. Thank you, Councillor Kouros. 
Uh, members, if there's no other speakers, I'll go back to the Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Whoops, sorry. Thank sorry. Okay. Thank you, Lord Mayor. And just to just to set the record straight and just for clarity, what this would actually do to the process at meetings is we would come to questions on notice and the Lord Mayor, you, Lord Mayor, would say, um, uh, would seek guidance from the meeting as to whether or not we take these questions as read or whether or not we want them read out. And that is a show of hands for us to determine that. Now, to Councillor Kira's point about being reasonable, um, uh, what isn't reasonable is what happened, not at this meeting, but it happened at the previous meeting, where there was about 15 minutes of questions read out with absolutely no value offered to the council or others whatsoever. No real tangible value. Everything else we do in this council is by, if you want to speak for an extra two minutes, it's a show of hands, isn't it? If you want to do this, if you want to do that, we vote on absolutely everything. Why is there this peculiarity in our standing orders that uh, also there is, no, there is no limit on how many questions on notice you can put? And of course, we saw seven questions from one member of council tonight. Um, and, and I would actually hazard a guess that that member of council would have made us endure all of the answers to that quest, those questions had this motion not been on the books and, uh, and the, the, there being a real possibility of uh, his abuse of that power being curtailed, honestly. It was abuse. So, um, so, Lord Mayor, it's very straightforward. Um, I think if any other, uh, well, if any councillors um, put questions on notice which are reasonable, we, and they want them read out because they've got people in the gallery, we will still absolutely do that. I don't see any reason why we wouldn't. I do not see any reason why we wouldn't. But once we get to the second, depending on how long it is, but you know, the third, fourth, fifth question, in a row being read out because of the, the whims, because of the whims of one councillor who by a peculiarity of our standing orders has too much power afforded them, power that is not mandated in the act, power that is purely mandated in our, in our standing orders. Well, I think, that's, I think that's inappropriate. This is a fix to that. Um, it's gonna make things go a lot more smoothly. It's gonna make sure people are better behaved and that people don't abuse the powers that they have. The decision will still be made by the council. This council does not want to gag people who are doing reasonable things and uh, taking up a reasonable amount of time on, on, on the issues that we're meant to be dealing with. Okay. Uh, thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Members, uh, on that note, we will go to the vote. Uh, members, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Is that right? Yeah. Just double checking? Yep. Okay. Sounds clear. Councillor Martin. Division, you. please. Division. <clears throat> Councillors, the division has been called. I'll call out each of your name and please state whether you are for or against the motion. Councillor Moran. Councillor Moran. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Abrahimzadeh? Four. Councillor Ho? Four. Councillor Kira? Four. Councillor Kira, sorry? Four. Four. Deputy Lord Mayor? Aye. Councillor Donovan? Against. Councillor Kouros? Four. Councillor Martin? Against. Councillor Canole? Four. And Councillor Sims? Against. Thank you. Members, we're halfway through the motions on notice. Uh, so I'm going to call a short recess, uh, perhaps just a, maybe a five, 10 minute break, 10 minute break, so everybody can have a cup of tea and a comfort stop. Uh, I'll see you back here in 10 minutes. Okay, members, we do have quorum, so I'm going to get started. Uh, that takes us to 15.8, which is uh, parking assistance for hospital workers, uh, Councillor Kouros. Uh, 
One moment. There you go. Okay. Councillor Cruz. Thanks, Lawyer. Um, I um, understand that the state government has made uh, their announcements um, in regards to parking um, for health workers um, and staff during the um, COVID-19 crisis. Um, I'm not sure, uh, I just think at this point, I'll just leave it um, because we're still in the crisis um, and um, it's there if the um, staff uh, administration wish to continue to um, investigate it should the crisis investigate more free parking for throughout the city um, if required um, during this crisis. Okay, so Councillor Cross, so you, um, I'm not sure what you're saying in terms of you leaving it. So you're going to go ahead with your motion? I'll go ahead with it. And, and uh, so I'll just, I've got a seconder in Council and Deputy Lord Mayor, so um, you can actually speak to it if you want. Oh, okay. Um, well, it's, it was um, a motion that um, I had uh, put through um, well over a week ago um, to um, assist the uh, health workers in regards to uh, the crisis that we are in at the moment. Um, we all uh, are in agreement, and the whole state is even the premiers in agreement that they are key um, key essential workers and key workers during this crisis. Um, and we are um, under a lot of pressure and we don't want, we want to relieve them of this pressure of uh, parking um, to go to work. Um, obviously, because public transport's pretty limited in the sense that a lot of people don't want to take it or um, for whatever reason, they need to bring in their car because, um, and we just want to make it easier for them to do, do, to do their job. So I um, want to continue uh, having this motion. I'm hoping that my, um, fellow elected members um, agree to um, have this motion and have it go, go through. Um, hopefully this crisis doesn't get any worse and we manage to maintain it and we're not in, um, we're not requiring extra hospital beds, um, but we don't know what the future, um, what it holds over the next six months. And uh, I just really would like to um, have this go through to support the um, uh, the health workers if required. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak? No, thank you. Okay, members, Councillor Martin, did you wish to speak? Um, uh, yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, this is similar to a motion uh, that I lodged on the 1st of April, and I'm happy to support this, but I'd like to make an amendment. I think I can improve it slightly and address some of Councillor Kouros's concerns. Um, uh, can I propose, um, um, may I give you the words, Lord Mayor? You can dictate them and I'm sure that they... Uh, okay, look, okay. Uh, uh, um, and look, I'm sorry I didn't circulate this, but I just realised that it was missing a few points. Um, that Council investigate and implement free parking for health and essential service workers. Have you got that? Um, uh, during the COVID-19 uh, crisis within the City of Adelaide and recognises the current parking difficulties for residents in some areas, including North Adelaide, and agrees to provide on application one free booklet of parking vouchers. Is that in some areas of North Adelaide? You'll have to ask. Yeah. So, uh, okay, sorry, I thought that was in your motion that follows Councillor Martin. So you want it in both motions? Is that no, right? no, Lord Mayor, I'm going to withdraw the one that follows. I think uh, Councillor Kouros is, is fine. I'm just trying to improve it and encapsulate both. And then I can withdraw the other and save everybody a great deal of time. Right, uh, okay. So I might get you to repeat that just to make sure that we've captured that. Um, can you show me on screen what's written and I'll be able to tell you. You'll just, you just have to repeat it one more time so that they can capture what you said. Where, uh, which bit? Not all of it. Um, well, I wasn't typing at Councillor Martin and I'm actually uh, fairly well social distanced away from Kylie and her laptop. So you might have to just repeat what you said so okay. that we can make sure we've got it. 
Okay, um, look, it's on the fly, so I'm hoping I've got it. Investigate and implement free parking for critical health and essential service workers during the COVID-19 crisis within the city of Adelaide together with one free booklet of parking vouchers to be issued to residents on application in recognition of the current parking problems, particularly in North Adelaide. Now, Lord Mayor, uh, can I have my three minutes? Um, I heard the bell. I really like uh to well, you've actually, I first have to ask uh, Councillor Kouros whether she'll accept that. No, I, I proposed it as, amendment, as an oh, amendment. Amendment, all right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, look, if, if the councillor will accept so, it as a variation, that's fine. Sorry, you've proposed it as an amendment, so I'll need a second for that amendment. Sorry, I can see some hands up, but I'm going to have to ask you to put your hands down till I can find out who's seconding the amendment. So, uh, I'm assuming Councillor Moran waving at me means she wants to second it. Councillor Moran, did you wish to second it? Yes, I've, I've raised my hand. I know, but I've got several hands raised and I don't know whether they were raising their hand to speak or raising their hand to second the motion. I'm happy to second it, but I'm happy for somebody else to second it. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay. So, uh, so Councillor Martin, can you check what's on the screen and see if that's your... Uh, investigate and implement free parking for critical health and essential service workers during COVID in the City of Adelaide. Um, together, comma, together, <laughs> with the issue of one free booklet of parking vouchers. That's the, that's the issue. Yeah, knockout to be issued to residents on application in recognition of the current uh, parking problems, comma, particularly in North Africa. Please. Okay. <laughs> All right, so that's gonna update. Uh, so while that's updating, Councillor, would you like to speak to that? Um, uh, look, if it's all right for you, Lord Mayor, I'll just wait till it comes up. Yep, absolutely. Fifteen point eight. There we go. If we could just check that for accuracy. Yep, that's fine. Okay. Now look, I I, um, I support uh, uh, Councillor Kouros's intention. I think that's, that's great. Nice. Sorry. Did you say something, Lord Mayor, or did someone else interrupt? I had my microphone off, actually, just then. Oh, okay. Um, uh, so, look, I, I support the intention of Councillor Kouros's motion, uh, and I recognise, as she does too, that the state government has moved to assist health workers in particular with uh, free parking in, of course, state government-owned car parks. It has no control over on-street parking in the City of Adelaide or, indeed, in U parks operated by the City of Adelaide. Um, and uh, this allows the administration um, to provide access to uh, on-street parking as well as U parks at its discretion. Uh, but it also recognises not just healthcare workers, but as the administration notes in its comments, the requests from essential care workers, including uh, police, 
uh, who've sought assistance of the council to provide parking at this difficult time. Uh, additionally, and members may not be aware, but residents in North Adelaide have been experiencing uh, particular parking problems in recent weeks, such that several of them, including uh, someone associated with one of the resident groups, um, approaching me saying, look, we're having extreme difficulty, not least from relatives who are visiting uh, elderly relatives, uh, socially distanced, to provide services to them, including garden care and the like. And it would assist us greatly if uh, parking vouchers could be made available so that, um, and I'm not sure members know how they work, they essentially double in uh, specific zones the time allocated for parking. So if you're in a zone that is one hour and you can't get uh, your mum or your dad's lawn mown or you can't get the garden done, uh, the voucher entitles you to two hours. Now, um, I'm not suggesting that this be a permanent feature. And in fact, if the administration wishes to put a cap on it so that they expire in August or September, that is fine. It simply recognises a problem uh, brought to our attention by residents uh, and provide some assistance. But the primary intention is to assist not only healthcare workers, but essential services. And uh, frankly, our police uh, and uh, our ambulance and our fire services are all putting in long hours, assisting wherever they can. And it is an unfair burden when there is no parking provided for them um, at their workplace or nearby for them to be have to uh, to have to worry about racing back to a car so that they uh, avoid a, an expiation fee and a fine. So look, it's straightforward. I thank Councillor Kuras for raising it, and uh, I ask members to support it. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Moran. Uh, yes, I think this improves the original motion. Um, the public transport has been closed down in many areas, so healthcare workers and other important services are forced to drive their cars. Uh, so uh, the booklet system is very good. Um, Phil and I tried to bring that in before the pandemic that uh, healthcare workers uh, could get uh, special services and also the residents. So I think this makes perfect sense and I hope you support it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Kerra, did you wish to speak? No? Uh, members, did anyone else wish to speak? If no, I'll go back to Councillor Martin to sum up. Councillor Martin? Oh, only uh, to, to thank members in anticipation of their support. Thank you. Members to the vote. Those in favour of the amendment? Those against? That is lost. And we go back to Councillor Martin. Let me guess. You're right. Division. Sorry, Council Members, the division has been called on the amendment. I'll read out your name and please state whether you're for or against the amendment. Councillor Moran. Sorry, I missed that, Councillor Moran. Four. Thank you. Councillor Abraham today? Against. Councillor Ho? Against. Councillor Kira? Against. Council, uh, sorry, Deputy Lord Mayor? Aye. Councillor Donovan? Against. Councillor Kuros? Councillor Martin? Oh, I'm uh, the opposite of Councillor Kuros for. Councillor Canole? Against. And Councillor Sims? For. Thank you. So members, we go back to the substantive uh, or the original motion uh, I had. Uh, would anybody else like to speak to it? If not, I'll go back to Councillor Kuros to sum up. Uh, <laughs> Councillor Martin, hang on a second. So one one moment, councillors. 
Are you putting the motion back up? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Councillor Martin, did you wish to speak? Yes, I, I did, Lord Mayor, and uh, thank you uh, to whoever it is who's boiling the kettle for the noise in the background, unless that's some sort of well, internet. I think that must but be it, an internet thing because you're all on mute, so. Okay, it must be an internet noise. Um, look, I, you know, I, I, I will support this motion. Um, uh, however, I do wish to point out that um, it does not assist essential service workers. It does not assist police. It does not assist fire brigade. It does not assist ambulance. It does not assist visitors. It does not assist residents, many of whom in North Adelaide are really feeling the pinch of this. Thing. So, um, defective though it is, um, I understand. I'm very sorry, Councillor Martin, but I've been told by governance that you've already spoken, so therefore you can't speak again. Oh, I proposed an amendment. My apologies. Uh, no, that's all right. Are you pleased, Councillor Kerry? He's applauding. All right. Uh, so, if there's any further speakers, if not, I'll go back to Councillor Kouros to sum up. Councillor Kouros. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I didn't vote uh, for uh, Councillor Martin's amendment because it's very clearly explained in administration comments in regards to what they're doing um, for residents and on street parking throughout the city. Um, my, uh, my motion is intended to support all the nurses and doctors in the hospitals. And I believe, I know that Councillor Martin hasn't gone out at all from his house, but if you notice in the streets of North Adelaide, you can, there's very easily to park everywhere. No one is actually in the city. Um, so, you know, there are parking available for e everyone very easily. Um, so it's not that difficult for residents and for their visitors um, to get a car park um, during this crisis. I think you're entering into a very different territory. It's almost like, you know, you, you're you just trying to get your own way on something that has no relevance to what we're, what the crisis is and what we're trying to do. Oh, sorry, Lord Mayor, but you know, I mean, you know, they're just like like children having tantrums, and you know, should I be crying now that someone tried to hijack my motion? I mean, really, I mean, we just really need to move forward here and just look at it for what it is. I understand that you know, Councillor Martin wants to stamp his feet and have tantrums and have conspiracy theories. That's but, you know, the day, Speak to the motion, please. At the end of the day, um, you know, we're all wanting to help our um, essential services and we're all wanting to help our hospital staff and the majority of our hospitals are in um, the city. Um, so that's where the focus has been for my motion. I haven't heard from administration or I don't know anything about police or fire brigades or anything like that. So if there's something about that that I don't know, um, but uh, this is just going forward to a lot of the nurses that I speak to and hospital workers and doctors and you know that are working um, in this industry at the moment. Thank you. Okay. Uh, members, we'll go to the vote. Uh, those in favour? Those against? Sorry, I am going to do that again. Uh, members, those in favour? Uh, and those against? That one? Did you get everyone vote against? So the, the vote changed from the first one to the second one. Uh, <laughs> anyway, it's carried. Uh, we've got that. We'll, we'll actually take that off. Great. Um, that takes us, members, to 15.9, Councillor Martin, uh, parking changes. Um, look, Lord Mayor, can I just object to being berated by Councillor Kouros for not leaving my house? I know North Adelaide, I live here, she does not. However, that said, I will now withdraw that motion um, I regret very much that it hasn't helped essential workers, but I'll withdraw it anyway. Thank you. Councillor Kouros. She's... Councillor Kouros? 
would like to just point out for Councillor Martin's purposes that I do work in North Adelaide. I have several businesses in North Adelaide. I spend a lot of time in North Adelaide and I know who's parking in North Thank Adelaide. You. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Carroll. Uh, uh, members, it is getting late. What do we have next? We have 15.10, Councillor Sims. Uh, Unsolicited Proposals Guideline Amendment. I'll go to Councillor Sims. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I move that Council notes the Adelaide Crows withdrawal from the City of Adelaide's unsolicited bids process and amends the unsolicited proposals guideline to exclude its application to the Adelaide Park Plans as defined by the Adelaide Park Plans Act of 2005 and seek a second, Lord Mayor. Uh, so, Councillor Moran has seconded. Thank you. Lord Mayor, I won't um, go over uh, old ground. Um, it is getting um, late and we've talked about this um, quite a bit tonight. I guess the main point I want to make, Lord Mayor, is that it's not often in life that you get an opportunity to do things over or to uh, change course and uh, to change direction to prevent um, a repeat of mistakes. But this is one of those opportunities. We've talked at length tonight about um, the significant missteps that have dogged the um, process surrounding the Crows proposal to seize the Adelaide Parklands. And I think one of the biggest um, problems with that um, process has been the confidentiality and the uh, secrecy that has surrounded that. And that's a, a consequence of the unsolicited bids process because we know, of course, that in order to uh, protect the intellectual property of a proponent, um, that uh, proposals that come before council through the unsolicited bid process uh, remain in confidence, and as a result, council is restricted around um, the extent to which it can engage with the community. And indeed, uh, as I've advocated um, over the last uh, year and a half for increased community consultation, many councillors have said that's not possible because of the unsolicited bids process. Well, my view is when a process isn't working for you, when it's not serving the interests of the community and the people that you represent, then you get rid of the process. And uh, this is one of those circumstances. We need to take the parklands out of the unsolicited bids process. Parklands are public land and the public has a right to be consulted and discussions about the community's public land should happen in public view. That's a basic democratic principle, Lord Mayor. And that's why I'm proposing that we take the parklands out of the unsolicited bids process so that the community can have confidence that we never repeat the mistakes that we have made over the last 12 months. Councillor Moran. Yes, I support this. I mean, the dominant faction on council has repeated that they have been enslaved by the process that's been brought uh, visited upon them by a previous council, now's their chance to actually put their actions where their words were, uh, get rid of the parkland and the unsolicited uh, proposal guideline. They have said, and I have tapes of it, that they did not agree with the process, but now the process was in place, they had to abide by it. So now's your chance to do what you said you wanted to do, get rid of it in the park plans. It was never meant for that. In fact, on the previous council, as the few members that are here now were, we were surprised by the introduction of the unsolicited proposal. Um, we didn't know what it was about. Then suddenly the cross realised maybe this was But everybody on this council has said, we have to follow the process because it's a process so get rid of it now or forever show your hand. Just a point of correction, Councillor. The unsolicited bids proposal was brought into Council as a response to the Wingfield uh, situation and uh, it was a, a very clear request from, uh, from State Government that we have a policy in place which was brought through in the last council and only the three of us were there for that. So um, that, that is why the unsolicited bids proposal framework was brought through to council. I have councillor Kira. 
Uh, thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, um, I think um, I think members should should thoroughly reject this motion, and members should thoroughly reject uh, any kind of framing of the narrative uh, right now, which is what council is saying. Let's not kid ourselves. What council assumes that is seeking to do uh, any framing of the narrative that somehow the uh, the withdrawal of the unsolicited bid had anything to do with a flawed process. It didn't. It didn't. The unsolicited bid was was withdrawn because of the utter economic calamity that has befallen the entire uh, the entire globe. The entire globe. The utter economic calamity and the loss of jobs and the loss of livelihoods across the board for every ordinary, uh, pretty much everyone. I mean, it's absolutely astonishing what's going out there. That is the reason the unsolicited bid uh, has failed. It is because of a, a catastrophic loss of income for the AFC and for any party who'd be, who'd be taking part. Um, it, it is, it is uh, I, I would put, it is, it is both shameful and shameless to seek to be triumphant at this juncture about the, the withdrawal of the unsolicited bid. It is shameless and shameful to be, uh, to be triumphant about the withdrawal of the unsolicited bid. Let us not mince our words. And anyone seeking to capitalise politically on that uh, should, be, should be made to face their own words about this. It is a disgrace. And as to the, the, uh, this, this actual motion, um, I, 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 look, look, I think it should be withdrawn uh, for substantive reasons. Uh, and then that's very simple. What you've got here is a motion that is very broad brush. Uh, you've got a motion um, that basically precludes the, the reality that, that you have buildings, you have existing buildings that are already on parklands, uh, and, and this, this motion would prevent their, their, their use, uh, their new use. For example, this motion, this motion may well be used against the Ghana Corporation, against the Ghana Corporation, who have, who have sought to uh, utilise the railway building, okay? That's what this motion uh, could end up doing. So it is a completely unthought out motion, it's completely broad brush, it is utterly inappropriate and it's an absolute disgrace to see our councillors uh, try and take advantage of the utter calamity that has befallen the entire globe to push a narrow political agenda. I, I urge councillors to reject this motion and to utterly reject the sentiment behind it. Uh, I have Deputy Lord Mayor, then Councillor Martin. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. I have an amendment. Um, I think it's been given to governance ahead of time. Never fear, Councillor Sims. It captures much of what you want to do. Um, and I, yeah, I guess I'd seek a seconder, please. Uh, sorry, sorry, I'm just, um, I've lost everybody. Just a moment. Uh, I have, I didn't see which hand went up first. So is it Councillor, can I double check? Uh, Councillor Kouros, are you seconding? Thank you. Um, I'll, I'll keep this brief. As I said, it captures most of the intent. Um, uh, it does also speak to a previous motion um, that we do still have on the books, which is that this policy will go to a workshop for um, more thought and consideration. Um, I do think the parklands require a different approach. I don't think there should be no unsolicited bid policy in place for parklands because things like, and granted they may not have come through the specific process, but things like Councillor Kira noted, uh, uh, the Ghana Yurta Corporation, the tree walk in the southern parklands. Um, uh, but, you know, the, the example I, I was thinking of is um, unsolicited bids are meant to cover services that the council might wish to offer. So if someone were to develop a new automated lawnmower um, and want to approach us to talk about how we can uh, contractually use their services in the city of Adelaide to mow the parklands lawns, um, the, the unsolicited bid guideline policy actually wouldn't cover that if you just excluded the parklands. So I think there needs to be a different approach with parklands, yes. Um, I acknowledge 
um, uh, some of the issues that other councillors have raised, which is why at three we suspend the current policy as it is. We don't get many unsolicited bids so anyway, so I don't think it's going to be an issue. Um, uh, and if it is an issue and if someone does come with one, we can work through that um, and the administration can work through that when it comes up. Um, uh, but I do still think we need to talk about this a little bit more thoroughly. Um, uh, I'm really very much want to get the same outcome. Um, and if that means in a workshop we say, look, when we're talking about parklands, there's no confidence, uh, no confidential uh, matters relating to it at all. That's something we can flesh out um, and approve accordingly. But I do think we still need this policy in place um, for our green belt. Thank you. I have Councillor Kouros as the seconder. Did you wish to speak, Councillor Kouros? Uh, yes, um, I do. Um, I just, I, I understand Councillor Sims' intent, and I think everyone's got the same intent, but we have to be very careful here. Um, you know, we have got a lot of, uh, you know, commercial property on the parklands. And, you know, while no one is, we're on agreement that we don't want to be building all over the, the parklands, we want to keep it within um, how, how we have the parklands at the moment. So I'm getting a bit tired. Um, I just think that we're going to be ending up in, in dangerous territory. If we don't talk about this in depth and what, what we're going to be excluding, how this policy is going to actually um, continue. It's not, it's just, um, we need to be more broader, we need to be more clearer, we need to be more specific. And I think um, by this, suspending the unsolicited bid and by bringing it forward into a workshop, we'll be able to talk about it more in depth. And the fact that, you know, um, uh, Councillor Moran says that she was surprised about the Adelaide Football Club putting in their proposal, I mean, you know, it was, you know, much talked about in 2017 by herself in regards to the only way the aquatic centre can be saved is by partnering with a private entity. So, you know, we have to be very careful with our words. We have to be very careful with what policies we set up. We have to be very careful going forward. And I think with this workshop, we'll be able to work them through. We are, we're able to be more clear. We'll we either be more concise and set guidelines that we can actually be using. Thank you. I have Councillor Martin, then Councillor Moran. Councillor Martin. Yeah, um, to a couple of questions first, Lord Mayor. The first one is the original um, motion from Councillor Sims proposed that the um, unsolicited bid process is um, amended to exclude its application to the parklands, while this motion proposes the direct opposite, that is, that we address how the policy will apply to the parklands. Is it not the administration's view that this is a direct negative to the previous motion? No. Uh, I will ask them. I don't believe it is. Well, uh, Lord Mayor, don't tell them. Ask them for advice. Uh, thank you, Councillor Martin. They're sitting right next to me. I'm asking them. So I have both Rudy and Jenny saying that no, it expands on it. It's not a direct negative. Did you hear that, Councillor Martin? No, I did not. Say it again, please. I said they're saying that it expands on it. It's not a direct negative. Oh, I'm surprised. Okay. That's from both Rudy and Jenny. So. Um, okay. And another question for the administration. Um, uh, is it likely that um, the unsolicited bid proposal um, uh, that was the original motion would be used against the Ghana Corporation to prevent the use of the North Adelaide Railway Station? Now, this is a very important point, Lord Mayor, relevant to this. 
And you are asking the question of whom? The administration. I'm not sure. CEO, are you there? Yes, sorry. Um, I'm just uh, looking for a, an answer to Councillor Martin's question. You may have to repeat the question, Councillor Martin. Um, could the unsolicited, abandoned unsolicited bid motion of uh, the uh, council be used against the Ghana Corporation to prevent their use of the North Adelaide Railway Station? Through Lord Mayor, I can't get my video to work, sorry. Um, look, I don't believe so, um, because it's a process that's already underway. Secondly, uh, in the absence of a, um, an unsolicited proposal process, we would go through expressions of interest. Um, so there are a number of options for us to progress. Hmm. Thank you. Well, look, Lord Mayor, um, this is, uh, of course, um, a, a confection, nothing more. Um, Councillor Sims had proposed that we bite the bullet and say, as indeed the Deputy Lord Mayor said many times during the course of the discussion over the Crows bid for Park 2, um, there is no place for the unsolicited bid um, process within the parklands. And there is none. And we had the opportunity to say that straight up. It, it was, in fact, uh, what the community was looking for. In fact, I, I took a couple of phone calls from members of the community in North Adelaide today saying, you will make sure that that unsolicited bid process is killed. Because if it is not, then it is likely that the Crows bid will be resurrected. That Team Adelaide will again support another football club on the parklands. Now, of course, Lord Mayor, I said that I would support the unsolicited bid process being withdrawn from the parklands, but that's not what's being presented to us. What's being presented to us is an excuse to allow yet another proposal from the Crows or any other organisation for large-scale commercial development on the parklands. Now, I know uh, there will be those who say, as Councillor Kuros did all through last year, oh, we're not giving the parklands away, it'll always be councils even if we give it to them for 30, 40, 50, 100 years. That's not true. Once you alienate the parklands to public use, it is lost. It is almost impossible to turn it around. And Councillor Sims presented the test for Team Adelaide to ensure it would never happen again. Instead, the Deputy Lord Mayor brings out a motion he'd hidden, that is not presented to members of council before the meeting, which proposes that the matter is subject to review, which allows its application to the parklands. Now, that is unacceptable. Uh, moreover, it does not allow, this amendment does not allow the administration to provide any comment whatever. The only comment we've had from the administration is the one to sink Councillor Sims's proposal. And that's what, it, that's what it does. It sets out clearly why members should not vote for it. All this does is take it a step further and sink that proposal completely and any chance of protecting the parklands. I am just so disappointed, so disappointed, just to hear that people are contemplating this and even more disappointed to hear other councillors talking about how great this proposal was to take over the parklands and we should never seal off the opportunity to do it again. My Lord, what is going on in this council? It is a disgrace. Councillor, you've got 10 seconds. Uh, Councillor Moran I have next. Councillor Moran. Look, I think this is a sneaky direct ticket. We've got to understand why the administration have let it through, but this does change very clear uh, unequivocal motion that was first put up. These open. Every member of Team Adelaide except Jesse their finest, most dedicated member, has said they are respecting this process that was brought in by a previous council, yada, 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 and said, if we could have been there in the previous council, we would have never let this in. This is your chance to do a pure, just get rid of it in the parklands, 
And once again, the cuckoo in the nest comes in and blurs all the lines. It's very clever and very stupid, but your ratepayers aren't stupid and they'll see that. I don't think anybody on council now would own up to thinking the Crows proposal was great. Jesse is a force unto himself. He's also in a very far away ward, but just knock out the amendment, just stick to the pure one. You all said that in your debates before. We all heard you, we've all got the tapes. Don't worry, we're collecting the divisions, we're collecting the tapes. Um, just do the right thing for once and stop trying to capitalise on other people's thinking. Team Adelaide never puts emotions up that have any gravitas at all. All they do is spend their time, dress is there looking like a silly, silly little boy laughing and giggling. Mary looks pretty tired and rattled. But this is serious. You are on the city council now. You need to behave like it. And this is the worst meeting I've ever seen. I just despair of this. Sandy, you're better than this. Pull you guys into line. Uh, members, uh, I think I've got Councillor Sims. There we go. Now, Councillor Sims, you've already spoken, so that would I'm be. I'm speaking a... on the amendment, Lord Mayor. Ah, lovely. Okay. Thank you. Uh, look, um, Lord Mayor, once again, I've been caught um, unawares by uh, Councillor Hyde's amendment here. And, you know, I really would have loved a phone call before the meeting or for this to have been emailed around to uh, council members before the meeting. You know, Councillor Hyde, I don't buy it. Um, I'm always happy to talk on the phone. Um, so feel free to give me a call. Maybe we could have worked something out. The reality is this doesn't go um, as far as I would have liked. It keeps Democles' sword hanging over the parklands. And what I'm wanting to do is finally take away this threat of uh, a corporate seizure of our public space by making it very clear that the parklands are not for sale, that the parklands are not open for business and not open for bids from private corporations behind closed doors. That's what I'm seeking to do by carving them out of the unsolicited bids process. And whilst a suspension is welcome, I want to go for the whole hog. I want to end this uh, debate for our community and this uncertainty for our community. And um, so I'll be supporting the original motion um, rather than this amendment because I want to try and get that through. And I'd urge people to support my original um, proposal. I do just want to um, briefly address uh, comments made by Councillor uh, Kira, Lord Mayor. Um, his comments are a complete mischaracterisation of what this motion is about. It is insulting in the extreme to imply to somehow try to seize on the misfortune of the Adelaide Crows. I certainly do not welcome the situation that they face at all. Um, and I think it's a very disappointing thing that they're facing um, financial difficulties at this time. I, I regret that. There has been a lot of community concern about the Crows proposal, and I've been raising the alarm on this for months and months and months, raising the issues about the process. And the reason why I'm putting this forward now is to provide security to our community, certainty to our community, so that they know that these kind of proposals won't be coming um, in the future. Um, because there has been so much angst in our community about this. So I'm trying to provide certainty to the community. It's not the case that I'm behaving in some sort of cynical way. And I think that's an unfortunate characterisation. Thank you. I have Councillor Canole. Councillor Canole. I mean, the entire process we've talked about here is that we want the opportunity to fix it up by again wanting either a yes or no vote or a straight out uh, that you know you're trying to remove it without actually considering the implications of what the actions are before you make those uh, strong uh, strong uh, judgments or strong decisions we want to have the opportunity to change it to uh, address it and and consider all the other implications that at this moment in time we don't think of particularly not what at 12 o'clock at night um, and so that's what, the, uh, what I am waiting for. And you are wishing to take away my opportunity to be able to be in a considered way to change this so that we are going to deliver uh, the, the, what the community expects. But first we have the opportunity to speak about it 
And that's why the workshop is organized, what we're all waiting for, obviously some of us are, and let's, let's go to that. Out of that, let us have a conversation so that we have considered the things we don't want to have, the unintended consequences of, oh, we didn't think of that. Well, rushing through all the time doesn't give you that. And I'd really wait uh, until we got this, then we can come out the other side and then you can say whatever you like about whatever my decision is going to be. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Knoll. Uh, if there are no other speakers, I will go to the Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, uh, thanks, Lord Mayor. This, this was my attempt, um, although I uh, acknowledge the radio silence, but this was my attempt to try and make this a workable solution to the most amount of people. Um, uh, I, think, I think there is an opportunity here for us to ensure that if we keep assuming this is successful um, that we do have a, a more thorough uh, and different process that pays tribute um, uh, to the nature the the very unique nature um, of the parklands um, and in the public's um, psyche and as it is public land we can put particular provisions around it um, uh, but look you know I'm in, I'm in the hands of members not least of all because I think based on Councillor Kira's contribution, he's going to vote against this. Um, uh, if if Councillor Sims and Moran and Martin, perhaps Councillor Donovan vote against it as well, um, it will fail, um, at which point we'll go back to the original motion, which will definitely fail. We'll just be back at square one, which is actually the previous motion that I was referring to earlier, which is actually that we send the unsolicited proposal policy to a workshop anyway. Um, uh, but it actually ignores point three in this one, which is that we suspend the current policy so as to make a very clear message that this policy is inadequate currently and we are going to revisit it and we are going to make it better and address some of the community's concerns. So, look, um, I'm not fussed. If this amendment fails, the whole thing fails and we're back to square one. I just urge you to consider the pragmatic um, uh, nature of that, but, you know, swings and roundabouts. Thank you, members. I'm going to go to the vote uh, for the amendment before you. Uh, if I can have a, row, a show of hands, those in favour? And those against? That is lost. Oh, sorry. Sorry, yeah, sorry, my apologies. Hang on, who's, who's disappeared? Sorry, we've just lost Councillor Kira off the line. Okay, he's just fallen off his... Um, Oh, so his laptop has just, he has, uh, Councillor Kerr has just asked me to wait for a moment. His laptop has just died. He's just uh, uh, calling back in. <laughs> Sorry, members, I'm going to be a moment. Let me just double check. I'll just ask. Yeah, I, I understand that. Uh, yeah, I know. Members, I'm going to proceed because, because. Uh, I can't get Jesse to see whether he's calling back in. So his laptop has zunk. So members, I'll go to the vote again. Uh, those in favour of the amendment, which, so those in favour of the amendment. One, two, five. Those against. 
Okay, so that's carried. That's carried. Okay. Um, Councillor Martin, let me guess. Let me guess. Division. Division. <laughs> yeah, I feel you're having Council, fun. Council members, a division has been called on the amendment. When I call out your name, please state whether you are for or against. <laughs> Councillor Moran. Councillor Brand. Again. Thank you. <laughs> Councillor Abraham today. Four. Councillor Ho. Four. Councillor Kira. No, oh, of course he's not there, sorry. Deputy Lord Mayor. Hi. Councillor Donovan. Again. Councillor Kuros. <laughs> Councillor Martin. Again. He's going on. <laughs> Councillor Canole. And Councillor Sims. Okay, who's got the party? <laughs> I'm just letting. Can you hear it? Can you mute? Why is that so soft? Sorry, guys. Uh, that then becomes a substantive. I'll go back. If no one else wishes to speak, I'll go back to Councillor Sims to sum up. Members, you, if Lord not, Mayor. Councillor Sims. Yep. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, uh, obviously, this wasn't um, my uh, desired um, goal. However, I do recognise that a suspension is better than the status quo. And um, on that basis, I am happy to uh, support this motion and I encourage others to do the same. Um, and uh, I think this is a movement in the right direction in terms of us finally uh, freeing the parklands from the shackles of the unsolicited bids process. And this suspension would ensure that no private corporation is able to put in a proposal um, to seize our public space um, in the short term. And I think that's a good thing. So on that basis, I will be supporting the substantive, even though um, it doesn't go quite as far as I would have liked to have gone tonight. But I do recognise it's some movement and that's a good thing, Lord Mayor. Okay, thank you, Councillor Sims. Um, and we'll go to the vote, members, those in favour? Those against? So that's carried. Sorry, it's just um, Councillor Moran's hand disappears into the background. I couldn't, <laughs> it's sort of like partly there and partly not. It's very strange. Um, let us push on. We've got 11 point. 15.11, uh, Councillor Sims motion on NIDAS growing edible plants. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I move that Council request that administration investigate opportunities to increase local food security for our residents by planting seeds for fruit trees, vegetables and other edible plants in public gardens and parks as part of our response to the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, members, I look for a seconder. Councillor Moran seconded. Councillor Sims. Well, Thanks yours. very much. Thanks very much, Lord Mayor. This is a very straightforward um, motion, Lord Mayor. Um, obviously, during uh, these challenging times and, and during the, um, the pandemic, there has been an increased focus on self-sufficiency and uh, on food security. And that's happening within local communities right across the country and indeed the world. We're in a very fortunate position here in South Australia because we do have um, ongoing access to quality fruit and vegetables. Um, but of course, people want to be able to grow fruit and vegetables in their local patch, in their local community. Um, and for a lot of people living in the city of Adelaide, the parklands and uh, public gardens are their own garden. 
Um, there are a lot of people like myself that live in small apartments that don't have access to a garden where they can grow vegetables and fruit and the like. And so this is an opportunity for us to encourage that. Um, it is really good for mental health and building community cohesion to have people doing gardening at this time. Obviously, whilst complying with social distancing, um, if, uh, if the situation is, is ongoing. Um, but also uh, access to quality locally grown fruit and vegetables is always um, a good thing. I know num some members will ask, well, what are the details here? What kind of fruit and vegetables are we talking about? I've deliberately left it very open because um, I think that uh, I'd trust the advice of our administration in terms of identifying what might be appropriate in terms of water use and so on. And of course, we'd need to work in close partnership with our community. The feedback I've had since I put this idea out there has been very positive so far, Lord Mayor, and I think um, the community would really That's get behind right. it. It has been um, rolled out in other councils around the world. Um, I know uh, in the province of Victoria, in Canada, for instance, they're looking at this in recognition of some of the challenges that they're facing in their local community and around wanting to improve access to quality uh, fruit and vegetables and herbs and the like. And that's what I'm proposing here. I think it would be um, an exciting uh, opportunity for the council. Um, the parklands have never been more important than they are now to the health and well-being of our community. And uh, I think this motion would only strengthen that. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak? Uh, yes, I think this is a lovely um, motion. We've done that in some suburbs before, down in uh, Parade. We've put um, vegetable gardens. So it is something that Council's already done. Um, I'm not sure it has anything to do with the coronavirus pandemic, but it is um, a, a very good initiative and I support Rob on this. Thank you. Thank you. I have Councillor Kira. Oh, look, uh, thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, um, I can only just, I, look, I'll, I'll describe this charitably, charitably as a Kath and Kim motion. Uh, look at me, look at me, look at me. Councillor, um, this, this speak to the and motion. motion. This no, is, it's speak to the this, motion. This is a Kath and Kim motion. This is a look at me motion. Uh, the words Councillor Sims has used in the description of his motion are uh, that this uh, ought to be done for food security. Food security. Food security, to provide food security for the, for, 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 for the citizens of Adelaide, even for uh, the residents and ratepayers, uh, you would need acres and acres of, of farmland. That is the only way, that is the current way that food security is provided. That is the only way that food security is provided. Um, it's an absolute ridiculous joke. It is a, it's an absolute, it makes an absolute mockery of the reality of, of food and food security. Uh, the current situation, uh, food security is not actually uh, the current problem in Australia because we are blessed uh, with, um, with incredible resources when it comes to farmland. Um, the problems uh, are much more manifold than that. Um, I would suggest to councillors, do not indulge this um, because uh, you know, all you'll end up doing is causing, again, unnecessary bureaucratic churn at a time when we do not need this. Uh, you'll be providing unnecessary bureaucratic churn and unnecessary waste of resources. Uh, the administration has already pointed out the ways in which there are already uh, some, uh, some herbs and vegetables and whatnot provided uh, through, um, on, uh, you know, through the, through the um, resources available through the City Council, but those resources are extremely limited. What our ratepayers want us to do is to be sensible, uh, continue to provide a beautiful, uh, aesthetic surrounds and not to go silly and not to go daffy uh, in the name of this uh, in the name of this um, uh, current virus and crisis so look don't don't indulge this look at me look at me look at me. councillor Kira councillor Kuros um, I when councillor Sims first um, told me of this idea of this motion, I thought, yep, yeah, sounds great. But in reading the administration comment, we actually do quite a bit of this already. We've got part 21, we've got part 27B, we've got 
a part 16, part 7, part 9. Um, so we currently have been um, having these gardens, community gardens, already on the parklands. Um, it's probably initiatives that have been brought through council right. over the time, which uh, which we've been, uh, which has been growing on. But it, it's the comments that um, administration have put in uh, into this motion and saying that um, that the, a lot of implications and barriers in regards to this in continu continuing this and uh, or in expanding on this and we've got environmental issues we've got ongoing maintenance of the asset we've got uh, lack of information and clarity in regards to assisting community members and how to progress their ideas funding options um, a difficulty for the community negotiating and securing tenure. I mean, there, there seems to be something that's been ongoing um, with administration and working with uh, the community to have these gardens out there. And although um, I don't think, as uh, Councillor Moran pointed out, it's got anything to do with the COVID um, crisis at the moment. Um, I mean, unless we're growing toilet paper, but there isn't anything to say that we are in shortage of food at the moment. But um, I'm just thinking, I just have a question to administration. I mean, is, it, I mean, is there, um, is this going to, if we uh, vote for this now, is this going to impose problems? Because we have cut back on staff and we're currently already doing that. We currently have got existing gardens. Is this going to put more pressure on administration in, to, with this motion? to implement more? Mm. Yes, yeah, really, I might get Clinton to help us out mm. with this. Um, but yes, any, any additional requirement will be, um, will be requiring additional work, no doubt about it. But um, the extent of that, I might get um, Clinton to mention. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Clinton, are you there? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, you mute, um, just my unmute has stopped working. Oh, thank you, three Lord Mayor. Um, <clears throat> it probably depends on the timing, um, Councillor, as to whether it would, would require any additional resourcing. Uh, I think in our response, we've tried to just outline the current programs that are in play at the moment. And um, should the motion get up and be successful, we've offered to um, investigate further opportunities within our current council programs and projects. So as long as we're working within the current boundaries of what we have, I wouldn't think that too many additional resources would be required. If we were looking at additional projects or programs um, to implement, then yes, we would require additional um, budget and resources to do so. Then, I, um, then my question is to the mover, is he looking to have additional gardens? Or are we looking at just maintaining or maybe adding to the gardens that we have? Well, um, if Councillor Kouros um, looks at the motion um, carefully, she'll see that I've said request administration investigate opportunities. So and so if they can, yeah, yeah, they can expand what they're already doing, that's great. I mean, of course, there may be the some opportunities. Parklands. Well, there may be opportunities to do new work, but if they can also expand on what they're already doing, then that's great. A lot of that will depend on budget and so on. I mean, this is really just an initial piece of work in terms of let's look at some of the opportunities. Okay. All right, in, in, in light of that, I mean, I just think we're already doing a lot of work at the moment. We're, we're currently uh, exhausted our staff resources. I don't want to add any more elements to, to uh, what we currently do have at the moment. Um, I don't mind if he brings us back in after the crisis and you know obviously I'll, I'll vote for it then but just right at this moment um, I just don't think that it's something that we should put pressure on admin for. Uh, thank you I have Councillor Martin who has also disappeared from my screen. I'm here. Councillor Martin. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry Councillor I was Martin. just I'm sorry Lord Mayor I was just relaxing we've been uh, seated for seven going on eight hours that's all. Um, uh, look, I don't, I don't understand the problem. Um, the motion proposes simply to investigate opportunities. Uh, and the investigation may say that the existing opportunities are fine. Or it may say, we've always thought this would be a good approach or that would be a good approach. The extraordinary thing is that we're all arguing about a principle that's already been well established. There are fruit and vegetable opportunities throughout the parklands. The principle is established. It's working well in Park 9. 
as Councillor Kouros knows, um, as a uh, regular visitor to North Adelaide. It's working uh, in the South Park lands. It's working all over the city. And it's been going on for a very long time. In fact, a ratepayer rang me today to say, you should uh, support this motion. Um, I worked on a similar proposal in Hutt Street with Monsignor Capo. Monsignor Capo, now there's a name from the past, 20 years ago. So this is not new. The council is simply asking for an investigation. The tragedy in all this is that whenever anything is proposed by Sims, Martin or Moran, we have to find excuses to knock it back, to knock it on the head. And in a very, very rare circumstance, something is, uh, is approved. This won't be. Uh, I'm sure it won't be. But look, I'll vote for it, Rob. I'll vote for it. I think it's a sensible idea. Thank you, members. If there's no more speakers, I'll go back to the mover to sum up. Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I'm, I'm a bit um, not surprised by um, the antagonism towards this idea, but disappointed because um, I don't think it's it's that radical a suggestion. It's it's not like I'm proposing you know sending rockets off to Mars or something like that. It's it, you know putting a few seeds in the ground and growing um, some fruit and vegetables, which we have been doing before in the city of Adelaide, but it's looking at what we can do to beef that up. Nor am I, of course, suggesting that this is uh, something that is going to solve um, the uh, South Australia's food supply into the future or the city of Adelaide. My motion says, in, uh, looks at the opportunity to increase local food security. And indeed, this would increase local food security, Lord Mayor, because it would ensure that there is uh, food being grown on our local patch. The point that I was trying to make earlier is that lots of members of the community are concerned about wanting to see local food production at this time and wanting to move towards self-sustainability uh, and sufficiency because of the coronavirus pandemic. And I think that's totally understandable. And so lots of councils around the world are looking at what they can do to try and improve local food production as communities deal with the long-term consequences of this kind of health threat. I don't think that's a radical or a nutty idea. Um, Councillor Kira talks about look at me politics. He should know, um, but that's certainly not what this is, nor is it do nothing politics, which is the brand of politics that Councillor Kira specialises in. Do nothing other than criticise others. Councillor Sims, please, you are so you're summing up on your motion. What this is, Lord Mayor, is simply a suggestion for something we could look at. And I'd encourage people to have an open mind and um, to look at this as simply an opportunity. Um, the motion talks about it in uh, those terms. It's certainly not going to do any harm to look at what we can do to uh, plant some fruit and veg in our public gardens and parklands. Members, we will go to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is lost. Sorry? Councillor Sims. Councillor Sims. A division, Lord Mayor. <laughs> Councillors, the division has been called on the motion. I'll read out your name and please state whether you're in support or against the motion. Councillor Moran? Um, I'm going to motion. Before the motion, sorry. <laughs> Councillor Abraham today? Against. Councillor Ho? Again, this. Councillor Kira? Against. against. Deputy Lord Mayor? Against. Hey, Councillor Donovan. Oh. Councillor Kuros. Councillor Martin. Sorry, is somebody talking to me? Who? What's that? Councillor Martin, are you for or against the motion? Well, I, somebody keeps interrupting. Can, can everybody else hear that? Just reply. It's interference. Don't worry about it. Oh, right. Okay. Um, well, I'm voting for it. Councillor Canal? Against. And Councillor Sims? For. Thank you. 
Right. Members. Yeah, we, I don't think we can. Councillor Donovan. Lord Mayor, it is now after midnight and at the current rate, we won't get through even the remaining uh, motions on notice before well after 1 a.m. Um, I'd like to propose that we uh, defer the remainder of the items on tonight's agenda to a special meeting of council date and time at the discretion of the CEO, possibly next Tuesday um, when we have a, a committee meeting, but I think no one's making well thought through decisions at 20 past midnight. Uh, before we go uh, to that any further, and uh, I, we are all tired, Councillor Donovan, I can tell you it's very taxing to be running a meeting by Zoom. Sure, sure. Um, there, there's, uh, there is one decision that does need to be made tonight, and that is the Telstra Smart Hub telephones decision that needs to be made before we can finish uh, doing any of the rest of the work this evening. I will actually first go uh, look for a seconder for that motion and go to the vote. Sorry? It's a motion to adjourn. Oh, okay. So I can't go to the motion to adjourn if we have to do that piece of work. So with the leave of the meeting, I will go into confidence to deal with 18.2.1, which is the Telstra Smart Hub telephones. So I need a, a mover to go into confidence. Thank you, Councillor Donovan and the seconder. I've got Councillor Moran's there. So that's to go into confidence. Uh, so members, just a reminder, because we are on Zoom, that if you're in confidence that uh, uh, other people that might be in your close surrounds shouldn't be able to access or hear the conversations. Um, members, I will go to uh, 18 point two. So we have to break the vote and go into confidence. Yeah, we did. Oh, sorry, we didn't have the vote. No, we didn't. We actually had a mover and a seconder. Uh, did anyone wish to speak to going into confidence? I've got a few hands up, but I think that's for other things. So I'm um, unmute, unmuting Councillor Kouros. I'm sorry, are we not doing the, all the other motions? Are we going straight to the, um, uh, the item 18.2.1 or? If, before I accept a motion to adjourn. Right. I want to do the the piece of work on the Telstra Smart Hubs telephones, which we need a decision tonight. And then we will go back to uh, the motions. I think there's three motions left and uh, three other. Um, two other. There's two other uh, ones in confidence. There's three three other ones in confidence, and. Um, so we've got the report of the confidential um, report of the audit committee, the yep. Benighton Park kiosk and strategic okay. property review. So we can decide as a council whether we want to continue, but I'd like to get this piece of work before we make that decision. Because if we make a decision to defer, then I can't actually do that piece of work. Does that make sense? Yep, okay. Yep, thank you. Um, Councillor Moran. Oh, sorry, what do we do now, Sandy? Um, so um, I want to go into confidence so that we can actually make the decision on the Telstra Smart Hubs telephones, and then I'll uh, take Councillor Donovan's motion to defer. Oh, okay, because we must be contravening every health and safety um, of our staff, let alone us. Uh, I don't think we are. We're just all getting very tired. So I know there are other councils that um, meet till this time and later. And um, part of it is because the agenda is completely loaded with motions on notice. Um, normally, as you would remember, in our last term of council, we might have had, you know, maybe two or three at each council member, not not 14. So that's what's taking time. Ridiculous. And you actually, the team Adelaide did not support breaking... Order. Um, so, Lord Mayor, so I'm not, no, I'm not having any... Can we have a debate about everybody, please? Oh, I'm not debating do. this. Thank you. Um, I am actually going to ask for 
uh, a vote on going into confidence that was moved by Councillor Donovan and seconded by Councillor Moran. Uh, members, if I can see a show of hands, if you're happy to go into confidence. Thank you, Councillor Martin. I can't see your hand. I would assume you're voting against it. Councillor Moran, you've disappeared from my screen as well. Okay. Uh, do I need another seconder then? Okay. So uh, those against? Going into confidence? Thank you. That is carried. We're in confidence.
So Donovan just got a hand up. Councillor Donovan. Just to restate my adjoint, my motion to adjourn. I certainly do not want to continue any further. It's almost oh. 1 a.m. And we know based on the, the current pattern that each one of those motions on notice will take at least 20 minutes. There's no way I want to be here at two o'clock in the morning. Sorry. What did you just... Just state the reopening the meeting. Oh. We were in conference. So, so am I streaming. stating it just for streaming? Just for oh, sorry. Okay. For the sake of the record and for streaming, we have reopened the meeting from confidence. Uh, Councillor Donovan, I will ask you therefore to uh, move your motion. I move that we adjourn tonight's meeting and uh, continue the remainder of the content uh, at a special meeting of council at a date and time uh, to be decided by the CEO, possibly next Tuesday, um, but uh, to be decided. Okay, I look for a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Uh, does anybody want to speak to it? If not, sorry, I've got, I'm not sure if they're hands up to vote or hands up to speak. So, Councillor formal motion to yeah. any discussion can be that um, when we're going to meet again. So can't, they can't the vote. They basically just got to vote on. Did you hear that? I'm sorry, people. Did you just hear that advice? Jenny, can you just speak sorry. to the meeting rather than... So I'm just letting you know it's a formal motion to adjourn. So the only debate can be to when and what time, not to the merits of the formal motion. And then we need to go to the vote straight away. So I'm taking all of your hands down. Uh, so any debate on the when? If not, now, Councillor Martin, you've got your hand up. Um, yes. Um, uh, I'm assuming that the motion of Councillor Donovan's is open, that is to say at a date and time to be determined by the Chief Executive. And Correct. I am I am happy with that, uh, and I note that we are already scheduled to meet tomorrow at 5.30, mm -hmm. and there is, there is no impediment to our resuming to discuss the remainder of these items and the matters which the CEO uh, wants to discuss with us, including briefings about uh, workforce, workforce and uh, matters related to COVID-19. But I am happy to leave it to the discretion of the CEO uh, knowing that he will schedule it at the earliest opportunity and knowing also that none of the matters, as far as I can tell, uh, that are before us and that remain are time sensitive. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Moran, uh, did yes. you wish to speak to timing? I do. I wish that meeting continue tonight. I moved a motion that we uh, meet fortnightly. Uh, the, uh, the majority against that. This is what it means, vote a meeting once a month. And Sorry, I Councillor Moran, we're not debating that. We're just debating. The only thing you can talk about is the timing of the meeting. Okay, well, I want this meeting to continue tonight. This is what one meeting a okay. month. Okay, thank you. Uh, members, I am going to, if there's no other speakers, I'm going to go to the vote. Uh, members, by uh, raising your hand, those in favour of adjourning? Three. Those against adjourning and continuing the meeting? Okay, members, we continue. So that takes us to 15.12, uh, Council Member Renumeration, Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, based on the conversation earlier today, I was wondering if there would be a variation that's accepted. It doesn't change the intent whatsoever. Um, it, just, it just clarifies um, and expands on it. So it's the insertion of the word uh, voluntary. Um, we just, we'll just bring that up, um, sorry. Yeah, I'm just Deputy Lord Mayor. Myself. Anyway, if you'd like to speak to it, I think... Yeah, so it's just the insertion of the word, uh, request all elected members take a voluntary 20% reduction. 
Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, sorry, I think Jenny had the wording up earlier, which is a little bit more involved. Um, uh, but it would uh, basically just encourage the CEO um, to consider the executive and administration uh, taking similar reductions um, was the effective okay. was the effective wording. And I think that's pretty much exactly what it was. How are we going, ladies? Is that coming up? I do have the exact wording here of three. It would be encourages the CEO to consider, consider similar reductions for the executive and administration. Okay, so it's just encouraging the CEO. Yeah, so it's merely to, a clarification of um, yep. uh, what we what we can and can't do um, legally and, mm -hmm. and with regards to our role, okay. if that's acceptable to so you. So request uh, all of that a voluntary twenty percent reduction. Um, thank you. I'll look for a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today. Uh, Thanks, thank I'll, um, I'll keep this brief. Um, obviously, we're in very tough times and everyone should be tightening their belt. Um, that includes us. And while I acknowledge that um, this is really a drop in the ocean with regards to our budget overall, um, it's an important thing uh, to do with leadership, I think. Um, if we send this message and say that, look, even though we get remunerated fairly poorly considering the work that we do and the work that we're doing right now, um, uh, we are uh, leading, uh, we are uh, tightening our belt and we're encouraging our executive team um, to do the same through the CEO. Um, uh, it's about making sure that the city uh, has enough to continue on in the future. We know that and we'll hear tomorrow, I anticipate, that we'll need to do a lot of pushing and pulling with our budgets and our numbers and massaging to and fro and what have you, just to make sure we break even or at least um, only have a debt that is manageable um, and that we're not practically insolvent. So um, uh, that's, that's what we'll be doing. I think this is an important measure to show our staff and the community that um, we understand that they're hurting um, and we're, we're doing our bit as well. Okay, Councillor Abraham Zadeh, did you wish to speak to it? One minute. Uh, you're unmuted. Just, just, just very quickly, Lord Mayor, I uh, commend Deputy Lord Mayor for bringing this to the chamber. This is what leadership looks like, and I urge members to support this. Thank you, uh, Councillor Martin. Did you wish to speak? Um, yes, Lord Mayor, I wish to propose uh, an amendment. Far away. Um, one as is, um, two um, requests all elected members to take a voluntary 20% reduction in their allowances. Can we make that read for the next three months, comma, requests all elected members to take a voluntary 20% reduction in their allowances and board and authority no. fees. Oh, sorry. I think the comma is after three months. Yep. Yep. For the next three months, comma requests all elected members to take a voluntary 20% reduction in their allowances for the next three months. Uh, sorry, lose. Uh, sorry, I'm, uh, I'm stumbling. Ooh. For the next three months, comma requests all elected members take a voluntary 20% reduction in their allowances and board and authority fees, brackets, donating this amount or donate, donating the latter amount, donating the latter amount to the registered charity of their choice where it is not possible to return remuneration. Close brackets, full stop. Uh, can I just, the latter amount being talking to the board and authority phase, is that what you're trying to achieve? Yes. 
Cancel. Yes, yeah, that, okay. uh, that's the latter amount. Just yep. making sure we got that. Yep. Yep. Is that it for the changes? Oh, uh, and for um, uh, requests, the CEO to encourage the executive and administration and seeing as we're making it voluntary for councillors, we should make it voluntary for the administration to voluntarily consider a 20% reduction in their salaries. So I can see Councillor Sims, are you seconding that Sorry, just, just a moment, I'll just unmute you. Are you seconding? I am, but I do wonder whether we could take out and administration, um, because I do think there's a bit of a distinction in my mind between uh, executive that are at a more senior level versus those who are at more junior level within the uh, organisation and staffing. And I worry that administration captures the whole shebang, people that may be on very low um, incomes it within does. the organisation. Oh well, I'm happy. I'm happy to accommodate uh, that variation. So, did you get did you get all that, Carmen? Yes. Okay. So, Councillor Martin, you may speak to it. Uh, thank you. Um, look, I, I would say to my colleagues, um, this is what leadership looks like. This is leadership. Um, many of the elected members. Uh, our councillors are often paid um, handsome fees for sitting on boards and authorities, uh, which augments uh, their um, allowances for the city. And some of those sitting fees can be close to $1,000 a meeting. Um, that is true, getting close to $1,000. Now, um, this, uh, this sitting fee uh, for boards and organisations is an impost on the operations of the city. And I'm thinking of uh, our Central Market Authority as an example um, uh, to which we've thrown a lifeline by saying, well, look, you don't have to charge rent to people there and therefore your obligations are reduced. Um, and we're saying to the Rundle Mall Management Authority, um, we're throwing you a lifeline as well. You know, we're not going to collect the levy. Um, uh, and yet, um, the councillors who sit on those authorities would continue to receive their sitting fees every month. The cheque would keep rolling in. And, and it's the same for external boards, like the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the Festival Centre Trust, which um, is but one of many. Um, um, there are just so many of them. The DLM would know all about them because he sits on many of them. Now, it would be disingenuous, in my view, to say, oh, look, I'm going to wear a, a, a reduction over the, the next three months of, say, $1,200, while at the same time accepting three, four, five, six thousand dollars $6,000 unchanged from other authorities, like the Rundle Wall Management Authority, like ACMA, like the Festival Centre Trust, or even our own Adelaide Parklands Authority, or CAP. CAP, to which um, uh, Councillor Abrahimza Day has been recently elected. Uh, so can I say, let's not be disingenuous. Let's be straight with the voters. If you're going to make a gesture of sacrifice, then you sacrifice. You don't do a sleight of hand and say, I'm going to give up, you know, $1,200 and not mention that you're taking a large sum from other organisations. That would be a hollow gesture. It would be disingenuous in the extreme. So, Deputy Lord Mayor, step up to the plate. Oh, Councillor Sims, did you wish to speak? Thank you, Lord Mayor. I uh, support um, this amendment. I think um, it's important that we, uh, as elected members, are uh, seen to be uh, leading the way when it comes to these kind of reductions. And if we're going to ask um, our executive to consider these sorts of changes, then we need to do it ourselves. And I guess my view is that in fairness, um, this should take into account the totality of an elected um, member's allowances. And that for me includes um, the remuneration that they receive um, from boards and committees. 
Now, um, obviously, it's not a, a mandated thing. They're only being encouraged to do so. But um, I think, in fairness, if it's going to be applied to um, elected member allowances, then it should be applied to um, board uh, and authority allowances as well. And we know that a lot of these boards and authorities are going to be in very difficult financial circumstances, like the Rundle Mall um, Management Authority, like the Central Market um, Authority, uh, even the um, Adelaide Parklands um, Authority, all of these are facing challenging financial circumstances. And so in the spirit um, in which Councillor Hyde has proposed this, um, then I think this is a, um, a sensible um, amendment. Um, it would have been good to, of course, seen this um, earlier, but um, certainly I think this amendment has been offered in the same spirit as um, many of the other amendments we have seen this evening. I have Councillor Moran. And I would like um, the, because it's not mandated, I would like uh, it made public who has reduced their remuneration by 20%. Uh, it, did you want that to be uh, put into the motion? Uh, well, I would like it. How can I do that? Well, because otherwise it's not, it's not a, motion of council it's just a you might like it but nobody has to do it uh, an amendment i think i think if you're going to do it you make that public if you're going to make it i've just got a uh, jenny trying to say something i'll just pop her on uh, council moran that would have to be a variation to the amendment from that would require the um, approval of Councillor Martin and Councillor Sims. And well, I could ask or, Sims. sorry, what was that? Uh, I gave yeah. her our or, sorry, my apologies, or we wait till we've dealt with this and then we can deal with that as a separate amendment. Well, could I ask you that is our remuneration, is that on the public record? Yes, it is. So. It's on the public record anyway. But uh, the, the thing is that uh, because it's the tribunal that sets the fees, we would still have to accept the fees and then uh, give them back. That You can't actually sort of part take your fees. So it would still be there on your um, members' benefits as having been received. But could it also be there that you've given 20% of your remuneration to a charity? I don't think that we do that because none of my donations are on my register. So, um, you know, uh, as Councillor Martin's, picked, you know, nom nominated a few of the boards that I'm on and I donate all my fees back. So that's not on the register. It just says what my benefits are. Okay. Uh, Councillor... Abraham today, you were sh waving at me, so I'll just, I do actually have some other speakers. Was it just to speak? I, I just wanted, uh, um, uh, it was a point of clarification that everything is on public record and, and yes, we do have to get that amount paid. So what we do with that amount is our own business. So um, I just wanted to clarify that. Yeah, thank you. Um, I have uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, then Councillor Kouros. Deputy Lord yeah. Mayor. Um, uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. It's it's nice to be lectured uh, about leadership from from Councillor Martin as he attempts to hijack my motion. Um, uh, I would just say that obviously this is about sending a message, um, uh, and uh, look, it, it's a very strong message that I think it does send. Um, do I think board and authorities should be included in it? Um, look, there's an argument to do that. Do I think we should be donating the latter amount to the registered charity? Absolutely not. The whole point that you wouldn't take it is so that you can return that money to the coffers of the affected organisation. Um, uh, so look, uh, I'll leave that one to members, although I would highlight it's, it's, it's funny that, um, uh, uh, that council members would talk about that. The board and authority fees are actually for uh, extra work that you do above and beyond. Um, uh, so I would, just, I would just highlight that, whereas the councillor allowance is actually just tied to to being a councillor and it's not actually um, uh, considered a wage or, or, or it's more of an honorary in itself. Uh, but look, it was just a message to send a message to our staff to say that we understand that they're, that they're feeling pain as well. 
Um, the reason I wanted to highlight that it's voluntary is because some people might be able to afford to take this hit, others, others might not be able to. Um, and so I'll leave it to each individual counsellor to work out regarding their personal circumstances, whether or not they can afford it. But um, uh, it's very clear that we as a council um, wish to do this. Thank you. I have Councillor Kouros. Um, thanks, Lord Mayor. While um, it uh, wasn't our intent in becoming, in, in running for it to be an elected member for the remuneration, but, you know, um, I don't think administration should be dragged into this. I don't think we should. I think I'm just wondering if we can remove point three entirely and make this just about politically what you guys want to make it about. I really don't care. Um, you know, it's ridiculous. This is, this is just, you know, hijacking motions, crying about it and doing the same, you know, whatever. You guys are playing games. But I just don't think that administration should be in play here. I think they should be removed. And uh, I'm just wondering if you guys would consider that. I don't know who needs to consider it. I've lost who changed, who did Sorry, what. I, I have to go back to Councillor Martin to see if he'll consider removing uh, point three. Um, Lord Mayor, I have removed it. If Councillor Kouros looks at her screen, she'll see the words and administration struck out. So it applies to the executive. I mean the executive team as well. I just think that that needs to be removed entirely. I just I just think it's it just I don't, I'm not I don't want this to continue. If you want to, uh, uh, I think Councillor um, uh, Hyde wanted to send a message, if and make it. Uh, uh, about something else, you guys have made it into something else. I just think we don't need to bring in the executive team into this, or administration, or anyone. Just remove it. If if we want to um, take a twenty percent off or, or take a donate it, it's up to us. Uh, it's not okay. About members, uh, it's not about staff or executive team or anyone else. Well, Lord Mayor, um, uh, uh, before I can consider the proposal that I vary this, can I ask my seconder whether he would accept that? I can see. It's Councillor no, Sam? I, I'm sorry, I'm not comfortable with that, simply because I think the intention behind um, this uh, motion was to... Um, yeah, sorry, no, it's just a yes or no, well, no Councillor Sam. No, I'm not happy with that. Thank you. Uh, there you go, Councillor Martin. If your uh, second is not happy with it, then... Then that's the end of the matter. Right. Councillor Corus, did you wish to you speak to me? Now there, uh, Councillor Martin, you can make that choice. But anyway, um, that was... I'm uh, just requesting that, so fine. Not Thank you. Uh, members, if there's no one else that wishes to speak, I'll go back to Councillor Martin to sum up. A question first, Lord Mayor. Mm -hmm. um, Councillor Kouros says I can make the choice to remove the uh, point three without the approval of my seconder. Is that the case? Uh, you can't without the seconder. Oh, if the seconder withdraws his seconding, you can get a second, another seconder. Oh, I see. Okay. And then, then of course, I'd have to put the whole thing up again. Um, no, look, you Lord, just need another seconder. Look, Lord Mayor. Um, Someone who hasn't spoken. That, that would be the way that you would do it. I understand that. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, look, uh, I, I am um, sorry that uh, uh, people are so conflicted about what was a clear message that we were sending to the community that we understood financial pain and we were prepared to bear some of the burden. And now we've had these mealy-mouthed responses about all uh, boards and authorities at work, council is not, um, that's not appropriate. Um, I don't wish to include the executive. Um, we are talking about a very small number of people. And in all cases, we're talking about a voluntary reduction. The word voluntary is there in paragraphs two and three. And it is about leadership. If you say, I want to set an example, and then you qualify it and say, but it doesn't apply to this and I'm quarantining that. And that's an appropriate word in these circumstances. I'm quarantining this part of my income and that part, and it's only going to apply to this bit. Then the message is very clear. You lack commitment. You lack courage. 
It is disingenuous. Now, I ask everyone to support this. It is very clear you are agreeing to take a 20% reduction in your allowances and board and authority fees. You can, you can donate them to the charity of your choice if, as the motion says, it is not possible to return the remuneration. You can return it or you can give it to a charity. It's very clear. And all of these excuses, these excuses I'm hearing from people about why they can't provide leadership are just frankly disheartening. Um, members, do support this. Everyone can see what you're doing. We know whether you'll support this or not. Vote for it. I'll, I'll put my mic on. Uh, members, uh, those in favour of the amendment, please raise your hand. Those against, please raise your hand. That is lost. That takes us back to the uh, original motion. Yes, I can see you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Martin? Division, Cal please, Lord Mayor. Councillors, the division has been called on the amendment. Would, I'll read out your name and please state whether you're for or against it. Councillor Moran? For. Councillor Abraham today? Against. Councillor Ho? Against. Councillor Kira? Against. Deputy Lord Mayor? Nay. Councillor Donovan? It's not here. Councillor Kuros? Yes. Councillor Martin? In sincerity shines. I'm against. I'm for. For. It's one thirty in the morning. Sorry. It's one thirty in the morning. And Councillor Canole. Again. Councillor Sims. Four. Are you sure? <laughs> How do we end up? The amendment so it goes back to the original. Which we have on the screen. My... Sorry, I'm just going to unfortunately mute you. Excellent. Sorry, that was a terrible echo. Uh, so we go back to the original um, motion, which is. Uh, so I thought, I thought the original one that I've got said it encourages rather than requests. So Deputy Lord Mayor, mm. can I just check whether the point three was to say um, yeah, it encourage? Was. It, yeah. it, was, it was meant to start with encourage. Right. So, so we'll just update that. Okay. So that was the change, was voluntary and encourages. Sorry, I've got different versions in front of me. Um, okay, so I'll go back to anybody who would like to speak. That's I've fine. got Councillor Sims. Would you like to speak? Thanks, Lord Mayor. Can, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, thank you. Um, look, uh, Lord Mayor, I must admit I'm a bit conflicted about um, the uh, substantive motion. And my main reason for that is because of the inclusion of administration, which means that we're asking um, all uh, staff members of the organisation to uh, consider cutting their pay. Um, and, you know, that there are people in our organisation that earn um, quite small amounts of money and, and people on quite low incomes. And um, I worry about asking them to take a um, reduction. Um, I think it would have been more reasonable to ask um, our senior executive to do that um, because uh, they are on higher salaries. Um, so I'm, I feel disappointed about how this whole issue has been handled, to be honest. It would have been my preference for us to be able to uh, talk this through behind the scenes. Sorry, sorry. I'm so sorry, Councillor Sims. Um, you seconded the amendment, so therefore I'm being told by Jenny that you can't talk to this one. Oh. Councillor Martin, Councillor Sims can't. So Councillor Martin and Councillor Sims can't talk. 
Oh. Um, apologies. Uh, so that being said, uh, it, would anybody else like to speak to the motion before them? No, sorry, Councillor Martin, I've been told you can't speak. You have a question? A question? Yes. Well, go on, ask the question. Oh, I can't, I can't see that you're talking to me, sorry. Um, uh, yes, the question is to the administration. Um, is the proposal to ask the administration, that is the staff, to accept a reduction of 20% in their salary likely to apply to the people who've also been asked to take two weeks leave along with two weeks paid leave? The motion, the, the motion before you is to asking the CEO to consider not to take anyway. So, well, I'm I'm CEO. asking for that guidance so I know how to vote. Um, through you, Lord Mayor, the um, the motion as it's put, uh, as it is at the moment, encourages me to consider similar reductions to the executive and the administration. So that would apply, to my view, to um, considering it for all staff. So it's, it's all encompassing. Um, but again, from what I can gather, that's on a voluntary basis. Uh, so uh, the CEO is reading into paragraph three that it would be a voluntary measure to um, accept a 20% reduction. Well, it says similar. No, 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 voluntary. Um, that, that's not in the paragraph, but I, I'm hearing the CEO saying he interprets it to mean voluntary. CEO? That's, that's how I had interpreted it, but I'm happy to be corrected. Okay. Uh, I have Councillor Kouros and then Councillor Moran. Councillor Kouros? I just have a question. Where, uh, where this motion is saying requesting all elected, all elected members to take a 20% or well, it's a voluntary 20% reduction. Yeah. We're not applying that 20% rule to ex executive and administration. That's really up to the discretion of the CEO and he will put forward to us a report in regards to this motion on what he believes or what his, what to, going forward in regards to the reductions for staff. So yeah. how I read it, it's not going. It's not twenty percent per se. It's not that amount. It could be similar. Similar. Yeah, can, through you, Lord, consider similar reductions is quite open-ended. Yeah, it is something that I'll have a conversation with the executive about, and okay. uh, we'll determine the best approach with the, both the executive and the administration. Generally. Okay, so this is very loosely based, isn't it? Uh, it, might be, yes. it? It seems to be very loosely based, and I don't think it's really as directive as what the previous motion was. So, okay, thank you for the clarification. I have Councillor Moran. Uh, Councillor Moran. Questions first. Does this include board appointments, external board appointments, which are highly paid? This, does that rule that out? Uh, yeah, that doesn't include it in this motion that's before you. I go along with the conflict of this too. I mean, uh, Team Adelaide has taken all the highly the revenues are on the base rate. Um, the CEO can do similar reductions. Um, all the private firms have paid the central workers. Sorry, Councillor Moran, you're breaking up again. I need you to move a little bit closer to your mic. A bit closer. Uh, when uh, in all the legal firms in Adelaide now, when they send their workers home to work at home, they accept twenty deductions because the space that working from home is quite as productive. Uh, I think for the councillors that are on just the back rate, which everybody that's not in Adelaide is on, is uh, a little bit unfair. And it's also it's very sort of. Um, Concern that wealthy people give the whole, you know, whole thing away. People that are living on it or making it break, and it's difficult, and that will make it look awful if you don't give up twenty percent. Um, our um, upper management is paid extremely well. Uh, by the sound of it, they're all 
home now, or most of them are. Um, so I think this is a loose, weak motion. Um, I don't, anything should be voluntary. I ask Leo to come back with what considering to reduce the pay of the, of the upper executive when they were at home. The external boards, which are very highly paid, um, should fit. For the base councillor like myself, Jim's councillor are on the very base rate. It's very unfair. It's an empty gesture. It's a silly gesture. And I think this almost is not worthy of being voted. Councillor Moran, I will have, no, that's it. I will go back to the Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. I'm at a bit of a loss, Lord Mayor. Um, look, just to clarify uh, with elected members, the reason the previous motion was voted down, at least on my part, or the amendment rather, was because, was because it excluded administration. The whole point of this is to provide leadership and for us to say, um, uh, this is the message that we're sending. Uh, because I can tell you now, if you want to put the strain on uh, uh, 12 councillors on, on minimum, minimum uh, remuneration and 14 members or 15 members of the executive team, um, uh, who, who of course are paid above average, yes, certainly, but they make up a tiny percentage of what the city of Adelaide takes it, as far as wages go. What we're saying is we can each take a little bit or we could potentially see uh, a massive change in how the city operates um, and for us to have to drastically change business as usual, at which point we will all lose out, our community will lose out, our ratepayers will lose out um, and many, many others. That's the, that's the question that we might have to grapple with um, and this is what that motion is about. Um, it is about leadership, it is about sending a message and that's why there was nothing firm in there we weren't directing the CEO um, to cut people back. We were outlining this as a potential option. And I've already spoken with some staff um, who are keen to do their part to see that the city continues. And that's because they love this city. They love the work that they do. Um, and they want to see us to continue to serve the community. We can't do that. We can't do that um, uh, if our balance sheet is ruined. We can't do that um, uh, if the money that's going out is way, way more than the money that's coming in. And that's the situation that my gut tells me we're in at the moment. But of course, we'll learn more about that in the coming days and weeks. Um, so I commend the motion to you. Um, it's about strong, decisive leadership in this time of need. Uh, members, I will ask you to go to the vote. Uh, members, by the raise of hands, please, those in favour. And those against? So, Councillor Martin, you can't actually vote twice? Yes, I can. Uh, no, you can't. So, which way would you like to vote? You voted for both of them. Councillor Martin, you can't vote twice. Uh, we will take the vote again, uh, members. Those four? And those against? So it's carried. Thank you. Uh, members, that takes us to 13.13, uh, Councillor Kouros, motion on culture. Councillor Kouros, and you're waving at me. Deputy Lord Mayor, is that because, sorry, sorry? Division. Oh, oh, sorry, division. I messaged Jenny before. Oh, oh yeah. sorry, okay. Before we get to that, division has been called on the last one. Council members, division has been called on the motion. When I call it your name, please state whether you're for or against it. Council Brown. Again. Council Abraham today. For. Council Ho. For. Councillor Kira. Four. Deputy Lord Mayor. Aye. Councillor Kouros. Sorry, Councillor Kouros. Four. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Martin. 
for and against, four, one and two, against three. So, so, so cool. So, Councillor Martin, you need to vote one way or the other. You cannot vote for and against. Well, why not? Well, you know you can't do it. So. Oh, Jesus, <laughs> like nice. children. I don't know. I don't know. Five I years on. Oh, you need bed. to vote one way or the other. Oh, Come on, Councillor Martin. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Canal. Councillor Sims. I voted for. Thank you. Good. Well, I'm very disappointed that allowances were Thank you. Very me too. Thank me you. too. Disingenuous. Thank you. Lord Mayor, you're on mute. I muted me. <laughs> I've done that so much tonight. That's really funny. My husband wishes he had one of those switches. But um, if we could go to 13.13 on culture, please. And sorry, uh, Councillor Kouros. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I've put forward this motion um, that council, number one, recognises the valuable role the City of Adelaide administration plays in supporting council members. Two, uh, expresses concern that the impact, um, the conduct and behaviours of some council members may have on the health and wellbeing of the administration. Request uh, number three, request an urgent independent investigation to determine the extent of any impact and provide recommendations where appropriate. Um, more, Lord Mayor, I'm bringing forward this motion because I think, you know, morale is very important at this time. Um, the, our staff are under a, a lot of pressure. Um, we think that, um, you know, we want to keep them. We want to know that they're happy. We want to, we want to know about their well-being. We want to know um, that they're, uh, how they're feeling at their job. But also, you know, I have been a bit concerned about over the uh, last 18 months, I've um, seen a bit of um, the staff subjected to some unprofessional behaviour. Um, I think the workplace should be very safe. It should be a happy place to be in. I think their environment, um, you know, should, should feel secure. Um, as elected members, you know, we're here to represent the rate, rate payers and, uh, and we, you know, we took on this role as uh, being elected, but the staff did not. And um, I want at this workplace to remain professional. Um, I want I want the staff to not feel that they always uh, are going to be um, uh, questioned or in a, a be questioned in a way that makes them feel that they're not performing their job. Um, so I just want a, an investigation to take place because I feel staff reten retention is very important at this time. Um, we can't afford to have anyone leaving um, and uh, especially through this crisis. Thank you, Councillor Kouros. I had a seconder in Deputy Lord Mayor, then I have Councillor Moran and Councillor Abraham today. Deputy Lord Reserve Mayor. my right for the moment. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Moran. Uh, yes, I totally support this um, motion uh, and I urge that an independent investigation to determine the extent of any recommendations where appropriate. I think the lockstep Team Adelaide has been very damaging to staff morale and uh, the aggressive behaviour of many of those members have uh, really um, made some of our staff very insecure in their roles. Um, I've been on council for a long time and I've never seen this before in my life, in 25 years. And um, I, I totally commend Councillor Kouros for bringing this to our attention. I've never seen a more unhappy um, uh, executive leadership team. Uh, they, are, they have a gun against their head in many, um, many in my opinion. Um, so I totally commend this motion. I think it's time this council was looked at. I think it's time that the relationship between the, um, 
the elected body and the staff are looked at. I think they're, they're between a rock and a hard place. There is no independence in my mind on this council. And I think that the administration are trapped in this awful factional, this awful Team Adelaide faction. And I totally um, urge that the members vote for this. We need an investigation into this. We possibly need an ombudsman investigation into it, but as, as you're not allowed to announce that, I certainly wouldn't be doing that. But the toxic, dysfunctional nature of this council needs an external body to look at it. And while I normally wouldn't suggest this during the time of uh, the pandemic, I think this has reached such a critical stage that we must get an external um, body to look at it. It is shocking what happens. You've seen tonight block voting in a, a way I've never seen before. I've seen staff that are completely Stockholm syndrome in and the total disrespect that um, this new team shows to experience and knowledge is shocking. And I totally commend Councillor Kouros for pointing this out and bringing this to our attention. Thank you. I have Councillor Abraham today. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, I too want to commend Councillor Kouros for bringing this into the chamber, the virtual chamber. I particularly um, uh, want to highlight uh, the second point about the conduct um, and behaviour of some council uh, members uh, and um, uh, I guess some of the, um, the uh, ill effects of that conduct and behaviour towards our uh, staff and, and administration and especially executive who are at the forefront of, uh, of, of all of this, of all of the abuse. Um, Lord Mayor, uh, uh, I guess I don't need to go into any detail, but we as uh, elected members have seen this behaviour, we've heard it, we've seen it in the chamber, we've seen it on, on emails, we've seen it uh, personally and physically, so uh, it's, uh, uh, you, you know, it still shocks me that in this day and age, in the 21st century, we have council members that treat staff and administration like animals. And they think that by picking up a stick and virtually hitting them with a stick, that they'll work harder and they will do as they say. So it is shocking to see that. Uh, and I welcome this investigation. It couldn't come at a better time. Thank you, Councillor. I have Councillor Martin, then Councillor Sims and Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, yes, uh, look, Lord Mayor, I, I also thank Councillor Kuros uh, for raising this. Um, it is a toxic and uh, dysfunctional council, there's no question about that. A and there have been incidents where some of us have felt intimidated. I personally uh, still have um, uh, troubled feelings about an incident in which somebody brushed past me to, to abuse a colleague and abuse a colleague in a most aggressive fashion. Uh, and there have been... Uh, Councillor, this is, this is about um, uh, looking at the uh, relationship between council members and the, and the administration. Oh, absolutely, Lord Mayor. Yes. And do you think it doesn't have an effect on staff that they see elected members abusing Sorry. other elected members in corridors? and see it on video. Thank you, Councillor Martin. If we could actually stick to the motion, that would be great. Yep, and I think it's also um, uh, illustrative for staff to see the level of abuse in meetings where people are called childish or behaving uh, uh, in such a fashion that they need to grow up because they have a strong view about something and they're putting that strong view. That has an impact on staff. Staff feel that they can't say what they want to say because there's that kind of attitude in the chamber. Um, it, it is time to have a look at some of the toxic behaviour and if there's an independent investigator appointed, I, I would like to speak to them. I make that known to the administration. And uh, I have to say, I have some reservations. I, we were tonight voting down a motion to buy packets of seeds and uh, we are proposing 
with this motion um, to incur a considerable cost. Um, the cost here of the, um, the administration investigation into uh, another matter is $50,000. I'm assuming you, do, you don't get investigations at uh, anything less than $20,000. And then there is um, a niggling doubt I have about um, this occurring at a time when uh, members of the community are concerned about losing their businesses, about losing their livelihoods, if not losing members of their family, we are uh, investigating ourselves. Um, uh, but look, uh, I agree with Councillor Abraham today. It, it really has to happen now. There is some toxic behaviour that we are all witnessing and feeling, and it needs to be out in the open. Councillor Sims. Thank you. Um, Lord Mayor, look, I uh, did also have some misgivings um, about this simply based on the timing um, of this uh, inquiry and potentially the remit of the inquiry. Um, because I, whilst I agree it's uh, important to look at um, the relationships with councillors and staff, I think we also uh, need to look at the relationships that exist within um, the elected body itself and how we work together as a collective. Um, and I think we've seen some of those behaviours tonight. Um, so look, I, I'm supportive of this, but I hope that they have a much broader remit than just looking at staff relationships, but that they also look at the way that the council itself functions. And that looks at things like, you know, whether people consider issues on uh, their merit, looks at things like whether or not board positions are being hoarded by um, certain councillors, whether or not um, suggestions being put forward are just knocked on the head without um, good reason, whether or not it is fair to um, say that, you know, a proposal to um, plant a few seedlings is some sort of radical, um, you know, proposal, when uh, suggestions to, um, you know, change standing orders... Um, Councillor, we are actually right talking about members. a motion investigating or looking at the relationship between the councillors and the administration. I guess the point I'm making, Lord Mayor, is this is all part of a much broader uh, broader issue and it needs to be considered in that broader context. And I can see some councillors shaking their heads when I'm saying this, but we have to recognise that the culture that is emanating from this council is permeating throughout the organisation. And uh, I think unless we work more effectively as a team, we're going to continue to have these problems. Um, and, you know, we need to change the culture of uh, factionalism here at the council level, which I think is breeding a lot of the mistrust um, and, um, and issues that are being faced at an administrative level as well. So I'd support the investigation, but let's give them as broad a remit as possible so that we can um, change some of this behaviour. And there is an opportunity, Lord Mayor, with a new councillor coming in for us to hit the, the reset um, button. The only thing I would say is that in, in developing this investigation and its scope, obviously we need to be mindful of the resources um, that are going to be uh, contributed because we are, um, as has been pointed out um, a number of times tonight, dealing with a series of uh, pressing financial pressures. Um, and so, you know, whether or not this is the number one priority uh, is a matter that, that needs to be worked through, but I'm supportive of the concept. Thank you. Uh, I have Deputy Lord Mayor. Well, I think we've seen tonight, Lord Mayor, um, a very fine example uh, of uh, an adoption of Trumpian tactics, Trumpian political tactics. And, and those tactics are that when you're finally caught out, and you're finally backed into a corner, just double down. Double down and pretend like it never happened. Double down and pretend like you're not the problem and shift the blame onto someone else in just in the most absurd fashion. And that's precisely what we've seen, Lord Mayor. The contributions um, from councillors Moran and Martin, given their public Lord statements, Mayor. given their public statements, uh, given the emails, which uh, I'm pleased to read out or provide to an investigator, uh, are positively deranged. At, at this hour in the morning, I know it's getting quite early, I know it's getting quite early, but we all know whose behaviour is in question here. 
Deputy we Lord Mayor, we, we are question not here. actually, this is not a trial. We are actually uh, considering a motion before us to that's, do an that's, investigation. That's correct. That's correct. It's not a trial. And, no, it's and, not. Uh, and we, are in point, uh, we are appointing uh, a third party, an independent investigator, uh, to undertake this work and to deliver us an independent report. Um, but the reason that I worked with Councillor Kouros on this um, the reason I had in confidence discussions with administration about their morale is because I've seen firsthand the treatment they are subjected to day in, day out by people on this call, by people who have uh, apparently said that this is necessary because of uh, their political opponents um, and not because of their own actions. So Lord Mayor, I would say it's incredibly important for morale that we do this. Um, the administration know exactly um, what they're going to say to this inquiry. They know exactly the sort of behaviour they've been subjected to. And those members on this call, um, and uh, they're singing from the same hymn sheet as me because they're trying to confuse the issue, because they're trying to confuse the issue, but they know what they are and they know what deep trouble they are in. Sorry, I've got Councillor Sims has just uh, sent a message through for point of order. Yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I'm a little bit concerned uh, by some of the comments that have just been made there. Firstly, those that are potentially of a defamatory nature. But secondly, the suggestion that's been made that this is What's being... What's the point of order? Uh, well, but, but I didn't think, uh, Lord Mayor, that uh, elected members of this council were in a position to be um, engaging directly with staff about these kind of matters. Surely that is a matter for the CEO not for members of staff to be, uh, not for members of council to be going around engaging staff members directly and asking them their views. Industrially, so, I think that's a very bad process. Yeah, I'm not sure that that's a point of order or whether that's a, a, a question. But uh, thank you, I've heard that. Uh, Councillor Martin, also a point of order. What was your point of order? My, my uh, a point of order, um, my personal explanation, I beg your pardon, is that I have not knowingly impacted on the health and well-being of the administration. Uh, and it is clear that that is the... Sorry, we're not, have, we're not a trial. That's not a point of order. So, But, but no, hang on. The, the Deputy Lord Mayor has accused me. He accused me and Councillor Moran. So that's and a I, correction then, Councillor Martin. Is that right? Well, no, no. Well, what... Well, a correction, personal explanation, whatever you want to call it, I've been accused of that. And I'm saying to you, I have not known uh, sought to impact on the health and well being of the administration as the Deputy Lord Mayor alleges. That is just Thank so. You. Thank you. Right. So I will see if there's any other speakers. If not, I will go back to Councillor. Yeah, sorry for what happened there. I'll go back to Councillor Kouros to sum up. Councillor Kouros. Well, Lord Mayor, what can I say? Um, just listening to everyone speak there just reinforces to me why this needs to be done. Um, if this motion is centred towards council members to administration, it's got nothing to do about elected members. If elected members feel that they've been hard done by, then they should uh, submit a code of conduct or go through the proper channels on doing so. And Councillor Martin, I mean, you talk about being accused. You accuse um, uh, uh, me personally on issues that I have not done. And you elaborate in your fine, fine radio voice. In, in so a Councillor Kerr, I'll stick to the no, motion. Uh, Lord Mayor, I'm sorry. I will interject on this one because I am tired of the accusations that are put forward by Councillor Martin and Councillor Moran by senior members of council during a time where it is honestly more important in things to talk about. And that this motion is directed to the health and well-being of the administration staff. It's not directed to anything else. If you have a problem, go forward, put in your code of conduct if you have a problem. That is, this, that is not what this motion is about. This motion is about supporting our staff. And if you want to talk about costs, let's talk about that. The cost of actually employing staff members or especially executive staff members will be more costly than this investigation. So I think you need to think very carefully about what 
what you want to throw in this argument because we want to make sure that we are doing the right thing to our staff. If you feel that you are, then great, excellent. Then if you've got feel nothing to worry about, then just vote for this and hopefully nothing comes out of it. Everything is fine and we can move forward. But if something does come out of it, well then at least we need to address the issue. And the CEO has got a report in this investigation to be able to address it so we don't have staff leaving. And so we don't have them feeling upset or stressed. So we don't have them living with angst or any um, issues at work, coming into work. We don't want that. We're already, a, we are already working in a very different space. Working by Zoom is already stressful enough. And then on top of that, by adding to the equation of, you know, how you feel and, and, and all of that, I mean, I feel very bullied all the time. The way you just did this to me twice in a meeting, you're continuously doing that, Councillor Martin. You know, well, you know what? I'm elected to be here and I'm standing for what I believe in and I'll keep going. You can throw whatever you want at me. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to take your abuse because that's how you want to give it out. But the staff are not. And if everything is fine for them, then great. If not, then this needs to be addressed now. Members, we will go to the vote uh, by a raise of hands. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Councillor Hyde. Division. Division. Please. Division. Council Moran, were you calling the same thing? Division two. Council members, the division has been called on the motion. I'll call out your name. Please state whether you're for or against it. Council Moran. Absolutely for Councillor Abraham today. Four. Councillor Ho. Four. Councillor Kira. Four. Deputy Lord Mayor. Aye. Councillor Don. Oh, Councillor Don. Councillor Kuros. Four. Councillor Martin. Absolutely four. Councillor Canole. Four. Councillor Sims. Four. Four. Councillor Kerr. Four. Okay, hey, members, we're getting there. 15.4, Councillor Kouros, Anzac Day uh, Acknowledgement. And she just moved the screen again. So there we go, I found you. Councillor Kouros. Uh, the, we can take the motions as read. Um, I'm not gonna read that out. Um, I think it's, uh, it was in the paper, I think, oh, well, I think it was online today. Um, and, uh, you know, but, uh, it is, I'll just look for a seconder. So I've got a seconder in Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Kouros, please speak to it if you wish. Um, so I'm uh, looking at uh, honouring the Anzacs. It's uh, obviously um, very difficult to do so. We can't march, we can't do what we normally do in honouring the Anzacs on, um, on Anzac Day. Um, so took the idea of, um, I saw that on Facebook, people going out in their dri driveways to honour the Anzac at 5.55. And I thought we can do one step further as a city, as a capital city, and have um, throughout the, that time, if possible, to strategically place um, uh, booglers uh, or boogler, sorry. Um, never said that Buglers. Word. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and uh, the um, uh, pipes um, played throughout the city, uh, especially in the residential areas. I think it would be a very beautiful thing to do, a very honourable thing to do, um, and um, I'm hoping that uh, my um, elected members can support it. Uh, thank you. Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak as the seconder? Uh, very quickly, um, fantastic initiative from Councillor Kouros. I think it's really important. Uh, I think it's really good as we uh, approach um, this Anzac Day, which obviously I wasn't around in 1918 when we had the Spanish flu, but I don't know if they were doing similar things back then or if there even was an Anzac Day. Um, uh, I think it probably happened not long after that. But um, uh, look, it's fantastic, uh, fantastic uh, initiative from Councillor Kouros. Uh, I think it's an innovative solution um, uh, to, this, to this crisis that we're facing and hopefully we can still honour um, our uh, servicemen and women. Thank you. I have got uh, Councillor Kira, then Councillor Moran. Thanks. Yes, fully support this. I think it is uh, an excellent uh, and creative 
uh, initiative. I think it uh, recognizes that even in a time of crisis, uh, that it is sacrosanct uh, that we recognize uh, the uh, sacrifice made by our servicemen and women. Um, and I think it's a very creative, creative way to, uh, uh, to do this. I think the uh, success of this motion is already evinced by the media that has been generated today uh, on this motion. So I, I really thoroughly commend Councillor Kouros for an excellent and uh, intelligent motion. Thank you. Councillor Moran. I think this is a classic Councillor Kouros motion. I totally will support it. It, uh, it is fantastic in its um, serendipity. Uh, I don't think it actually can be done, but I totally support it. It's a, um, no, look, words fail me really, but I will vote for it. Um, Councillor Martin. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, look, I, I will support it. I'm trying to understand it though. I've read uh, the newspaper reports, uh, <laughs> I've seen the motion, and the motion says that we will have at the various venues um, to play the RSL nominated tune, the nationwide 11 a.m. Piper activity in two minute silence. Um, how, how does that work? Uh, is there a Piper playing be before 11 a.m. or at 11 a.m.? And when does uh, the bugle play, or or is it proposed the other way around? I'm not certain. Um, perhaps I can help you with that. Um, there is a, there is a, a nationwide activity that has been planned for 11 a.m. where there will be a piper followed by a two-minute silence. And what Councillor Kouros is doing is hoping to have uh, a good number of musicians, pipers, and buglers stationed throughout the city in North Adelaide to be playing at the same time so that we can actually have something where people can come out and celebrate uh, Anzac Day in, after that tradition. Councillor uh, Kouros, is that about right? Uh, yeah, I mean, I would love to something be played at dawn, um, uh, at 5.55, but I mean, obviously I've uh, kept it a little bit loose because it would depend on how many musicians we can we can get. Um, it's up to the RSL. Um, you know, there it's, it's logistically um, something that is very difficult to plan. But I'm sure we can do it. I know. I understand. So um, I'll, just, I'll just stop you there. So I'll yeah. come back to you when you sum up. That's okay. Um, uh, Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, I just want to uh, praise Councillor Kouros for putting this forward. I think this is a really good initiative. Um, you know, when we're in going through a difficult period uh, like we are collectively as a, society, as a society at the moment, I think uh, traditions like this are very important. And um, obviously, uh, the pandemic makes it difficult for people to gather in a physical sense. Um, but something like this, which is a, a way of recognising the tradition and of uh, saluting our servicemen and women for the sacrifice that they have made, um, I think is very important. So I'm absolutely supportive of this. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Martin. Um, yes, yeah, sorry. Look, I, st I still don't understand. I'm not being obtuse. Uh, um, perhaps it's the hour because it's now after 2 a.m. Mm -hmm. So the piper will play before 11, there will, there will be a silence and then the bugler plays. Is that the intention? Uh, Can I offer some help in this department? I mean, I think uh, we really, at this point, um, we needed to speak to, or administration needs to work with the RSL to find out which way they want to do this and how it would work. Will, will it benefit Councillor Martin if uh, that's provided in a email to how this would work? Or no, no, no. I'm, I'm just asking. Because at, at the present moment, I don't, I, I mean, I, what I would like and what can happen are two different things. I, I understand. Uh, but we're, we're talking about a piper at 10.55 or whatever, silence at 11 and bugler. Am I correct in assuming that? Well, I would say that 11 a.m. you've got a piper that will be playing and then um, a two-minute silence because that's what's happened nationally. Um, but whether we can have the boogler playing at 5.55, um, 
I mean, I think, um, is Christy still here? I'm not sure. Um, oh, she can... They're not, but they have been working, the events team has been working with the RSL and the Defence Forces, so, uh, and I think this is requesting that they do continue to work with them to uh, achieve that outcome. We can ask um, Claire, if Claire wants to, I'll just unmute Claire. Um, no, I can't unmute Claire. Could you mute me, please, Lord Mayor? I think I'm still on open. You are? Sorry. Oh, you're muted. Uh, there, we've got, no, is she oh, still okay. unmuted? She's still muted. No, I'm here. Okay, no, it's just the battle of me? the mutes here. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. I'm still here. So my understanding is the bugler's at dawn and then we were looking at working with the national and the local, as, as Councillor Quiros has indicated, to, to do something um, at the 11 a.m. So whether um, so that would be a piper, is my understanding. We were looking at strategic points across the city and as Councillor Quiros has said, work with communities. Um, we've been really uh, closely working with the RSL to make sure that everything that we do aligns to um, what's appropriate um, from an Adelaide perspective, but also supports what's happening in a national perspective. So um, I can certainly provide an update in writing to Councillor Martin um, once we have the final um, elements um, agreed um, at the, you know, with the different bodies. Thank you. That helpful. Oh, yeah. That's very helpful. Uh, so, I am just checking, does anybody else wish to speak, ask a question? If not, I'll go to Councillor Kouros to sum up. Councillor Kouros. I'm very pleased that we could possibly have the um, Boogler playing, um, I don't know if I said that right again, at, uh, at dawn um, throughout the city. Um, I would love mm. to see them uh, played, um, you know, on all the squares, and including 88 O'Connell, um, obviously where it's more residential. Um, and, um, you know, to be able to have the Piper playing at 11 a.m. will be even more beautiful. So I'm very pleased that this has been very welcomed um, by um, the RSL and, uh, and I really, really look forward to this coming together. Okay. Uh, members, uh, to the vote by the show of hands. Uh, Councillor Kira, I've lost you. I've got your couch. Thank you. Uh, members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Division. Division. <laughs> You're all unmuted, I think. Can we have a division? About to. Yes, yes, we'll just call a division. Okay. Hmm. Council members, the division has been called on the motion. I'll call out your name. Please state whether you're for or against it. Councillor Moran. Four. Was that four? Yep. Councillor Abrahamsaday. Four. Councillor Ho. Four. Councillor Kira. Four. Deputy Lord Mayor. Five. Councillor Kuros. Still didn't hear Councillor Kuros. Sorry. Four. Thank you. Councillor Martin. Four. Councillor Canole. Four. Councillor Sims. Four. Thank you. Everybody? Uh, members, I, uh, I'm not sure about you, but I am going to need a short break. Um, I'd suggest uh, a quick uh, comfort stop and a cup of tea. Uh, we can do, what time is that? So uh, is everybody happy with a five minute, 10 minute break? Um, Councillor Sims, I don't know what you're saying. Um, I'm, I'm not returning after the break, Lord Mayor. Um, there's a confidential um, item that is coming up that I was going to disclose a, a conflict of interest in. That's the um, strategic property matter. Um, uh, given I own a property um, in the uh, complex, um, one of the complexes that's been talked about, and I live in it, um, I don't think it's appropriate for me to uh, remain in the discussion. It's a perceived conflict of interest, but I was intending to remove myself from the discussion. Given the lateness of the hour, I won't remain after the break, um, and I'll um, close off the meeting now. Okay. I'm going to... Councillor Martin? 
Uh, Lord Mayor, can we have 10 minutes? I need that long. I will go to Councillor Moran. Uh, for late hours, uh, Sandy, I'm going to go, go leave this. This, this is ridiculous. We've done all the things we've done. Ten times the fact that you all having thought is ridiculous. Sorry, sorry, Councillor Moran, you are breaking up. I really can't hear you. I think she's saying this is ridiculous meeting at 12, 2 12 a.m. But look, 10 minutes would be really good. Can we resume at 2 20? We just keep going, Lord Mayor. There isn't that much to go, really. No, no, I know. I, I need a comfort stop as well. Really? I'm not that young. Sorry, I, I actually can't leave. You guys actually can move around as you need to, so I'm afraid. Andy's confined to the chair. Oh, sorry. Uh, let's, let's try and get back as soon as we can um, in the next 10 minutes. So, members, that takes us to item number 16, motions without notice. Uh, thank you, Councillor, Deputy Lord Mayor. I'm just going to um, put the mutes on. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I do have two, um, but we'll keep it brief, and I think they are fairly uncontroversial. Um, they're quite clear um, in their intent. Uh, the first one is on public health advice um, relating to coronavirus, which I'm just bringing up to see if it's on the screen because I can't um, see it. So, um, it be on the screen here. For yeah, the first the first four items are notes, and there are some interesting things there that we should that we should note um, relating to the by election and COVID nineteen, the status of the electoral commission office, which was not open on the day that nominations closed and they're also not receiving phone calls. Um, uh, uh, and then um, also at five, requesting advice from SA Health um, on any potential risks regarding holding the holding of the supplementary election. Um, and uh, six, uh, providing that this advice is given to the state coordinator. So I'm happy to speak to that if I've got a seconder. Uh, so I have a secondary in Councillor Abraham today. Oh, thank you. So I'll, I'll keep this very brief. Um, obviously, the Electoral Commissioner has uh, uh, said that he has no legal authority to um, uh, stop the by-election or supplementary election now that it's um, in train. Um, I fully accept the position um, that Commissioner Mick Sherry is in, um, and there's nothing much that can be done about that. Um, however, I do still harbour concerns over and above the um, democratic or non-democratic um, nature of holding the by-election at this point in time. Um, and those are public health concerns. The Electoral Commissioner um, uh, deals with uh, matters relating to his portfolio, but he is not um, the preeminent health advisor in the state um, during this public health emergency. So um, uh, for background for members, the way that things are working during the state of emergency is that um, the police commissioner, uh, Mr. Grant Stevens, is the state coordinator, and he is issuing directives around what can and cannot happen um, during this time. Um, other than that, he's, well, all of his directives are actually uh, constructed on the advice of SA Health, who are providing um, input into those directives directly. Um, so I would like us to request advice from SA Health, and they may come back and say, look, it's all okay. Um, uh, but then they might consider it and say, look, we do have some concerns. Um, for me, I would have real peace of mind um, regarding our duty of care to our ratepayers, to people in the city, um, and to the candidates as well, if we just at least seek that advice um, to get them to give us feedback on whether they think it's safe to go ahead um, in its current form. If they think it isn't, um, uh, then uh, they would then provide that advice to the state coordinator um, who would consider his options around what he can and can't do. 
Um, so look, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping, look, things are in train, candidates are out there and, and well, not really out there, but you know, they, they're doing their thing, good on them. Um, uh, but uh, a real peace of mind if, if we get that public health advice. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Abraham today. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Just very quickly, I think there's there's a couple of things here that we need to be mindful of. One is um, campaigning for these candidates will be extremely difficult. Um, I, as a Central Ward resident, definitely don't want to come across any any candidates. Don't want to talk to them. Don't want to get close to 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 anyone. We want to maintain that social distancing and and see as little people as as possible. Um, so campaigning will be will be difficult, but uh, you know, think about it from a um, democratic perspective. Uh, if these candidates aren't going to be able to reach residents because of uh, COVID nineteen, if they're not going to be able to reach businesses because the vast majority of businesses here in Central Ward are shut down, well, how are they meant to reach the constituents? But but also when it comes to um, voting, these ballot papers are going to go out. Now I don't know about everyone else, but I'm certainly not bringing anything from the um, from my letterbox into the house because I just don't want to take the risk. So there's a number of things here that we need to be mindful of, and hopefully uh, this will um, uh, this motion here will address those. Thank you, Councillor Abraham. Today, Councillor Martin. Um, yes. Look, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I, I repeat the criticism that has been levelled often. Uh, throughout this evening, that is, it is disrespectful for a comprehensive motion of this nature to be circulated to the administration before the meeting begins at 5.30 and to be not distributed to members to allow us to have the opportunity to view it and to consider it and to have the advice of the administration. Moreover, I find it just extraordinary that the Deputy Lord Mayor is attempting to intervene in a ballot over which we have no authority and never have done over any, any electoral ballot. Those ballots are the responsibility of the Electoral Commission of South Australia. And to seek to influence the Electoral Commission through pressure on the State Coordinator, that is the Commissioner for Police, by providing to him advice from SA Health about what risks there are from members of the public or two members of the public from the travel of others uh, and through the, the business of collecting ballot papers is just breathtaking. This is manipulation of the most extraordinary kind. Now, I understand the Deputy Lord Mayor understands well that he has complete control of this council through his team Adelaide Faction. We have no control over the Electoral Commission, and to be seeking to influence in this shameful manner is contemptuous. I have Councillor Kouros. I think that's really um, unfair because we are un in unprecedented times. This, we are in a health crisis. We are in a pandemic. We are people that are fearful of and of their health. And I think this takes in consideration what we're going through at the present moment. So I don't think, to call this manipulation, I, mean, I don't think that Councillor Hyde manipulated the pandemic to happen for this to, uh, to come forward. So I think that's really uncalled for and I think that's really unjust. I think this is called being practical. I think that's being called um, uh, knowing what is happening right now. I think this is taking on board people's fears. I think this is really taking consideration um, how we are going to, uh, or how the uh, the the safety of also the, um, the the candidate as well. I mean, you know, you don't know uh, when you knock on someone's door or what they're affected with, vice versa. I mean, they might be too scared to come to the door. I know I am these days. I'm too scared to go to the door and who's at my door and speaking to someone at my door. So um, I don't think, I, don't, I think that's really unfair to call this manipulation. I think it's, it, it is what is happening right now. It is unfortunate. It is 
our safety of our ratepayers is paramount, the safety of our candidates is paramount, it falls in our hands. And if we don't show that we did not take participate in caring enough to know uh, in, during these times, then what are we? What are we here for? I mean, we have to put ourselves out there and show that we're caring. Uh, oh, sorry, I turned your mic off. And being considerate. Thank you. Uh, members, if there's no other speakers, I will go to Councillor, sorry, Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Yes, I'd just like to highlight that, um, as Councillor Kuro said, this is capturing the significant anxieties that are present in the community relating to the conduct of all matters um, uh, of life uh, that people go about at the moment. Uh, for Councillor Martin's benefit, um, I'm on the front lines in a government sense, dealing with the day-to-day -day, uh, fallout of all the restrictions the government has been putting in place and the directives that have been issued. We've been dealing with that um, with my team in my office um, on a daily basis for many, many hours a day. And it's been incredibly hectic. And um, knowing the anxiety that is out there in the community, I would, I would seriously hate um, for us to one, ignore that, um, and two, for us to not have addressed it um, and uh, inadvertently um, uh, cause a, a, an outbreak or a potential cluster. I think we have a duty of care to do our due diligence on this one um, and make sure that the conduct of this is safe because there was nothing in the Electoral Commissioner's correspondence to suggest that his advice came from SA Health. Um, and so maybe he has already sought it and we just need to confirm that. Like I said, peace of mind, duty of care, it's the right thing to do. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Members, I'm going to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. Uh, those against, please raise your hand. That is carried. Councillor Martin. Yes, I'd like a division, thank you, Lord Mayor. Sorry, just before you it again. Said I'd like a division. Yes, yes, no, I heard you. I was looking to Jenny to do her thing. Council's division has been called on the motion. I'll call out your name and just please state if you're for or against the motion. We've got no Council Moran. We've got Council Abraham today. Four. Councillor Ho. Four. Councillor Kira. Four. Deputy Lord Mayor. Aye. Councillor Kuros. Four. Council Martin. Oh, against. Non team Adelaide. Councillor Canole. Oh. That's it. Thank you. Uh. Uh, so, Deputy Lord Mayor, you had a second. Uh, uh, yes, if we can. I'll just check that it's up on the screen. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, I can't see yeah, anything. Oh, can we switch oh. view, Jenny? Yeah. Um, uh, th thank you. Um, I seek a seconder for this. Um, uh, just to highlight, and thank you, thank you, Lord Mayor, because I missed the cut off with this, but it is just advocacy, um, but important advocacy it is. Um, so just for the background, I know most members have actually met with these residents um, and are aware of the situation here, but we have an apartment building, West Franklin at 180 Franklin Street. Um, uh, that was approved and built um, uh, fairly recently, uh, finished off, residents have been moving in. At the time that they purchased both off the plans and I guess after uh, completion of the building, there were no um, uh, planned buildings to the immediate north of that site at 180 Franklin Street. Um, that would have impeded uh, on their livability of their apartments. Um, there was a smaller building, which I think was uh, between six and seven storeys tall, um, that would not have interrupted their views or been close to their uh, building um, uh, in any significant way. Since then, those plans have been scrapped um, and SCAP has approved the construction of uh, quite a large apartment building, um, which would in effect um, be eight metres away, only eight metres away um, from all of these residents on the north facing side of the building. Um, that is an issue. Obviously, it's going to affect their property prices, their equity, they did all the right things, um, yet they have no, uh, without going to the courts, no avenue for recourse. They were not, because it was, a, I believe, a category one development, they were not afforded the ability to object um, or put in any submissions regarding the design of this, uh, of this new building. 
um, and they actually were not even informed about it. They found out along the grapevine um, that they were going to have uh, potentially hundreds of thousands of dollars in equity and property values, which they may well have mortgages on, or they might be their nest egg for retirement. They were going to have that money wiped out effectively. Um, so this motion um, requests uh, uh, the Lord Mayor, and sorry, I do note that there are some autocorrect typos in there. Lord Major, um, it reads in five and six, I just noticed. Um, request the Lord Mayor uh, to write to Stefan Noll, highlighting the concerns and urging him to intervene if possible, and also to write to the State Planning Commissioner. That's all we can do legally in this sense. Having met with our administration at length, um, we have no other avenue for legal recourse. Uh, now, I will just check. Uh, Councillor Ho, were you seconding? Because I saw you waving madly. Yeah, just, just seconding. Okay. Did you wish to speak? No, we'll be fine. Okay. Uh, Councillor Abraham Zido. Uh, just very quickly, I would like to uh, commend this motion to the Chamber. Um, we, as elected members, are community leaders and uh, we're here to serve um, uh, uh, our residents. And I think this would be the, um, the, the, the first and uh, the strongest step that we can take. And uh, I'm, I'm hoping for a fruitful um, outcome out of this uh, motion. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Martin. Um, yes, Lord Mayor, questions for the administration. Um, can the administration advise if this matter came to council in any shape or form, particularly with regard to access and other issues? Uh, CEO? I have some background if, if admin can't answer. Yeah, three of me. I'm not exactly sure. I imagine we would have been a referral agency or would have been sent to us for comment, but um, uh, Clinton, I don't know whether you or I would answer that. I can't unmute him. Oh, there we go. Oh, Clinton. Lord Mayor, um, I can't comment on whether any of the traffic or um, waste issues came through Council, but they certainly would have come through our staff through uh, DA um, and our application uh, response would have been given to SCAP on that basis. Um, we did provide an update um, to Council via an e-news uh, which gave the full details of the um, yeah, officer's report on the development. Um, so, is it correct to suggest that this matter has been to council for comment and there has never been comment of this nature provided? So, um, I think that's directed to you, uh, Clinton. Yeah, through the Lord Mayor, I'd have to take that on notice, Councillor, I'm not sure. Well, look, my, my recollection, uh, and I'm speaking now, my recollection is that this matter has been brought to Council previously um, because of uh, issues related to access. Um, there were discussions. Uh, we did provide feedback, uh, both to SCAP and I seem to recall to the developer and there was never any mention of this. Now, I want to make the point again that this is a very detailed motion without notice. One that's been supplied to the administration nine hours ago, almost 10 hours ago, and not supplied to elected members. It does not have any comment from the administration, which at this ungodly hour of 2.40 a.m. is floundering about trying to find information to provide to elected members. I mean, this is the worst possible kind of council meeting one could imagine. It truly is a sign of a dysfunctional council. And I know there's no audience. I'm happy to say it to all of you. It is truly dysfunctional. Now, I understand that this is an election issue. It has been drawn to my attention. Candidates have been taking the matter up themselves. And I can only speculate that this is in some way related to the election, because there is no way that this feedback is going to do anything other than earn the scorn of SCAP, who will say, not unnaturally, 
well, why didn't they ever raise this before? Uh, pretty readily, they'll say, oh, well, there must be a by-election on in Central Ward. And that would probably be the explanation. But it's no explanation for foisting this on the elected body at 2.42 a.m., almost, almost 10 hours since I sat down in this chair. I will not vote for this. I have some sympathy. I do. I understand entirely uh, the point of view. And in fact, whenever you buy an apartment in the city, there is every possibility that there will be another structure 5, 10, 15 metres from where you are. It is one of the things developers tell you when you purchase a property in the city. We can't guarantee that there won't be another apartment building next door. Everybody should understand that. But I have some sympathy for these people. But I'll not be supporting this, not without any information, and, and just sprung on us at this early hour. Councillor Kouros? Um, it is a motion without notice. It is part of our uh, ability to do so. Um, if Councillor Martin doesn't like the process, then, then really that's just the way it is. It is what it is. So I, I just think that, you know, really, I mean, what are you arguing? That you don't like the motion or you don't like the process? I don't know. But at the end of the day, we have a motion here, which, you know, um, it, for us, as uh, Councillor Hyde has pointed out, it is an advocacy, pl advocacy piece. It's not something, you know, he's uh, nothing, nothing more than that. Um, I'm, I'm sure um, the, the people would appreciate it and that's what it's all about. So um, let's just put things in perspective. Um, let's just look at it for what it is and just, just don't make it into something else. Thank you. Uh, members, if there's no other speakers, I will go back to the Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, it has absolutely nothing to do with the by-election. Uh, myself and some other councillors met with these guys uh, a few weeks ago. Um, and uh, look, I narrowly missed the cutoff to get this as a, in as a motion um, on notice. Nevertheless, it is advocacy. There's no financial implications. Um, and information has been circulated to members um, before. And I know that those council members who were more interested made their own inquiries um, with the administration. I know I have, I know Simon has, I know Franz has. Um, uh, previously. So those, those of us who are interested, um, uh, it's, we have availed ourselves of the information um, uh, and now uh, we're making a decision on it. I would urge you, Councillor Martin, um, to vote for this. It is an important advocacy piece and I know that the, uh, uh, that the many, many uh, signatories on the petition um, uh, which, which has been received um, by Council earlier this year um, uh, would be would be very very uh, pleased to see unanimous support um, uh, of their cause at this at this time. Given what they stand to lose, I think we need to stand with them. Uh, no, that's okay. Uh, members, I'll go to the vote. Uh, those in favour? Yeah. Those against? That is carried. So a division has been called. Council's division has been called on the motion. When I call out your name, please state whether you're for or against it. Councillor Abraham today. For. Councillor Ho. For. Councillor Kira. For. Deputy Lord Mayor. Aye. Councillor Kuros. Councillor Martin. Against. Councillor Canole. For. Uh. Okay, what did I just say? Um, members, we have come to the last bit of the agenda. There are three remaining items uh, to be presented, a request for uh, consideration in confidence. Each item obviously requires a motion and a decision to order the exclusion of the public and so that we can stop streaming. Um, so I will look for a move and a seconder uh, for a motion to order the exclusion for 18.1.1. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today and a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Knoll. 
Members, any speakers for or against? Councillor Abraham Zeto to sum up. Thank you. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Uh, we have dealt with 18.2.1. Um, 18.2.2, .2, I need a move and a second uh, for the item Benighton Park Kiosk EOI. I've got Councillor Abraham today and second the Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, Councillor Abraham today, do you wish to speak? Councillor Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, members, if not, Councillor Abraham today to sum up. Thank you, members to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. And the final item is 18.2.3, which strategic property review. I've got uh, Councillor Abraham today and Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, Councillor Abraham today, did you wish to speak? Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, members, I've got two hands up. I'm just checking. Uh, Councillor Kuros, did you wish to speak to yes. the motion? To to I the confidential been. confidentiality. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, okay. No, sorry, sorry. Right. Um, Councillor Martin. Councillor Martin, did you wish to speak to the yes. confidentiality item? Yes, I do, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, this this report uh, should be in the public arena. Um, there may well be arguments that the content is confidential. It is possible. Um, to redact parts of it that may be prejudicial, but the action of engaging in the recommendations of the administration have serious uh, ramifications for our ratepayers, for the city budget, for uh, city debt. It is something that needs to be discussed in a public forum and not in the dead of night um, uh, by a council that should know better that should be discussing this when members are alert, not asleep, uh, and when people are able to see what's being discussed, to hear what's being discussed. Thank you. Members, with that, I'll go back to Councillor Abraham today to sum up. Okay, members to the vote, those in favour, those against. Uh, Councillor Kira, I didn't grab your vote. Uh, those in favour, those against, thank you, that is carried. Um, so I will ask uh, any members of, uh, if there are members of the public there, thank you for attending our meeting tonight. It's been a long one. Uh, any members of staff that are not associated with items 18.1.1, 18.2.2 and 18.2.3, um, I'll ask you to leave the meeting now. The streaming will now cease while we consider the final items on the agenda. Thank you, members. <laughs> that, that is the bell. Uh, members, that brings us to the end of our uh, agenda for tonight. We, I need to actually, I'm not sure how we bring it back into public, but we are going back into public. Um, we can, the doors are open. I've got a door here if you want me to open. Excellent. We will open the doors. Um, I thank you all. It has been um, a, uh, uh, an interesting evening. Um, and I look forward to seeing you all again tomorrow. Have a good night. Good. Good night. See you. And thank you to the staff as well. Big thank you. Yeah. Okay. See you guys. See, See you. See you.